Don Vito. What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, afternoon, pre-noon, no matter where you are in the world. I'm a Sam Piker. And yo voy a votar por Donald Trump. Sanctions destroying Cuba. Sanctions destroying Venezuela. Hell yeah. American flags. I didn't even know that that was a part of the song. God damn, that's fucking amazing. Oh. What's up, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, afternoon, pre-noon, no matter where you are in the world. I'm Sam Piker, and this is the Austin Park is coming to you live from sunny, kind of cold, but still sunny California, Los Angeles, folks. We're live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic moment because today's a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. Today is Sunday, 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 Sunday. Um, we're live and alive. On Sunday, how are the biceps? It's not my biceps that are a problem. I'm going to tell you about everything in a second. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that was Cancion de Trump. Uh, versión en español. Uh, and that is by Los Tres de la Habana. Okay. But Kyle was the boss of the part today for real. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. It is November 3rd, uh, 2024. November 3rd, 2024, two days out from the election. Okay, yo voy a votar por Donald Trump. You absolutely smoked the turn and burn, but you did look pretty sad. Did you also do a Zercher bench press? No. Anyway, uh, I'm a little tired, and there's a really good reason for that, and I'll tell you all about it. Um, I'm going to tell you all about that in a second. But uh, yeah, this is the part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news about what's going on in the world of us on Austin Ivy Piker in between time period where I press the staff streaming button and press the star streaming button and there's a lot that has happened in the universe so I'm going to get right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, you definitely need a better injury for the IRL but it was still fun. Yeah, I was tired because I had played basketball earlier in the day. So here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. The human body is a battery, as Donald Trump, my favorite scientist, likes to say. The human body is a battery there's a finite amount of energy in there okay and the reality is like yeah throughout the day i'm gonna be you know i'm gonna be tired look at kaya like she just had a great day she's fucking passed out behind me um i have a finite amount of energy inside of my body and and honestly you know i i was a little cooked i was a little cooked at the gym yesterday we uh we we cut short the political commentary three days out from the election so we could do some fun shit I went to the gym. I was supposed to link up with Agent. Agent came two and a half hours too late, unfortunately. But uh, I went with Miss Kiff and March and Will, and we worked out. And we did Will's routine, and he's an absolute madman. And I hope that... So the stream will be shorter? No, not today. What is this? I know the risk of getting shot by both of their communities for saying this, but I think Hassan and Miss Kiff are cute together. That's what Twitch Himbo said. Girls are going to see you on the stream. Yeah. And they're gonna be like, damn, that guy's hot. Dude, this is so funny. The way he like, the way he, his little legs get like buckled up when he can't fucking push through a workout. Uh, but anyway, you know what you were doing? Yeah, I think we did a decent no job. I'm fucking you up in the gym right now. Are I'm doing you? more reps, slower reps. You were just sitting there on your phone the entire time looking at your watch. Waiting to post the next Instagram hey, story. Can you finish your set? Yeah. Are you? I'm fucking fucking showing you. Are you? There's an audio delay. Sometimes there is one. It is what it is. But it was fun. We got a good workout in. I don't know why the fuck I'm like hitting so many insane like workouts. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. I'm just like... I'm going pretty crazy with it. Like, it is probably not healthy. It's probably not healthy. It's probably not good. The amount of fucking work that I've been doing. Like, yesterday, I looked at my... Yesterday, I looked at my app. Like, the amount of calories I burned yesterday was fucking nuts. Okay? And I didn't stop today either. I fucking went crazy this morning. Uh, yeah, I burned 2,000... 548 movement calories which means like i burned that just on the amount of workouts alone total calorie i burned yesterday was 5091 5091 calories burned yesterday like that's crazy kristen 138 thank you for the five gift is subs do you have rest days no 
Yeah, dog, you need to chill the fuck out because you need to prevent getting rhabdo. I'm not going to get rhabdo, dude. That's crazy. I don't work out that much. Bro, did you even eat that much? No. Um, You're still 225? Yeah. I I did I did get uh, misgiven myself. After the stream ended, on my end, we pulled it over to uh, Will's stream. 5,000? That's on par with Michael Phelps? No way that's actually 5,000 calories, my brother in Christ. No, my daily, the amount of calories I expend just obviously being myself is like probably around 3,000 calories anyway. Um, why do you think you're fat? I mean, I still, I have a little bit of body dysmorphia. Also, Michael Phelps' uh, workouts were like 8,000 calories, I think. Um, and yes, I do use, uh, yeah, I do use creatine. Did you not make him get sushi? Nah, uh, agent was not allowed to have anything anyway. His chef was like, no way. And then... And also on top of that, the chef seems strict. No, it's good. It's good that he's strict. That's his job. Um, but uh, beyond that, beyond that, beyond that, um, yeah, we did a lot of workouts. We did a lot of we did a lot. Of, we did a lot of workouts. You literally have an eating disorder. Please get that checked out, dude. Shut the fuck up. Like, okay, take another week off shelter, Rosebud. Oh my god. Like you can say I have body dysmorphia, which is correct, but you can't say I have a fucking eating disorder. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, dude, people who, people who like are just like, I'm woke. I can say whatever I want. Just like speak out of turn in the most insane ways possible. Sometimes it's like the fuck check yourself, please. Um, it's good to go. Okay. March is, uh, March is here. Uh, he set up the, he set up the PC so that. Uh, he's up to see PC so that Misgive could stream, but Misgive is not here. So, I mean, he's on his way. Okay. I mean, he knows how to make screens, I'm sure. All right. Bye, March. Thank you. All right. You're live on a Sunday? Yeah, I'm always. Weighing your chicken tastes good when you don't have a visioneer talking about ED. Yeah, I. it's crazy to say I have an eating disorder when, like, my disordered eating, if other people also followed through on, would be infinitely healthier. I track my macronutrients. I don't have like orthorexia or whatever it's called. Like I simply track my macronutrients and micronutrients. I supplement with fucking vitamins and shit. And I was just about to explain to everybody that because I had a fucking massive day of working out, I was like, yeah, let's, um, let's, let's have some fun, which is why I got misgiven myself chicken katsu, Japanese curry. Um, like, which is something that you don't do if you do have obsessive uh, eating disorder, like where you're so worried about like breaking your diet that you can't even fucking eat shit that you don't want to eat. Most annoying part of food weighing is scale shit to me. Is scale shit to me? I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm a disciplined eater. It's crazy. Objectively, the way I eat, if more people ate the way I ate, we would have an infinitely healthier country. Like... The amount of protein I consume is definitely not normal for the average person, but I'm a very big guy and I work out a shit ton. And I've noticed throughout my 33 years of uh, living on this planet that if I don't, if I don't actually uh, eat a certain amount of protein, it fucks up my recovery and it literally causes me to injury. Uh, it, it causes me to be injury prone. But beyond that, I eat a, a decent balance of carbohydrates uh and protein and fats i don't like i don't you know i eat a minimum of 230 uh grams of protein a day <sighs> but yeah no i didn't get pork katsu i got a chicken katsu for both me and miz it's from this place called chubby curry is so fucking good it's a one-to-one -one japanese like equivalent straight up lots of people just tell me to stop eating carbs yeah that's wrong you need to have a healthy balance I've never been an advocate for like just a carnivore diet or any of those fucking fad diets that are stupid that will cause you to like lose hair, cause your cortisol levels to spike, all this different like issues that come along with it. I've always been, I've always been an advocate for eating a balanced diet. The only, I guess, quote unquote obsessive part of my diet is that I track it. Birdie bro TV. Thank you for the 10 gift the subs. I don't even do like keto or nothing like that. I don't even do OMAD anymore. I do two meals a day. I don't eat brekkie. I skip breakfast. That's the one part of my diet that like maybe some people might disagree with. But I skip breakfast. I work out fasted. 
usually, unless it was yesterday, but I work out fasted usually, and I eat one big ass meal full of chicken and protein uh, when I'm hungry. Oftentimes it's after three. I use an application to track my macros and, and all my calories and shit. I'm convinced that the carnivore diet content is adjacent to the red pill content in the algo. Too many girls I know started carnivore and added maggot trad vibe. Yeah. I think you should lift fed. Don't need a lot of cows like two to three hundred an hour before it. I mean, I don't know. I've just been doing. I have a my my problem. Everyone's diet is different. But my problem with eating is I'm a binge eater. So once I break the seal, I don't stop. So I have to like, you know, have it very regimented, very structured. So I always eat after usually 2 p.m. Sometimes that's when I break the break the fast. But I'm still hitting my daily macro goals anyway. And yeah, it's fucking working, you know. But um, Tim Wallace talks to undecided more voters for more perfect union. Nice. Um, anyway, so last night. I didn't really do much. I hung out with Miz. Uh, you know, we had some chicken kasu. It was an absolute bomb. I went to bed, woke up early, and I didn't realize. Let me tell you how fucking structured I am. Okay, let me tell you what my regimen looks like. As you guys probably know, if you've been in here early on, this is when I talk about my daily news before we get into the news, right? I wake up at 6.30 every morning to take a piss. But this morning, I woke up at 5.30 to take a piss. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? Why am I waking up at 5.30 to take a piss? What the hell is happening? Okay. And I had no idea. Okay. And I was like, all right, this is weird. And then I tried to force myself back to bed. Mar said rock hard. It's true. Bro, aren't you driving right now? Focus on the road. Focus on the dang road, March. Anyway, so yeah, I wake up rock hard, take my morning piss. I go back to sleep and I'm just like, what the fuck is this? Why am I up so early? Is it because I'm like really excited about the election? Like it's finally going to be over soon. And I guess like sometimes it's like that. Like this almost said STI. Yeah, dude, I wake up every morning at the same time to take my morning piss. And that must mean I have a sexually transmitted infection. Fucking stupid idiots. Anyway, so I take my piss. I try to go back to sleep. And it's like, I feel like time is running really slow. I'm like, what is happening? It's like barely eight. Because usually that's like when I go out and, and work out, right? And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Like, it's like almost, it's almost like 8 a.m. And I don't know what the hell is happening. Um, I get in the car. And only then do I realize, because my car uh, hadn't like updated the time to daylight savings that is fucking daylight savings so that's a fun little story anyway i played basketball this morning uh i was cooking playing my heart out five on five full court but uh while i was playing five on five full court i had a situation i had a situation where um this dude i'm coming off a fast break i go up for a layup left-handed i jump up off balance and this dude just trucks me like literally while I'm in the air, both legs are in the air and he just goes, not even for the ball at all, just straight up for me, for the body. I fucking fly off. Okay. I fly off. I was able to flip and like recover pretty fast, but I still hit the ground. I still hit the ground, uh, on my ass, on my right ass cheek, basically playing against Draymond yeah it was crazy I mean I know the dude it's fine he's like a cool dude he didn't I don't think he did it on purpose but um no no fight no but but I got up I kept playing and then on um I was doing full court press right after that and I pushed with my like as soon as I as soon as I exploded to to try to intercept the pass coming in I felt like, oh, like I felt the pain in my butt. And I was like, all right, I'm done. I'm done for today. Sounds serious. I can check for any damage. Nah, it's fine. I don't understand how you're 30. Dark MAGA coming for you. It's fine. No, I didn't crack nothing. It's fine. It's fine. It just squished it a little bit. It happens. It's a little bit of a muscle bruise. So did you cry? No. My ass is not broken. Everything is fine. 
my hands hurt a little bit too though because i was like you know i was able to balance it a little bit you're viral on live twitter yeah i saw this let's go my old charlie kirk interview charlie kirk storms off stage during a panel discussion after he was confronted with a tough question i live like a capitalist every single day chank i live as a capitalist okay i live what i believe No. What do I do? I get charity every single year. Hold on, hold on, What's hold on. What's my salary? Hold on. Less than his. Charlie, take it. Come on, let's go. Charlie. Yeah, Live Twitter, let's go. Live Twitter going crazy. <laughs> the Libs also think Chinese, uh, Charlie said a slur for Chinese people. It's going to make the Libs like him more, though, because the Libs also fucking hate Chinese people. <laughs> I desperately need to start working out. It honestly started to affect my mental health. Do you have any tips for someone who only has 20, 220 pound free weights and can't get to a gym? Yes, dude. Learn how to do fucking learn how to do calisthenics. Okay. Trump done did it again. Anyway, um, it is what it is. So, folks, do you take ashwagandha? I do. How many uh, days a week do you lift? Usually four. Yeah, I got the playlist of Macy's. Thank you. Uh, we got we got Lib Watch. We're gonna do SNL Watch. Obviously, we're gonna do Poll Watch. Before we get to Lib Watch, I think I'm gonna start it off with the Seltzer Poll. And we're not talking about the Alka-Seltzer, okay? Now, something big, something very big people were waiting on, okay? People were waiting on something real fucking big. Oh, shit. Before I forget, let me blast off that I'm live. I forgot. Holy shit. What is happening? I'm all over the place today. Goddamn. Goddamn. Can we do a meat watch? Sure. Okay. Um, Hogs molding. Hog watch. Pole watch. SNL. Sunday live watch and more two days till e day get in okay twitch.tv slash hasanabi what's meat watch don't worry do we have a uh do we do we have a blast off meme can you explain why mike from pa seems to take all pro trump data as fact and all pro kamala data as fantasy i don't think he does that i think that anyone who tells you Anyone who tells you that uh, they are exclusively doing poll watch and not like doing vibes based analysis on top of that is lying. And I don't think Michael from Pennsylvania would tell you that he's just straight, straight pipe in the data. He's adding a degree of, of vibe check. He's vibe checking the data. Okay. And that's normal. I do that too. That's precisely the reason why. And I've said this already. Um, that's precisely the reason why I have said time and time again, I've said time and time again that in spite of running a dog shit campaign, like I kept telling libs to fear not, okay, and that, uh, and that ultimately Kamala Harris is probably still going to win in spite of all of my criticisms of her campaign. I've said this for months and months. The closest I've gotten to thinking that uh, the election might change in favor of Donald Trump was a couple of weeks prior, where uh, the momentum swung so heavily in the direction of Donald Trump, you know? And I think that uh, this does not mean that, like, Kamala Harris is absolutely 100% going to win, you know? I, you would have asked me a couple months ago, I would have, I, I had much, uh, uh, I would have given Kamala Harris a chance as a much higher likelihood as I did. A great example is almost every poll has AZ Trump, like plus two to minus four, but the demographics, population growth, voting patterns, and ground game all heavily favor Kamala. So it's a best tilt our toss up. Depends on Phoenix turns out in the end. That's it. People read too far in either direction. Polls only versus other data only. I think I have a pretty healthy balance in this. I look at the polls. I do a little bit of poll watching, but then beyond that, I also do a little bit of vibe checking. And I, and, and so far, especially with this gen, uh, with the seltzer poll coming out of Iowa, which I'm going to get into right now. Um, my, my attitude has been fairly correct. I still maintain the position that Kamala Harris is winning in spite of her bad campaigning. Okay. Make no mistake. Many people will turn around and say, what, what do you mean? You're so critical of Kamala Harris. Like you're wrong. She fucking She's going to win if you think she's going to win or maybe on uh, maybe uh, she wins and then you're going to be like, well, I'm fucking us on. I told you so. Like she was going to win. She did a good campaign. You were wrong. It's like, no, no, no. It's not just about winning. It's about 
how you win. It's about what margins you win with. It's about what base of support you are capable of activating in that process. And I think Kamala Harris is, has, should not even be on shaky ground at this point. That's my, that's my point. That's my, my issue. This should not be a close race. The road to Harris leading in Iowa, yeah, she's probably going to send some people over there now that this shit came out. Like, once you saw the polls not move after Trump got shot, you've been saying it's Kamala's election to lose. I mean, the thing, no. Trump gets shot. He's going up against Joe Biden. Trump is still going to win. One hundo P. It's so much, it's so obvious that he's still going to win. It's so obvious that he's still uh, going to win that, um, like, Joe Biden has to drop out, right? After that occurs, Kamala Harris made up, like, 10 points. It was crazy in a matter of days. And then they just cast aside all that momentum for no reason. <laughs> My entire Twitter feed turned into Twin Pool Level 49 State Landslide. No, that's stupid. That's stupid. That is silly. And I think people are discounting how much momentum there is still for Donald Trump. But I assume people are just like joking anyway. I don't think they're being serious. But yeah, Seltzer's uh, considered the gold standard, except she was demoted to the silver standard. I believe for one of the caucuses uh, that she did not participate in, even if her even if her her poll is wrong, right? Like she has a pretty solid track record. She has a incredibly strong track record of being off by like basically one point. You know what I mean? That's the thing. If you look at if you look at like her last Iowa uh, her last Iowa poll versus results here. I mean, this is a good example. Twenty twenty two Senate. R plus 12, R plus 12. 2020 president, R plus 7. Turns out it was R plus 8. 2027, R plus 4. Turns out it was R plus 7. 2018 governor, D plus 2. It's, uh, it's R plus 3. 2016 president, R plus 7, R plus 9. 2014 Senate, R plus 7, R plus 8. 2012 Senate uh, president, D plus 5, D plus 6. So as far as like pollsters goes, I mean, that's pretty... So governor is always going to be different. Uh, the gubernatorial race is, is unique. But beyond that, I mean, this is as reliable as you can be. You know what I mean? There is nothing you can't, you don't get more reliable than that in terms of polling. Um, and also, yeah, the average Iowan voter just loves, seemingly loves uh, when the Democrats don't have uh, a, a cracker ass president you know what i mean iowans are like iowans are basically like give me a black democrat i don't want <laughs> i don't want no <laughs> i don't want no white boy okay what the fuck is this shit which is funny because it's like 98 percent white <laughs> they do they do this is two for two okay that's where I disagree with you. Ours should be, by all accounts, absolutely crushing Dems, massive inflation, economic unrest, global incumbent parties, trash because of economic stuff, border unrest, the baseline. No, no, this is not a normal raise. What are you talking about? Yeah, if Nikki Haley was running right now, it would be Jover. The fuck do you mean? This is Donald Trump. Donald Trump is maxed out on his fucking base of support and has... A very limited, uh, a very limited avenue to to pick up new people. Okay, he was the president. He won once. He was the president for four years, and then he fucking lost. It's over at that point. People have made up their fucking minds about him. I don't. I think that's crazy to say Kamala winning is a wild upset. That's insane. If it wasn't Donald Trump, you are one hundred percent right. But it's not. Uh, it, it's it's not someone else. It's Donald Trump. So if you're going up against Donald Trump, a person who already lost an election, okay, a person who already lost an election, yeah, it's pretty nutty that it's like this close. I can't, I cannot comprehend how anyone, how anyone, you are a sellout unless you react to Candace Owens' podcast series covering Kamala's ethnicity. What? That's awesome. Yeah, dude, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> what are you, crazy? I mean, look, look. This could have been better for Donald Trump, even against Kamala Harris. But Donald Trump is still Donald Trump. And he keeps reminding everybody how he is Donald Trump. And this is what I said about the Iowa poll, right? The, 
the Des Moines Seltzer poll. I said, look, you got Roe v. Wade, massively consequential. You got January 6th, okay? Which isn't necessarily like a threat to democracy or whatever, because like pollsters show that's not the top priority at all. But it actually spells that he's like a sore fucking loser and really narcissistic, which reminds everybody what they don't like about Donald Trump, okay? That's important. That is absolutely fucking important. You got J.D. Vance, massively consequential pick, massively, massively awful pick for Donald Trump. That's a base pick. You already had the base. Good luck on that. Uh, you have tens of millions of dollars wasted on anti-trans ads. Shows that their priorities are in the wrong direction. Shows that they literally think, shows that they think that uh, these are the top priorities. It's like, you're fucking stupid. Just talk about the economy, jackass. You fucking idiot. Talk about the economy. Talk about how you're anti-war. But you won't do that because you're Donald Trump. Then you have anti-immigrant screeds instead of messaging discipline on economy. Dog shit tariff plan, which was effectively countered as a mass sales tax, which I really liked. Kamala Harris's campaign has had a couple big W's. That was one of them. Okay. On the communication front, that was a very, very effective way of deflating the whole tariff thing because it was objectively a stupid economic policy anyway. Threatening to use the military on enemy from within, and these are the results. Every normie lib I know thinks the anti-trans ads are effective. I don't know why. Just stop talking to fucking liberals, please, okay? The reason why normie liberals think it's effective is the exact same reason why they think Kamala Harris is brilliant for tacking to the right. Because they're one, stupid, two, terrified of Republicans, and three, they kind of like Republicans at the same time, okay? That's why everything, everything liberals advocate for, everything liberals talk about comes from a, a, a place of fear, okay? Yeah, here it is. Seltzer poll has Trump with just 28% of senior women and losing senior men by two points straight into the garbage. Similarly, this guy is saying it's a throw into the garbage. I don't think it's, a, it's garbanzo at all. I think it's valid. I think the normal whites theory is undefeated. Normal whites don't like this shit, okay? Need a good Seltzer poll on top of the survey plus the Kansas R plus 5-1 to fully establish a Trump KKK racker, KKK collapse narrative. Ohio polling, where there's no real incentive to herd, corresponding with the uh, Washington primary more than the rest of the Rust Belt, it, uh, it has been noted. Like, that's crazy. Ohio being only plus three is crazy. I think that a lot of people are fucking annoyed with the way that Donald Trump and his silly ass fucking hogs operate. OK, and I I know there are people in here who voted for Jill Stein. There are people in here who are like objectively not voting. How much do you fucking hate Donald Trump and his stupid ass uh, supporters? If you feel that way, then, yeah, you think people who don't give a fuck about Gaza are not feeling that way. Of course, they're feeling that way. It, it's like very little to do with people going out and voting for uh, you know, Kamala Harris's wonderful $50,000 in tax cuts for startups policy and everything to do with, I don't want these fucking freaks anywhere near a position of power. Okay. That's it. MAGA is claiming Diddy paid and sell. Wait, what? And seltzer, you're an embarrassment. Was the Diddy paycheck really worth it? <laughs> and seltzer after P. Diddy invites a random Iowa pollster to his pedophile ring parties for some reason. <laughs> Okay, so there's a 56-year-old woman here. <laughs> the reason I was turning blue is abortion. Ah, uh, yes. Abortion is yet another is yet another obviously annoying fucking Trump thing, okay? People are annoyed. People are mad. People are grossed out by the way that the Trumpian Republican Party operates. This is literally not anything different than the 2022 Midterm red wave turning into a fucking baby puddle. It's the same shit. The only difference between that and what's going on right now. And it, it's not like this isn't in the bag. I know that like libs are doing victory laps as though like the election is over. Uh, you know, they're going to win, whatever. It's still close. I don't think people understand. It's still a toss up in my opinion, but I still favor Kamala Harris on it <clears throat> for how badly uh, Donald Trump has presented himself this entire time. He's done no convincing <laughs> whatsoever that he would be 
different somehow, or at least like try to remind people of all the good stuff about how the economy was good when he was president and, and, and instead doing like the worst campaigning possible by sucking the microphone and complaining for 45 minutes about like audio people or just being a fucking racist piece of shit that is really annoying and people don't respond positively to. I live in Kansas. I wouldn't be surprised if Kansas goes to Kamala. Momentum is huge here and Kansas remembers defeating the... What? No, I don't think Kansas is going to Kamala. That's fucking nuts. <clears throat> Harris has to be up 10 to 12 points nationally for this result and she's simply not. I don't believe she's winning senior men in Iowa or that over 55s are voting 10 points uh, left of under 35s. Polling is just broken. I don't know how to process this at all. They voted down the abortion bill, though. Yeah, but that doesn't. But that was that was separate. Is there a ballot measure in Kansas for abortion this time around? Um, final New York Times polls. Ed Momentum was waiting on them too. Shows a tie in Michigan and PA. So here's the deal. While the liberals are uh, doing victory laps over the Seltzer poll, this is also why I'm saying that it's still a close race. I think that it still favors Kamala Harris. But it's a close race nonetheless. And the only reason why it's a close race, and I know Lib Dejder is going to get very mad at me for saying this, but it's because Kamala Harris has not done enough messaging and communication beyond harm reduction for the base voters. You can't rely on the base specifically because you're a younger black woman and then assume that they're going to come out and vote for you in droves. That's it. That's it. That's the only reason why it's a close race. Donald Trump is an unimaginably bad candidate. He is not a strong candidate. He's a bad candidate. Okay. J.D. Vance is also not great either. This is why I said she should have been communicating uh, a, a different message forward for uh, the, the black voters, brown voters, young voters in general. Okay. But she didn't. She didn't do that. She didn't do that at all. And these are some of the consequences. If she does not bring the same margins from the Philadelphia, the, the uh, Philadelphia uh, uh, base of support, young voters, college educated voters, like voters that are going to college, sorry, college students. Like if you don't get turnout from your base, you're kind of cooked. It makes things infinitely closer for no reason. And that's where we're at. And I think that's why these polls are showing uh, this, this uh, insane tie, this close out. Anyway, how late will you be planning on streaming the election night? The entire election night. I'm going to be streaming everything. Mersheimer and Jeffrey Sachs both state Trump will be better on Ukraine. You guys were all screaming Kobe yesterday, but Trump is literally lesser evil voting. Yeah, I have no, I don't think that Donald Trump is uh, going to be quote unquote better on Ukraine because. America's position on Ukraine is not motivated by like uh, an interest in stopping the violence or whatever, or even defending Ukraine. It's motivated by, as Zelensky correctly pointed to, the Scranton, Pennsylvania artillery shell facility that we created, or numerous other factories that are now manufacturing additional weapons. Okay, this is this is it. That's what it is. America has ramped up production and manufacturing in an effort to continue doing war. This is very positive for the military industrial complex. It's just not going to happen. You're not like Donald Trump is, is not going to Donald Trump is not going to put an end to that. Okay. Like people, I think people say that because they also legitimately think that he's like in the pocket of Vladimir Putin and he'll just like give off. He'll just like carve out parts of Ukraine for Russia and just say, we're not giving any more guns to Ukraine. But the reason why we're giving guns to Ukraine is not because we are interested in Ukrainian emancipation. Sure, I think that we're interested in, um, you know, having uh, political influence over Ukraine as a way to uh, wither away our foreign adversary in Russia and as a way to make sure that we have uh, influence over a massive country that's like very close to Russia. Okay, but... More importantly than that, real reason is money. And I don't think that Donald Trump in any way, shape, or form is going to make a decision uh, in the opposite direction. <clears throat> anyway, Miz is here. 
Okay, here's a tracker of all states with an abortion item on the ballot. My past responses were to you about the stuff you said, lol, if you give a fuck. I'm not on about it. I just don't agree that issues are number one, number two with this community are actually important outside of our bubble. There are leftists and Gaza single issue voters, but they're much smaller percentage than people here think. No, I've, I don't, I don't say that. Like when I talk about Gaza, I don't say that like Gaza is a single issue that is going to turn this election. What I say always is that Gaza is important enough. And not only is Gaza important, but Gaza is a gimme. Okay. It's a gimme. It's not only the morally correct position, but it's a fucking gimme. There's no one that is motivated. <laughs> I'm out. Shut the fuck up, Chatters. He's going to stream on his own. I'm, I'm letting him stream. He's not going to be a part of my election uh, coverage. You're fucking insane. Oh, God, he's here. Never mind. He showed up. Uh, hey, I don't want to share my channel. What? Set up. Yes, there is. Go in there. Yeah. Yeah, Mark set it up for you. What? No, I don't want you to help. Go, go, go do your stream. <laughs> How long are you going to stream? Okay. No, I don't care. Have you shown Missy the oh my god I will vote yet? No. Um, all right, let's continue. Uh, I'm not mad about it, Law. I just don't agree the issues number one and number two with this community are actually important outside of our bubble. No. Uh, that while there are people in this community that will not be voting for Kamala Harris over uh, this, this reason, in terms of in terms of uh like in terms of the way people make this calculation you're so rude you're so mean what are you talking about i opened up my ha home and have set up a, a streaming setup so he can stream um i have time and time again said that it's a gimme in the sense that it would change the the calculation it would change the way that people are responding to her it would help her it would help her look stronger on an issue. It would help her literally fucking separate from Joe Biden and Michigan would not be as close. Okay. There are leftists in Gaza single issue voters, but there are much smaller percentage than people here. think I think I do think she should have played the base more, but her strategy, in my opinion, was a good one for a year where fundamentals were anti D no. And I didn't mean just Gaza. It was bad phrasing. There's a lot of big issues here that are lesser outside of the U S I think that her communication on immigration has also been bad and that is something that I think they recognize as well, which is why in Phoenix, she presented a very different attitude on immigration when talking to a bunch of young Mexican uh, and, and Latino voters in Phoenix, where she was like, immigration is, uh, you know, we're going to do <laughs> we're going to do something about amnesty like she's not the U.S. outside of us in this community. Yeah. She did the she did the we're we are children of immigrants shit that Democrats remembered for some reason, which is something that I've said before. Like, if you want if you want more support in the Sun Belt, like you have to fucking you can't have this attitude. <coughs> anyway, my point is my point always was my point always was, OK, that this race should not be close because of Donald Trump, because Donald Trump is ass. And, uh, and, and that much is 100% correct. Um, Donald Trump is an ass candidate and his, he doesn't have the juice that he once had. He has no way of like presenting himself as a fucking moderate. Like he's not doing a good enough job with that. And he's trying to, he, he's trying to fucking pick apart in this incredibly limited base of support that he has. He's trying to pick apart like conspiracy voters and that is a notoriously unreliable uh, type of voter to, to try and win over, okay? They will support you. They'll go out and say they love you, but will they go out and vote? We'll see. Yeah, I'll clap them. <sighs> Get the fuck away from America. <laughs> America, stand behind me. I'll protect you. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look. Let's do some poll watch, and we'll talk about seltzer. Rick Klein is here with our latest poll with Ipsos. And this race, Rick, I mean, it is as close as ever. Yeah, you know, good morning, Janae. Our, our ABC News Ipsos poll has Kamala Harris just out this morning in 49-46 lead over Donald Trump. That's just a tick tighter than last week when we had the lead at four points, but it's all well within the margin of error. And narrowing into the seven battleground states, guess what? 
Nothing changes. An identical lead, 49-46 across the seven battlegrounds. But inside the individual battlegrounds, we still see a little bit of a different story. These are our 538 polling averages. Harris leading in Michigan and Wisconsin, but by less than a percentage point. Right now, tra trailing narrowly in the polling averages everywhere else, including Arizona. That's two and a half points. But again, all of this is within any polling margin of error. And there's new polls even out this morning that would suggest a tighter race, even if that's possible here. And there are signs of discontent everywhere. Uh, particularly uh, among among voters for Donald Trump, but among all voters, 74 percent say that the country is on the wrong track going into Election Day. That includes half of Harris supporters and wait for it. 98 percent of Trump voters say we are on the wrong track as a country and 60 percent of voters say they are still dissatisfied with the candidates. And we finally found an area of bipartisan unity. 61 percent of Harris supporters and 57 percent of, of Trump supporters agree that they are dissatisfied with the candidates. They, they are voting. Damn, dog. Damn, dog. I thought people loved Harris's campaigning. I thought that they thought that she was fucking hot shit. That's crazy. I wonder why people are saying that. I wonder, I wonder how we got here again, dude. How the fuck did that happen? Now, listen, and I've repeated this time and time again. She is not Hillary Clinton, okay? She doesn't have the, the metric ton of, of dissatisfaction, distaste, anger, resentment, hatred, and conspiracy theories that Hillary Clinton had, which is why it was fucking insane for the Democratic Party to be like, this is the candidate, and you're going to shut the fuck up, and you're going to vote for her. Um, okay. She didn't have that. She doesn't have that, which is why, you know, this doesn't, this is not the end all be all. Okay. Not the worst thing. She, however, is not a very good campaigner. She's just not, she's not very, doesn't have a lot of riz. She's black. America's racist. Oh no, for sure. That definitely plays a role. America's also sexist too. But guess what? Guess what? What do I always tell incels? Okay. You don't, you don't look at the situation. You don't look at a fucking, you don't look at a situation that's like built against you and turn around and say, well, any guy can be seven. I do say that. You don't, I, you, you got to play to your advantages and you got to overcome your disadvantages. You know, that's it. I would never be like, oh, this person is a black woman. So she shouldn't run for president, especially if they have dope policies. You know what I mean? It don't matter. Like what? You think she didn't realize that America was racist? And that she was a black woman running in a racist country? No, of course she knows that. What the fuck? That's precisely the reason why she didn't do the I'm with her style bullshit in the way that Hillary Clinton did. Okay? So, <clears throat> I don't think the race is going to be closed. I don't understand why they don't factor in the Supreme Court and Congress when they talk about the country being on the wrong track. No, no, no. Country being on the wrong track is an understandable predicament. Understandable position for people to take. I mean, do you think the country's on the right track? I don't. You know what I mean? I don't think the country's on the right track. I get it. I get why people say that. Because it's not on the right track. This fucking, the wheels have fallen off this bitch. Voting on this week. Wow. Uh, and Rick, as for the battleground states, what are the candidates I... You consistently said that Hillary ran a bullshit campaign. What was it about her that made you a supporter of her back in the day? What do you mean? I was never, I was incredibly critical of Hillary Clinton and talked about how dog shit she was. But I also understood what it would look like for Donald Trump to be president. And I was right. And that's why I was like, yeah, no, you can't. You know, I like that you said a major supporter of Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, this is unacceptable. You cannot have Donald Trump become president. That is devastating. That is devastating for the country's future. And I was right. <laughs> okay as their likeliest paths to victory at this point. Yeah, and you heard, you, you heard Selena lay it out a little bit, but if the polls lined up exactly where things are uh, in the Electoral College, if, if basically if the polls are right, which is a big if, you'd have Donald Trump winning right now. 287 electoral votes, that's, that's more than 270. But the polls, of course, are off and off a little bit. So here's the, the scenario that Selena was talking about, the blue wall. Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, if they all go for Kamala Harris, that is 270 electoral votes exactly. Exactly. That means the presidency for her. For Donald Trump, a couple of different paths, but the likeliest, let's say he carries Nevada and Arizona, where he's been leading in the polling averages, Georgia and North Carolina in the South, historically more Republican. He just needs one more state, and it could be any of the big three. Pennsylvania, the likeliest and the biggest prize. That is the biggest battleground, and it is close to a must win as we see for both candidates. There's agreement on that this year as well.
And Rick, you know, we were talking about this behind the scenes this morning, that poll out of Iowa that now shows Harris leapfrogging, leading Trump. I mean, three percent. What can we? So like this is a this is because because Seltzer is like a very reputable pollster. Um, like people were looking at Iowa, Iowa being deep red uh, normally. People were looking at this poll and being like, oh, it'll be like plus five if it's like plus five Trump. That is good for Kamala, right? That means that there is like, that means that there is a lot of uh, still like resentment for Donald Trump from the base. Maybe some people are not going to go out and vote. And people were looking to uh, e extract some kind of data from this that would be helpful for a, uh, a like national snapshot of what the broader electorate looks like. So for for this poll to just fucking come out plus three for Kamala Harris, okay, it was it was nutty. <clears throat> Guy for interpreting the Iowa Seltzer poll, Trump plus zero to five, great sign for Harris. Trump six to seven, solid result for Harris. Trump eight to nine, plus eight to nine, neutral. Mirrors uh, close Rust Bell polling. Trump plus 10, not good for Harris. Anything more than 12 and is Jover. This is before the poll came out. Like, that's what the... That's what the analysis was. Cause like it's Iowa is like supposed to be super red. Well, maybe not super red, but like red enough. Iowa allowing huge innovations in fuck ass map science. <sighs> Caitlin Clark is Iowa's goat. Huge asterisk plus three within the margin of error. So it was better to call this a dead even poll than Harris ahead by three. It doesn't matter. The point is, this is unexpected. This doesn't mean that like Texas is gonna fucking turn blue or whatever. Okay. This doesn't mean that at all. What this simply says is that Trump's uh, Trump's base in like deep, deep red places, um, at least like in the middle of the country, is kind of withering away a little bit in comparison to like places like Florida, where he's obviously cooking. OK, like I don't think Kansas is going to fucking turn blue. Like, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm simply saying that. Things are not looking good in Trump world. And you can tell that things are not looking good in Trump world because they're freaking the fuck out over this. And early voting data showing like a lot of women coming out and voting also does not look good for the Trump world because the Trump world keeps complaining about how men, men need to go out and vote. Please go out and vote. If you don't vote, you're gay. <laughs> like I have a voters in 2024 for some reason. Black woman is speaking. Listen and learn. Listen and learn! Anyway, do you think the other big pollsters are just hurting with a conservative Harris lead? Um, I mean, that's the that's the assumption right now. I mean, that's like, and pollsters have said as much. Like, they they do have a Trump bump that they baked in because they don't want to fuck it up. I'm really glad it's closed. They keep saying it's tied. It will get more people to vote. Remember in 2016, they said Hillary had a 90% chance to win, and I think it hurt her chances. A lot of people just decided not to vote. Yeah, there were a lot of issues there. I think the lack of motivation to go out and vote wasn't because Hillary's definitely going to win. I think it was people also despising her and despising Donald Trump too, but definitely despising her. <laughs> My favorite Iowa meme, Pennsylvania. Ah, we're the nation's closest swing state. We don't like Trump, but Kamala hates fracking. This is so difficult. Ah, Iowa. It's just, these memes are so stupid. Anyway. Let's continue. Glean from that. Yeah, well, just for starters, remember where Iowa landed last time. That was not particularly close, about an eight, uh, eight or nine point uh, win for Donald Trump. And it's possible that this poll is, is on to something powerful. It, it could be an outlier. It could be off. But if it's if it's right, not just about Iowa, but about some other upper Midwestern states like Wisconsin and Michigan, if we start to see women break more heavily toward, toward Kamala Harris, it, that might change the landscape on election night. We'll have to wait and see today. Very interesting. Rick, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh. oh man, libs are libbing the fuck up. You can tell the right wing doesn't think they're doing well. Your boy Alex Jones is back. Yeah, that's dude. You no. Know. Oh my god, he looks extra red. He kind of looks better now than he ever has, but also in this video, he looks super red. Other key findings in the Iowa poll: independent women back Harris by a twenty-eight point margin. Senior women support her by more than a two-to-one margin, sixty-three percent to twenty-eight percent. 97% of them support Harris, while only 89% of Republicans support Trump. I love old people now. Nah. 
Iowa had abortion protected by a state courts. Then just days before Dobbs, the Iowa State Supreme Court struck that right down. The GOP passed a six-week abortion ban. It was upheld by the state Supreme Court this summer. This is the first election since that ruling. And here's what I think is being slept on this fall. There's a state Supreme Court justice in Iowa who's on the ballot in Tuesday. He sided with the majority in his 4-3 upholding of the abortion ban this summer. As a reminder, there are also state justices who upheld the abortion bans this year on the ballot in Florida and Arizona. In Arizona, the GOP has put a constitutional amendment on the ballot that would nullify those elections. If Kamala wins white women vote, it is an abortion. She should think it's Taylor Swift. No, dude. 80 80 year old women are not voting for Kamala Harris because of fucking Taylor Swift. They're not playing in their abortion ads. Dr. Davis, what do I do? John, she needs an abortion or she's going to die from the pregnancy. Sorry, that's not happening. What are you doing? Who are you? I'm your Republican congressman. Now that we're in charge, we banned abortion. No exceptions. You can't do this. She's dying. I won the last election. Okay, this is crazy because it's like, like, this is kind of funny, but it's a real thing that's happening. So it's kind of fucked up to make this. It's kind of fucked up to make it in this way where it almost feels like comical. Like this is not hyperbole. This is not the A24 style horror film horror flick that we saw uh with the other like cop pulling a young lady over with her dad when they're crossing the state border so it's my decision but don't worry you can still have children just not with her have you seen the thing with turkey no we versprechen ihnen dass wir die kommunisten marxisten fascisten und die links radikalen verbrecher die wir ungeziefer in unser jesus christ okay hold on Um, wait, am I, are you guys getting the, let me, um, make sure that we have the, uh, do we have the, the content sensitive content warning, uh, up or not? Do you guys have it? You see it? The tag is up. Okay. Just want to make sure that the sensitivity tag is, is on. Okay. Good. Hey, Jack, someone tell me where to read about what the plus three for Harris means. Just trying to figure this out for myself. (laughs) Chatter is looking for the truth. He doesn't, he's like, this, this fuck ass Hassan bullshit. Get him, get him out of here. Like my entire, my entire coverage has been afforded to just like explaining to you exactly what that means. And he's like, eh, I don't really care about this. I don't really care what you have to say. I need to, I like it though. It's good. Seek it out on your own. Yeah, the, they're poisoning the blood of this country is like a direct verbatim Hitler bar. So that's like, that was pretty crazy. That was pretty fucking crazy. We are the greatest abschiebe action to If I am not elected, it will be a I mean, I think they're just saying Donald Trump's, uh, is, this is a Trump speech just in German, but um, the, the enemy from within poisoning the blood of this nation, like America for Americans, those are all direct verbatim, not paraphrased, Hitler bars, okay? Straight up. So when people go, oh, dude, you're being hyperbolic, like, no, no, that's just straightforward nazi shit okay fuck you son i'm a canvasser in north carolina if you've gotten oh my god i will vote for donald trump stuck on my head and i've been singing it on the field if north carolina goes red it's your fault <laughs> north carolina plus 10 red i made every north carolina canvasser have the fucking song stuck in their goddamn heads. It's not my fault. It's a banger, dude. What do you mean? What the fuck do you mean, dude? You can't be getting mad at me for that. I will vote for Donald Trump. Oh my God, vote. I will vote for Donald Trump. We don't do ad breaks anymore. We just do a uh, high will vote for Donald Trump breaks uh, uh, where I tell you to subscribe for six dollars or for free with a twitch prime you know what i mean or you can get gifted a sub as well that way you can send me links and i will keep playing this banger you can send me this link as a banger to play what is this it's over the people go out to vote no fear no more vote for trump let's go vote for trump so 
fucking good, dude. Benign Burger. D Machine, thank you for the five gifted. Benign Burger, thank you for the 20 gifted subs. Calm Like a Tom, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Oh, God. Oh, no. They were expecting thousands of people at the JD Vance rally with Don Jr. in Pennsylvania. Only tens of people showed up. Oh, no. Oh, no. Socialist Thug Jane, thank you for the five gifted. Not a good sign. Oh, my God. I will vote. I will vote for Donald Trump. Thing is, Nazis committed genocide. It is kind of extreme to link a person with those guys just because your ideas are nationalist, don't you think? Brother, what do you... I hate this argument so much. I hate it so much. You're literally saying there is no reason to learn about history in order not to repeat the mistakes of the past, okay? Someone does not have to have a goofy-ass mustache and, and, uh, and, and you can present the situation like as the final solution being activated for you to be like, okay, now he's Hitler. Like, what do you mean? I hate this fucking dumbass argument, dude. You think they still weren't Nazis before they killed 6 million Jews? Like, how do you think we got there? Why do you think there is, like, laws and, and uh, guidelines surrounding what constitutes a genocide that Israel is violating on a regular basis? But that's besides the point. We, the entire goal is to stop it from happening before it actually gets to that point, you know? All you're saying to me in this circumstance, okay? All you're saying to me in this circumstance is like, you're not, you're, you're, you're basically, you're basically saying, let Trump mass deport and maybe execute a couple million migrants first before you can uh, correctly call him a Nazi or Adolf Hitler. And like, how many millions does he have to kill before you decide, okay, he is Adolf Hitler, okay? Because... You know, not only is he quoting Hitler, but his policies are also one-to-one -one directly Adolf Hitler, okay? It's not like Adolf Hitler originally started with, like, we're going to kill every Jewish person. You know, he definitely wanted that for sure. But the original goals of the, uh, of the Nazi government was to do mass deportations as well, okay? Like, you don't arrive at, let's execute every single migrant before you arrive at they're dehumanized they're not real humans they're eating cats and dogs they're doing uh barbaric horrifying rapes okay you you kind of have to get there you kind of have to gear the uh, uh the, the the crowd up to be open to the mass execution policies there's a reason why it's called the final solution and not the first solution okay <clears throat> This kind of stuff is, is just like very, very stupid. It's just like anti-intellectual in terms of, of conducting yourself, in terms of like launching an argument. And it's especially funny because like I made these arguments in 2016 about Donald Trump because I thought that there was enough there in terms of his dehumanizing rhetoric towards migrants in 2016. And he has only increased the pressure and he has only quoted Adolf Hitler more and chatters are still going. I don't know. I don't know. Radical police, radical. We will, we will. You're being too radical for Twitch. Informed Hank Lansy. Yeah. This interview with a, uh, of a German post uh, World War II hits your point. Exactly how violence is ratcheted and normalized from Milton Mayer. What no one seemed to notice at a colleague of mine. Uh, philologist was the ever widening gap after 1933 between the government and the people. Just think how wor very wide this gap was to begin with here in Germany, and it always became uh, and it always and it became always wider. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it doesn't make people close to their government to be told that this is a people's government, a true democracy, or to be enrolled in civilian defense or even to vote. All this has really nothing to do with knowing one is governing. What happened here was the gradual habi habituation of the people, little by little, to being. Governed by surprise, the receiving decisions deliberated in secret to believing that the situation was so complicated that the government had to act on information which the people could not understand or so dangerous that even if the people could not understand it, it could not be released because of national security. And in the sense uh, and in their sense of identification with Hitler, their trust in him made it easier to widen this gap and reassured those who would otherwise have worried about it. The separation of government from the people, this widening of the gap took place so gradually and so insensibly, each step disguised, perhaps not even intentionally, as a temporary emergency measure. I mean, this is like post-9-11 America. 
and the the normalization of like American war, no matter how bloody or how deadly. Um, it's a, there's a direct comparison here with Israel as well and what Israel is doing currently. There's a direct comparison with like post 9-11 America and America's like attitude change. But um, but yeah, in terms of like the way that Donald Trump talks about uh, immigrants and how he lies about immigrants without any sort of pushback whatsoever, you know, it's uh, legitimately terrifying. And there are still chatters in here being like, I don't know, man, you can't really call him a Nazi. Like, yeah, you can. And you should because it's correct. Moine Register is out with a brand new poll conducted by J.N. Selzer's firm. This, as you know, is the gold standard of polling in Iowa, and it shows Vice President Harris with a three-point lead over Donald Trump in that state. Harris has the support of 47 percent of likely voters to Trump's 44 percent. That result within the margin of error. A gulf had opened up between the Jewish minority and the general population. The latter, while not mobilized around strident and violent anti-Semitism, was increasingly apathetic, passive, and indifferent to the fate of the former. Origins of the final solution. Yeah. Slowly but surely, slowly but surely, you increase the pressure uh, that you, and, and you consistently dehumanize the outgroup over and over again, and, and people just kind of turn a blind eye. This is why I am genuinely terrified about the liberal rhetoric surrounding the issue of immigration with no with no counterbalance, with no pushback whatsoever. What about the squirrels, though? What squirrels, man? Shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. Why are people so goddamn annoying? What is that? The, the, the fucking one squirrel that was euthanized or some shit? I know it's, it's fucked up. OK, shut up. Yeah, they killed the squirrel. I know it's really fucked up. I, I, I agree. But, like, time and place, dude. Fuck me. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Some of you are literally the, the hawk to up understanders in the chat. How is it any different than that shit? It's just, like, literally another, <clears throat> another one of those things that, like, coworkers love and talk about endlessly and relentlessly. And, and they fucking chatters are badgering me with it. It's viral on the conservative side of Twitter and has not broke through to the liberal side. Nobody cares. I just, like... Don't understand why we're having this conversation right now. Joining us now, pollster J.N. Selzer. Coworker ass chatters in the fucking chat. Jesus Christ. Well, all right, um, J.N., obviously you are bringing, we're, you, we're coming on air right now uh, with this polling. And I mean, we could just put it up on the screen for folks because... Uh, I didn't have this on my bingo card, as I like to say. Um, <laughs> Vice President Kamala Harris, 47 percent. Donald Trump, 44 percent. Take us inside your poll. Um, what 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 is new here? We know that there's a majority of Iowa men in this poll that say they prefer Trump. A majority of women prefer Harris um, among likely Iowa voters. This seems like something is happening. It does seem like something's happening. Now, we've been living with the numbers day by day as we've been gathering the data. So we've had a little bit of time to get over the initial shock. You know, Iowa is a very Republican state. There's only one person at statewide office or federal office who is a, a Democrat. So to have the presidential candidate lead um, by a substantive margin is was shocking to begin with. One of the reasons she is leading is because of her strength with women generally, even stronger with women age 65 and over. Her margin is more than two to one. And this is an, is a, an age group that shows up to vote or votes early in disproportionately large numbers. So it's a little of the, a bit of the boost that Kamala Harris has gotten this time. Uh, you know, it, it, for me, this is um, very telling. Uh, of a lot of the effort uh, and the importance of a little thing called ground game. Mm. And when a campaign... Okay, why are you talking about Iowa? What kind of... I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm wrong on this, but what kind of fucking ground game does Iowa have for the Democratic Party? Is there, like, a tremendous amount of work and tremendous amount of effort being placed? Maybe tomorrow and today, but... Like, what is the Democratic Party's ground game in Iowa? There's, I'm, I'm sure they're pumping a shit ton. You're wrong. I'm sure they're pumping a shit ton of ads. They have a lot of money, dude. The Democrats have a lot of fucking money. 
The leftover Obama squad put in the BAM bag together. Local Iowa Dems have been working hard, to be honest. Don't they have infrastructure there because of the Iowa caucus? Surely there's lots of volunteers there. What is this? Ohio Sheriff's Lieutenant in hot water as a social post. I'm sorry. If you support the Democratic Party, I will not help you. And the problem is that I know which of you supports the Democratic Party, and I will not help you survive in the end days. That's awesome. That's so fucking funny, dude. <laughs> These people are so... God, I love hogs so much. Why do I love hogs so much? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I love my fucking hogs. Oh, wonderful. Fantastic. Yeah. Did you see Trump coping about Iowa? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, we're we're going to get there. Hold on. Coming in with 107 days to make the case to communities across the country. And we know the importance of, of communities like ours. Uh, Iowa is a bellwether, uh, particularly as you get closer to the w uh, election as it, is, as it is in the beginning, right? So here we are at the end. What's your take on that aspect of this, that the numbers have changed so dramatically from the 18 points uh, that Donald Trump had to now That's Kamala Harris uh, over Joe Biden, the 18 points to now having Kamala Harris up by three. It's, you know, clearly there's something going on here if our poll numbers are correct. And it's the same method that I've used really since I started polling. So we have a good accuracy rate. We're comfortable with what it is that we do, which is to allow our data to reveal to us what's happening with the future electorate. So that may be the little lucky charm here is that we're able to uncover the change that's happening on the ground. We certainly know anecdotally, as you drive around the metro area, you see far more, I guess I'd say far fewer Trump signs than we've seen in past cycles. But, you know, it's hard to put too much faith in that. So mm -hmm. now we have some hard numbers. We'll see. I, I will ever... just mention that neither of these candidates gets to 50 percent. So there still is some swing left uh, to be determined on election night. It, it has been fun to watch all of the folks who follow polls on on Twitter try to decide what your poll means uh, for other states. And so I wonder, when you look at white voters specifically, if you think there is something in your poll that you can extrapolate out to Michigan, to Wisconsin, to Pennsylvania? Well, as your graphics are showing, there is uh, clearly a gender gap there. Iowa is predominantly white, um, so it, there's not... There's not much an analysis we can do on the non-white vote. But I think what it does say is that polls that are deciding that they know what the future electorate looks like may be basing it on past electorates. And in some cases, that would give Harris an advantage. And in some states, that would give Kamala Harris an advantage. Or some would give Donald Trump the advantage. So we'll see how that plays out. I just feel like these numbers represent um, the, our last poll in September had, had Trump leading by just a four-point margin when Joe Biden, back in June, had lost by an 18-point margin. So we're certainly seeing an upward, almost linear shift in the Democratic strength in Iowa. You know, uh, Jan, I just want to note that the only Democrat elected statewide in um, Iowa, Rob Sand, uh, when your poll came out, he he texted me. And Rob has been saying for a very long time, um, he is the state auditor, that there have been many close losses in Iowa. And Iowa is, in fact, um, a, a place that's in play for, for Democrats. And this poll, to me, um, indicates... Perhaps <laughs> Rob Sand is right, you know, by putting in the work, infrastructure, as um, uh, Chairman Steele just noted. Uh, have Democrats made Iowa more competitive because of their presence there and the, also the issue of reproductive rights? 21% shift because of abortion seems a bit much, though. Um, the only way to analyze this is, one, um, the women voters, older voters in general, and also... Uh, and also the fact that like Trump might be depressing Iowa voters with his rhetoric in general. But abortion is pretty consequential. Abortion is pretty consequential. And Donald Trump is running a dog shit campaign. The Democratic Party really hasn't done shit here. And honestly, the state party hasn't done much shit either. More the local country, uh, county party apparatuses. We hate our governor. So we've been trying to flip our 
local Congress that possibly trickled up to the top of the ticket? Source M. Iowan. Because that was something that um, bubbled up on the ground throughout the state, um, namely led by the governor herself. Right. Well, I would mention that Rob Sand is that one Democrat elected statewide. So he's got his finger on the pulse of what's happening in the Democratic Party. As we were trying to determine, you know, this is a very short poll because there's no time left to write lengthy stories with lots of data in them. So we're tr we don't have as much data as we might like about why this is happening. But our farmers fucking hate Trump. He actually ruined their lives for years. I've heard this a lot, but like, if that was the case, then Donald Trump, uh, Donald Trump wouldn't have gotten 53% of the vote in Iowa to Joe Biden's 44%, 45% of the vote. You know what I mean? Like in 2020, in 2020, Donald Trump still won Iowa convincingly, right? So, um, I have heard this argument. I have heard this argument that tariffs weren't popular for the farmers. Uh, but you also have to remember like a lot of, there aren't that many of them. That's number one. And <clears throat> like it demonstrably did not move the results. And you also have to remember a lot of people, a lot of these rural voters are not fucking farmers. Okay. They just LARP as farmers, but they're not. Yeah. Um, hold on. Let's just finish this and then I'll get to like the way that Trump is behaving and why I think it's like hurting him. Okay. Because Donald Trump is also going kind of crazy, he's going nutty mode. And it's not, it's not good. It's not, it's not looking too good for him in Trump world. Trump world is coping pretty fucking hard on this shit. The current and yeah, we'll do hogwash later as well. Okay, let's continue. Census I from the pee. reporters who who work this beat. I haven't done is SNL that the yet. Six month abortion ban went into effect just this past summer, oh. and so I think as Iowans are starting to see the consequences of that, I think it has uh, gotten people interested in voting. <laughs> the thing we noticed in our September poll that that sh you know shrunk Trump's lead by fourteen percentage points. He lost no actual ground. He had as many respondents supporting him in september as he had in june but the the size of the likely voter pool had increased mm. and most of that 85 respondents went to kamala harris so so jan let's, let's talk about uh sort of the why because i that's the world i like to live in um as a former party official is okay why are voters doing what they what they're doing Organization, as we just talked about, you and Simone, you know, that that's sort of planning that is all good and smart. It's all critically important. But the why narrative tells us a lot of, of the inside thoughts of the voters. And there, there, there are two aspects of the messaging here the, that feeds into the why. For the Trump people, that the narrative that they tried to get up and, and out in front of voters was, are you better off, right, than you were four years ago? For the Harris campaign, it was, it was a different kind of approach. It was, okay, I want you to size the two of us up. And you tell me <laughs> which one you think is going to be better suited to take care of the nation's interests over their own. And and I th I wanted to, I'm curious as, as to as you look at I'm sure you're going to peel back on these numbers a little bit more, but do you get a sense of of the why in that space that the voters looked at the messaging here as a way to sort of sort of the carrot that led them to where we are right now? Well, I think that question about are you better off that people tend to think well that's that's your pocketbook. There are other ways that people are not better off. And again, I go back to the Dobbs decision and the six week abortion ban, which put m women of a certain of childbearing age into some a danger zone. If you if you might, some might feel it's that way. The thing I need to point out, and it was pointed out to me by one of the register <sighs> reporters, is that this change, I think, is largely organic. That mm. is, the presidential campaigns haven't visited. They're not putting money into this state. So that it's not that this is something that has been created by the campaigns themselves. I, I think was largely written off, which is why this poll is such a surprise. So I think there's something more organic that people are deciding for themselves. This is the time I'm going to get off the bench. I'm going to show up and, and that it appears from my data. My boyfriend is a registered Republican and he has stupid head ass Trump stickers on his car. He said to me today, don't worry, he's not going to win. Damn. Another truth nuke. Another truth bomb coming in hot 
Trump supporters are are depressed. She's saying what you said five minutes ago, lol. Yeah, because I mean, she's a pollster, and I understand what the fuck she's talking about. I already I already gave you the analysis as to why these people are are you know these people are fucking popping off that that is happening more on the people deciding to vote uh, for Kamala Harris. The Stop Democratic jacking candidate. yourself off. What uh, do you as mean? a former pre-med student at Johns Hopkins University, I appreciate organic chemistry. Uh, <laughs> Jay Ann Seltzer, <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Turning now to our brand new NBC News poll, National Political How did no one see this or predict this before? Um, I think that there are... There are a lot of people who don't want to fuck up as they have done. There is a crisis in consistently underestimating Trump's chances because of his capacity to hit low propensity voters and drive them out to vote. Okay. Having said that, however, I have kept telling you over and over again for the past couple of months that like, while Kamala Harris is running objectively a bad campaign, <clears throat> are why gonna talk about Ethan? Love you, chatter. It is November third. I cannot begin to explain to you what is about to happen in the next two days. I am a political commentator. I think we're gonna keep talking about the election. Please take a deep breath. Okay. Serious question: Do you think it's also me media cherry picking to increase viewership and fear monger? No. Responded Steve Kornacki is here to walk us through all of the numbers. Steve, this is the moment we have been waiting for. What does this poll show us? Yeah, I mean, fittingly, isn't it? At the very end, we find a tie nationally. 49% for Harris, 49% for Trump. Really, that's what we found when we last polled this a couple weeks ago. We go under the hood here and look at some of the other numbers there. There's this question of enthusiasm. A couple notable things here. This is the share of voters who are calling themselves very interested. Do you like the cultivation of your current community when it comes to politics? politics yes i do i love my community and i love the community that i've cultivated i think it's wonderful and it basically keeps me alive okay interested in this election and you can see it stands at 77 percent, which is down from 2020 when we had that historic turnout uh, also interestingly here the i don't think that these guys are keeping it 50 50 for some secret like material interest to keep the eyeballs on the election or because they think that they want to like uh, draw turnout. I think they are polling people and they're adjusting the polls with a Trump bump because of previous polls always consistently underestimating Trump because of his likelihood of uh, because of the ways in which Donald Trump brings low propensity voters to come out and vote for him. That's it. And I've been saying this already. I think that. The reason why they're doing this is because they have underestimated Trump too many times and they don't want to underestimate him again. So they're trying to do their very best. They don't want to look like they got owned. Kanal gördüm senin yayınını yayınlıyor. Bir kişi izliyor. Muhtemelen o malum yayıncının ezik kitlesi. Ee, moderatorlara gönderirsen hangi kanal olduğunu banlarız. Ban çekeriz. Kardeş. The interest is lower among Hispanic voters and black voters. Typically, you would say that is bad news for Democrats. But this year, keep in mind, uh, among black voters, that could be very troubling uh, for the Democrats. But among Hispanic voters, the Trump folks are hoping for big strides. They've been seeing that in the polls. If that does not translate into Election Day votes, that could be trouble for them. Then we come to the issues uh, that voters say that matter most to them. Polling is not cheap, but I don't think this comes at the expense of journalism. I think the way that the Times uses polling to drive subscription and grow audience pays for the journalism, not the other way around. I would, however, like to have a better idea of who's going to win. News orgs pour tons of resources into polling at the expense of covering real issues, only to say two days before the election, we really have no idea if we're right or wrong. A final point that I hope is obvious from the whole of my work, but may not be obvious if you only read individual snippets. I have no idea whether our polls or any polls might be right. Uh, polls be right too good for Harris or too good for Trump. No one does. This cycle, I've tried to offer real meat to these scenarios with evidence, not just abstract 30% Harris landslide, 30% Trump landslide, 40% too close. If you personally found some of that evidence more convincing than others, that's great. Me, I have no idea. This is why I'm Mr. Fucking Vibes Based Analysis post polls, okay? That's it. Because even like the top pollsters, like Nate Cohn is, is the poll guy for the New York Times, Dave Wasserman, poll guy. The, even the 
even the fucking top pollsters or the top analysts for polls is turning around and saying like, I really don't know what the fuck's happening here. To be fair, I've always uh, sprinkled vibes-based analysis on top of the polls. I cannot express how insane it is that Trump does good numbers with Hispanic voters. It makes sense. New from the election center, a very clear picture. What? It's a, it's a joke, dude. Quick summation of some of the points. There is no reason to believe pollsters fix what went wrong in 2020. There is some evidence. Non-response bias may be better, but also evidence is still there. Slash no reason to assume it's gone. Unknown whether waiting fixes. Many pollsters, not us, have adopted heavy-handed practices that yield more Republican-leaning samples out of potentially but not necessarily justify fear of systematically failing to reach Trump voters again. This is what I've been saying, okay? A lot of pollsters underestimated bigly Donald Trump in 2016. They still underestimated him in 2020, okay? Donald Trump still outperformed the polls in 2020. The difference is Joe Biden won, just not by the margins that polls were showing him uh, winning by. And that is precisely the reason why pollsters were like, well, you know, we... Trump is Mr. Turnout in the general, especially. So we got to do something about it. And I think that the reason why the 2022 midterm polls were a lot closer wasn't necessarily because they had uh, pollsters had overcorrected or had figured it out. The reason why 2022 polls were a lot closer within striking distance than like 2020 was because midterms have high propensity voter turnout. Okay, those guys are easier to predict. Those guys are easier to analyze. This is why this is why I think that the midterm election polls were a lot closer to what ended up happening, whereas general election turnout is very different. Okay, that's it. That's the way I see it. And in order to, in my opinion, uh, in order to make sure that they don't fuck up again in like uh, or or even uh, be closer to the margins of of uh, the end results than even in 2020, they're overcorrecting with like at least a two point bump for Trump. And considering how close of a race this is, that obviously matters a lot. <clears throat> what the fuck? Atlas Intel Wisconsin poll Trump picking up 65 percent of black voters, 65 percent of black voters. Look, Wisconsin is a weird state because it's like super rural. And that's why I've said out of like the blue wall, despite what the polls say, that's the one area that is the one fucking state that is like, I think, trickier for the Democratic Party than the rest of the blue wall. OK, that is an insane statement. There's eight black people total in Wisconsin. It doesn't matter, dude. That's like 65 percent of the black voters, not just black men. Not just black men, 65% of all black voters, that is not, you know, just specifically avoiding Milwaukee. Yeah, I'm from Wisconsin. I just don't believe that. Yeah, no, it's in, an insane. It also is weird because like 64%, 65% of black voters, only 24% of Hispanic voters is also crazy. And the Asian voters are split 50-50. Like what the fuck is going on in this poll, man? This is nutty. Misogyny voting for Trump is nasty work. No, this is not real, dude. What the fuck? Dude, 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 dude. There is not a... Okay, remember what I told you guys about how there is not a single state in the United States of America, the continental United States, that is majority in favor of heavy restrictions on abortion, okay? I stand on that. I can... I'll stand on that even if I don't see a fucking poll. And I was correct... Uh, I... You know, I was right when it came to Alabama, even though I hadn't seen a recent poll in Alabama. Right. Remember that? This is another thing that I will tell you right now. OK, I have not seen any polls. I have not seen a single fucking poll on the Wisconsin black population. OK, and I can assure you that there is not a single fucking like, I mean, this is cross tabs anyway, uh, and, and it just is you know this is just an unreliable ass poll overall because i can tell you with a 100 percent certainty that there is not a single state where the majority of the black population which also includes black women okay higher likelihood of voting 
and will vote by 80 to 90 percent for Kamala Harris. Like the fact that black women and black men both are going to majority vote for Republicans is the least is the most insane scenario. Okay, that is less likely than Texas and Florida flipping blue. Okay, stop sending me the fucking 2014 religious landscape study. You're so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the 2014 religious landscape study conducted is not an accurate reflection of how people view Roe v. Wade, especially post Roe v. Wade's uh, abolition. Please stop sending me the same fucking poll. Ah! You guys hear me say something. Turn around and Google something else. You guys literally put the keywords of what you have heard me say into the Google machine, and then you come back with the first result without looking at what's up. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah, we got a problem. What is it? I can't even watch NMP clips, so I can't find out if he's dating Nora or Kachi. Hold on here. Just speak into this microphone so people can hear you. What? I try and watch. There's no, wait, there's no, oh, it was muted. Oops. Say it now. Say it again. Okay, so I'm live. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's it. Are you just trying to farm people that are two days out from the election to come and watch drama clips? Well, what would they rather watch? Drama clips or drama clips about the president? Drama clips about the president. But NMP might be dating Kachi. Okay. You don't think that's important? What I was going to say to you is uh, the internet is lagging. Wait, really? I try to watch like. I'm gonna clips. give you. I'll, I'll give you March's. Uh, I'll give you March's uh, uh, phone number, and you can text him, uh, and he can come and help you potentially. He said he would be down to do that, but I, uh, uh, I'm surprised that it's lagging. Is your internet lag ever? No, but I think it's because I'm, uh, I'm Ethernet cable connected. You might be streaming off of Wi-Fi. You did this so on purpose. That might be the reason. So um, you did this on purpose. Yeah. Totally. I wanted to cook you. Um, well, if you wanted me to help with the election, you just have to ask. We could do stream together. Okay. I'm sending it to you. <clears throat> I sent him his, uh, your, I mean, his number to you. Okay. Text him. Then he'll, uh, he'll try and help. Chat, I will say this, though. Hassan, a few years ago, was not the best host. Because you were always on your phone. But you told me you deleted Twitter. And off stream, Hassan was actually very fun to hang out with. And positive. Yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a much better mental space for sure. Like he nowadays. bought me food, we hung out. Dude, how good was that fucking curry? It was the best curry I ever had in my life. Yeah, like on stream, he's a very negative man, but off stream, he was just extremely nice and positive. Yeah, in spite of everything else that's going on. Okay, uh, now show me the NMP clip that you. What, what is the NMP time. clip? The, I don't know. What was the one that you showed him? I don't know. The one that got him on the news. Oh, 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 the, the, who think, no, I can't show that, dude. What do you mean? I got a warning for showing that. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy because, like, it's allowed everywhere. Twitch's, Twitch's standards for moderation are so much higher than every other website, which is why it's, like, really funny when people are like, Twitch is anti Semitic or whatever the fuck. Like, they're so stupid for saying that shit because Twitch literally has a more rigid standard. Um, Twitch literally has a more rigid standard for like what is allowed on the platform than any other website. And normally that shouldn't even get you banned. Like that video showing that video should not get you banned. It doesn't get you banned on YouTube. It doesn't get you banned on Twitter. It's literally on every other website. But in this circumstance, it's like it's Twitch's hyper fucking uh, hyper rigid rules. So yeah, it was really <clears throat> fun to hang out with off stream chat. He got me chicken. Like, really nice guy um, and very sweet. That's all I wanted to say. All right. Thank you. Well, we're going to get back to, we're going to get back to poll watch. It was really funny when they unbanned Fresh and Fit for like a week and all the YouTube creators were calling Twitch races while Fresh and Fit is not banned on YouTube. Exactly. Really fun off stream. Got me chicken. Great guy. <laughs> all right, bro. You're going to scratch the fucking ground. Yeah, He's trying to clip farm. <laughs> I can't wait for this to be on LSF again. And yeah, I already, I already muted you. I already muted you. Get the fuck out. Go back to your stream. What are you doing? You just left this goddamn stream open. Uh, gave Miz the PC that doesn't have Windows activated. It's not my fault. It's the one PC that we have that's like working right now in the house. They've also pretty much made all LGBT streamers segregated into the politics category. Yeah. Well, no, they're just saying like, don't you dare talk about that gay shit. Okay. 
if you want to talk about that gay shit, you're going to get a fucking, you're going to get a content warning. <laughs> they're like, they're doing, they're doing don't, uh, don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> Twitch's policies are a uh, blast from the past <laughs> where they're like, hey, content warning, <laughs> don't say gay. Wait, so you even have a secondary stream set up for your streamer friends? It's kind of awesome. Yeah. Yeah. If you're gay, if you're queer, your existence is not political unless you start talking about it. Okay. Unless you start talking about that gay shit, in which case, you know, don't do it because you will get content warning. <laughs> what is this? The garbage truck bit only hurt Trump more with Puerto Rican voters. Oh my God. Oh, Owen Next Jones went model. to a fucking Wisconsin. Oh, hell yeah. Putting British people in, in hogland is always my favorite type of content. I'm always in favor of that. We should, we should torture British people more like this. Okay. This is my favorite when they, when they bring out the guardian guy once every four years, always funny until it happens to you. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's my special interest. Hogwatch is my special interest, but I especially love when Hogwatch is, is being conducted by like a British person who turns around and has to like speak to the hogs directly. It's the best. Cause even if you're like, even if you straight up are a British hog, you still are not as hogged up as an American hog. I know this is cringe, but you can't do cross tab diving unless the group you're looking at has what is called an oversample. Otherwise, the number of people surveyed is too small to be statistically representative. However, an odd result in the cross tabs doesn't discount the overall sample. Makes sense. And how they rate the candidates. And I think, again, notably, Harris continues to do best on abortion. 20-point advantage there. Trump continues to do best on inflation, cost of living, and advantage there of 12. This is something to watch on Election Day because, of course, she's actually doing better on abortion than Trump is doing on inflation and cost of living. We'll have to see how that pans out with the voters. Absolutely. And we can continue and take a look here. This other issue, we talked about it in our last poll, too, the dueling approval ratings. This is sort of an albatross for Harris here. Her administration that she's a part of, Joe Biden's approval rating sits at just 41 percent. And then there's this twist. Donald Trump, retrospectively, do you now approve of how he did as president in our poll? 48 percent, almost almost half give him that approval rating. And we have to pause again because 48 percent is higher than the approval ratings he was getting when he was president, Steve. Really striking to see that. Exactly. So is that a hidden advantage there for Trump in some way? Then there's this question, too. We just hear all the stories, all the images from early voting. And look at this. Two thirds of voters in our poll say they've either voted already or they're going to vote early uh, on Election Day. One third of the electorate actually saying they will turn out and vote then. And you can see we saw a bit of this in 2020. Remember, the early Early vote here, more Harris friendly in our poll. That election day vote, that's the big wild card. You don't know what that turnout will look like on election day. But if Trump has an advantage there, you know, see uh, if it's enough to overcome what he could potentially lose in the early side. And then the gender gap. Again, we've talked about this throughout the campaign. We've talked about this for decades. Trump up 18 with men, Harris 16 uh, with women. That is a 34 point gender gap by about 10 points. If this happens, this would be the biggest gender gap ever recorded. Stunning. And his lead with men bigger than her lead with women. It's an interesting uh, uh, turnabout from, I think, what we've seen in the past yeah. in some cases here. And then you could just take a look here. These are the battleground states. We got some new <laughs> polls this morning. And I mean, Steve Kornacki's doing gender. They got him. He's woke now. Do you have anything big uh, planned for Election Day? Yes, Josh, Ed and Germentum is going to be wearing his best khakis and will have a board behind him to to do his best Steve Kernacki impression. I will say, um, especially with the Seltzer, especially with the Seltzer polls, like the number one pollster for the majority report, Chapo and the Hasanabi broadcast is looking pretty fucking fresh in comparison to everyone else. Now we'll see. We'll see on election day. He's either going to come. He's either going to win big and uh, become a legend or he is going to uh, he is going to uh, have egg on his face. He's not going to be here. Uh, he's not going to be here personally. He's going to be tuning in from Discord. What crossover app DSA LA? How you? Why did you film it like this? Like oh my god, DSA LA, you fucking boomers! Jesus Christ! 
Why is there Vaseline over the camera? Yeah, what can you say? These are the averages. Uh, and look, the most lopsided, quote unquote, 1.9 points for Trump in Arizona. So razor tight in the, uh, razor thin in the uh, battlegrounds. Yes. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking. This is funny. I kind of want to watch this. When was the House divided. My parents split. My parents and I are split between Trump and Harris. Uh. Oh. Will you be bringing the gay on Tuesday? Yes, I think so. I just texted him. I forgot. I forgot to ask him Let's take uh, ahead of time because I always just assumed that he would be here. Um, luckily, we already have a content warning in terms of like uh, talking about politics. So him bringing up gay shit won't be, uh, you know, won't get a slap with an additional content warning. Are you taking the Tuesday off? Yeah. To yeah. <laughs> what are you fucking crazy? I was looking at something um, that I think is interesting, I guess. But I was looking at my stats leading up to the election. I was looking at my stats leading up to the election from 2020. And that was, remember, COVID, right? And the stats leading up to the election, my max viewership, like one day before the election or two days before the election, was around like 28K. And I, I guess I was wrong. Because like even back then it was during COVID too, and and it's interesting to think about because like now I'm uh, you know 40k average, but leading up to the election, and then it goes uh, it skyrockets after uh, post election for like the week or maybe even the month after, and I was wrong, like I was wrong that I uh, I thought that the numbers were looking bad in comparison to like the last election cycle. <laughs> And yeah, I did peak more than uh, the election night with January 6th. Let's Take continue. Take a look at the polling aggregates across those seven key <laughs> battlegrounds that we've been talking about, right? In your sun belt, you see a little bit more red than blue. In fact, there is no blue in the sun belt. But again, it's way too close to call. Trump by three in Arizona, two in Georgia, one in North Carolina, a tie in Nevada. Come over to those Great Lakes and a little bit more blue here. But look at this, just a point in Michigan. But in 2021, there was a long period where you were 40K. That's why you're probably confused. Yeah. Less than a point. When you're breaking out this symbol, Jessica, the less than, you know how close the race is. And then, of course, in Pennsylvania, all in... I was canvassing the other day while wearing your merch and everyone out with me said they'll be tuning to you on Election Day. Hell yeah. Your numbers for the Never Kevers were hilarious. Can't believe people cared so much about that shit. Yeah, it was really funny. What was your peak during the Kevin McCarthy Speaker of the House situation? Hashtag Never Kever. Yeah, there was a lot of fun. There's been a lot of fun moments on this broadcast. Let's be real. We'll see. We'll see what happens with the election. <clears throat> Are, do you think they're purposely making the election look close when it's not? No, I'm not. I'm not thinking that. I do think that they are uh, slanted in favor of, of uh, uh, Donald Trump a little bit, but that doesn't mean that they're doing it for like some secret reason. It is close, I think. It is definitely a close election. Um, now, uh, you know, same-day voter turnout is important. What is this? Uh, what is it going to take for Mike from PA coverage? Oh, yeah, dude, of course. Dude, especially, listen, Michael from Pennsylvania, especially if fucking Kamala Harris is winning, you know I'm going to fucking posterize your ass. And you can come talk shit if uh, Donald Trump is winning, okay? I'll give you your fucking flowers. You know... That I agree with your analysis. We're almost completely aligned on this. Okay. Uh, we're almost completely aligned on this. Uh, you are, I would say, like you and I are right in the fucking center where I have been leaning in favor of Kamala Harris winning the election. And you've been leaning in favor of Donald Trump winning the election for the exact same reasons that we've talked about. The predictions for an unknowable outcome are close, but the results won't necessarily be. It's just not going to be reflected in any of the predictions because that's not how it works by definition. All right, this is, uh, we're going to talk about the Iran stuff in a second, but here, There's a lot of spirit. this is, this is some, uh, this is how Trump world reacted to, uh, the seltzer poll. <laughs> He's right. Well, there's a lot of spirit here, you know, and we even have the polls, uh, up, but I think it's much more than the polls. No, the polls, I'm telling you, you can make those suckers sing. You get the right pulser, you can do, and you do, you really do inflict damage, you know, when you do like this person from iowa today the election essentially is really we're talking turkey comes out with a poll different from every other poll 
because it wasn't even in question. It's really the opposite way. I'm way up. If you look at three, four months ago, Dan. Uh... <laughs> Lil Tits? What the fuck? Pennsylvania's got some fake ass names for his towns, dog. What the hell is Little Tits? Lit Tits. I was losing states that now are walks, you know, they're now walks. And I think you could have. I know about Middlesex. Um, I, I think New Jersey has a Middlesex too. That here, they, it's called suppression. They suppress and it's actually should be illegal because it's. I remember you having more fun in your 2020 election season uh, streams than this one. You seem down to me. Is that a fair assessment? Yes. America is on the fucking downturn. Amer Clifford never covers about view I count. The I need the latest. I need to be up to date. Second by second. 53,000 people were tuned in to watch Never Kevers on the night. Okay. 53,000 people were tuned in. <laughs> and it, I think it was like a Friday night. That's so stupid. That's so fucking stupid, dude. Why is this community so dumb? Um, but yeah, no, I, I am definitely uh, more upset about the future, pros uh, the future of this country and there are obviously good reasons to be upset about the future of this country is not as fun when you got an ongoing act of genocide that has been you know happening for the past uh 12 months 12 plus months at this point and uh both parties have like become more reactionary on the issue of immigration like all this stuff hurts my soul and i am genuinely fearful i am genuinely fearful about the future of this country so in many ways, it's worse than the written word, which these guys do quite well, actually. He's right. Yeah, he's he's coping. He's doing copium. Um, I asked Trump if he... Okay, this is Jonathan Carl from ABC News. He says, I asked Trump if he believed there was any way he could lose. He said, yeah, I guess, you know, Trump answered. I guess you could lose, can lose. I mean, that happens, right? But I think I have a pretty substantial lead. But you could say, yeah, yeah, you could lose. Bad things could happen crazy i think the ozempic is causing him to have low t that's a wild take that is a wild take because trump world has been running with we're winning every state we're gonna win new york new york is a swing state now it's so funny that he's depressed there was an emerson poll at the same time where he was up 10 lamau that's what i'm saying i think oh my god a chatter is correct remember what i told you guys about the golf thing you're right. It is no golf. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's the no golf. Oh my God. He's, it became true. The prediction is, the prediction is real. Him not being able to golf anymore because of, of fucking uh, credible threats to his life is literally causing him bodily harm. Oh no. Oh no. Also, this was funny. NTD uh, fucking woke cameraman uh, <laughs> hurting Trump. Nine years, we've had the biggest rallies in history of any country. And uh, Hold on. every rally I gotta is grab my food. You don't have any seats that are empty. You don't have anything. Oh. I mean, the one we had today, you missed a beauty. We could have filled that place up 20 times. I mean, that was beautiful. And uh, the Virginia rally, did you hear about the Virginia rally? That was, uh, Glenn Youngkin did a great job, the governor of Virginia, and they had a crowd there that was incredible. And then we came here, and we don't want to be late, but it's very hard when you do these things. It's uh, very hard, and you don't mind a little bit. We weren't very late. We weren't very late. Just a few minutes. You can't be Just doing a, a full minutes, pan. Depending on your definition of when it's going to start. But, you know, we've been doing, I was talking to some Grand attacks, thank you for the tank you gifted. Know, it's sad, and in a way it's beautiful. This is a beauty. We could have filled that place up 20 times. I mean, it's like the crowds is so it's so crazy. We've we've filled the entire we've filled the entire arena. It's never been this full. It's never been this full ever. That was beautiful. And uh, the Virginia rally. Did you hear about the Virginia rally? That was uh, Glenn Youngkin did a. It's funny because he's getting fact-checked in real time by the NTD camera person, which is wild because NTD is like the Falun Gong operation. They're the nuttiest guys out there. Um, uh, come on, boys. My food is here. NTD and Epoch Times are like uh, the, the, 
Falun Gong op. Keep going, it gets better. Hold on, I'm gonna fucking keep going. Calm down, Jesus Christ. Y'all are, chill the fuck out. These are like, this is Trump world shit. This is like right side broadcasting uh, <laughs> going against what Donald Trump is saying by showing the rally size is not being as big or the room Great not being job, as filled. The governor of Virginia, and they had a crowd there that was incredible, and then we came here. And we don't want to be late, but it's very hard when you do these things. It's uh, very hard, and you don't mind a little bit. We weren't very late. We weren't very late. Just a few minutes. Just a few minutes, depending on your definition of when it's going to start. But, you know, we've been doing I was talking to some of the people. It's sort of, you know, in a way it's sad, and in a way it's beautiful. Uh, I was talking to them, and I said, you know, this is coming to an end. These rallies are coming to an end. We've been doing them. Oh, my God, they're showing people nine. leaving. Oh, oh, dude, I can't help but get a little lived up, dude. I'm sorry. I know people think it's like gross of me, but uh, when I see Trump having uh, low motion or losing motion, losing momentum, it does make me a little happy. Years We started a year before and uh, we've had tremendous success in 2016. We did phenomenally, right? We went in, they said they gave us a 3% chance and sort of like amazing, right? 3%. That means 97% for Crooked Hillary and 3% for me. And I, I was saying, well, I went to Iowa and I had, I had 48,000 people and she had about 300 people. And then we went to another one in another state. We had 49,000. I think it's, it's funny to say that about Hillary Clinton when Kamala Harris has had larger fucking crowds and larger rallies than both Joe Biden, which happened during COVID, so it's a little different, and certainly than Hillary Clinton. Thousand people, she had 243 people. And I kept saying, why are we gonna lose? Why, why? Even the viewership decline, it went from 4.8K to 4.4K in this time frame. Why are we gonna lose? And we didn't lose, you know? We ended up winning, and we ended up winning the presidency, right? And that was an exciting night. Remember how it started? It started with a bunch of fake news. Look, there they are. That's a lot of fake news. That's a hell of a lot of fake news. The fakers, I call them now. I'm sort of lightening up. I'm starting to like them, too. I don't know what it would be like to get good publicity. I really don't. They treat me so badly. Wait, they cut it off? Bro got fired on the spot. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, okay, another point for another point for panic they've activated alex jones you know they're not going to just give up easily after the impeachments and the russian collusion crap and all the fake indictments and the lawfare this is common sense so i'm saying be ready for the civil war conditions and the uh, not certifying it and uh, carvel saying we need a armed uprising against trump and trump supporters i mean these people are going for broke and mainline republican supporters aren't really ready for this Trump is starting to get it and was talking about all this uh, just minutes ago. You know they're not going to just give up easily after the impeachments and the Russian collusion crap and all the fake indictments and the law. Why does he look so red? Oh, here's another, here's another indication. Does he hate Trump? No, he loves Trump. That was, I think, what killed Alex Jones a little bit. Alex Jones used to be like anti-Bush. He was like, Bush did 9-11. Like, he was that kind of guy. And Trump totally brought him into the base and he became this like annoying party defender like party loyalist and you can even hear it there when he's talking about like what we must do um it's just he sucks no president has done more for farmers in the great state of iowa than donald j trump in fact it's not even close all polls, except for one heavily skewed towards the Democrats by a Trump hater who called it totally wrong the last time, have me up by a lot. I love the farmers and they love me. The just out Emerson poll has me up 10 points in Iowa. Thank you. Um, also, the garbage truck comments. Uh, the garbage truck bit only hurt Trump more with Puerto Rican voters, which is pretty funny. He did a callback to it. HuffPost spoke with several Puerto Rican voters outside of Seatown Supermarket in Bethlehem Southside, across the street from the Puerto Rican Beneficial Society. Nisla Vega and Nidel Pachecho 
of Hellertown, a borough south of Bethlehem, both said they had never voted before, but Hinchcliffe's remarks were the reason they plan to vote for Harris on Tuesday. That hit the spot right there, Vegas said. They keep saying, oh, he's only a comedian. It still hurts. Pacheco saw Trump's decision to pose in a garbage truck at a campaign stop in Wisconsin the following day as an additional insult. If he didn't have nothing to do with it, what's he doing in the garbage truck, Pacheco asked. Pacheco. No one heard the Biden part of the story, so they assumed the garbage truck was a reference to the Puerto Rico comment again, most terminally online campaign on earth. Yup. Yup. It was too fast, too. It was too much of a, too quick of a turnover. Um, last thing I'm going to talk about uh, with the Seltzer poll, it's already been said by quite a lot of people at the point, but the main driving force of Harris's surge in the final of polls due to abortion and state's recent abortion bill on the ground. I see this groundswell of opposition against the bill for months. To start with a basic fact, what do Iowans think of the six-week ban? They dislike it quite a lot. As we've seen in many culturally conservative states over the last two years, a large majority of Iowans dislike the abortion ban. Again, too fucking, uh, too, too insane. Too insane for the normal whites. You can't have it. You can't do that. Can't be doing that. Even a plurality of men opposed the bill. And an incredibly large majority of women in the state oppose it. Okay. In the breakdowns, you can shed some light on a lot of the more dramatic shifts in the cell support. 71% of suburban adults, 88% of suburban women. These are voters that are more likely to shift away from Trump this year when a lot of them voted for him in 2020. Why do you think men support the bill? More men support the bill? What do you think? What do you think? It's because they're dudes. They're never going to have to get a fucking abortion. So they don't think. The entire premise of the abortion ban... Is, is basically about controlling women's bodies. And, you know, not to get all fucking Radlibby up in this bitch, but yeah, men kind of fuck with that. They like it. Or at the very least, they're selfish and they don't think about it. That's it. Yeah. For them, they either A, don't give a fuck because it's like, it doesn't bother me. I don't give a shit. Yeah, it seems like life is alive. We should pres preserve it or whatever the fuck. Or they just straight up like it. Even pro-life advocates be uh, believe the bill is uniquely harsh. Is single-handedly help crash Kim Randall's approval rating. There are things Seltzer and many other people around here pointed in regards to the results of the final poll. And while it's easy to sift through the cross tabs and call bull, there are very good reasons to believe that the overall shifts are happening. To end, I'd like to note one little part of the Seltzer poll I found interesting. We didn't see Trump lose support. We saw Harris gain support. She surged with new voters and independents. In my opinion, that grants the poll different credibility than if Trump had lost a lot of ground. If you want more decent Iowa politics coverage, I might try to focus on it. Da da da. Okay. Now let's get back to Harry Anton. We're doing poll watch, baby. Important Pennsylvania. Todd. Why is caring about things that specifically affect women rad lib and therefore bad? Genuine question. Um, no. Um, I consider it rad libby to make like a uh, hollowed out reductive analysis to be like, oh, men are bad. Okay, that's it. That's why I'm saying not to get all rad libby, but you know, men are kind of bad. <clears throat> anyway, is there any more selfish, narcissistic, self-centered fucking? Uh, critical analysis that you would like to contribute while we are looking at polls or should we get back to poll watch i love this this uh, the increased interest in the election has brought back some of the most annoying fucking type of rad libs and people who are ostensibly leftists uh rad libs and people who are ostensibly leftists who are like i am going to use woke emancipatory language uh in an effort to just you know, bring forward a very selfish uh, perspective here that is going to derail the conversation. Uh, welcome back. The reality of the matter is we don't kind of allow, we don't allow that type of shit in here, you know? <clears throat> it doesn't work that way here. Let's continue. I-T-I-E-D. That's the bottom line of this election. Way too close to call at this point. All of the key states within a couple of points and arguably the most important one, Pennsylvania, T-I-E-D just tied. Uh, put that in terms of the electoral map for us. How does that yeah. bear out? Yeah. How does the electoral map bear out? Well, if the results match the polling averages, guess what? Neither candidate gets to 270 electoral votes. Oh, yeah, I, don't know, yeah. I don't even I don't even know what other way to put it, because Pennsylvania becomes the all important key state. Whoever wins Pennsylvania wins the election. We've been talking about it week after week after week, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, just to the southwest of me here in New York City, becomes the all-important state. If you can figure out who wins Pennsylvania, you probably know who's going to win the election, because at this point, the polls can only tell you that both candidates are short 
of the 270 electoral votes needed to win. That is, of course, if the polls are actually right on the money, which they probably won't be. Okay, explain that to us, because they're, they're not perfect. No, they are not perfect. So, you know, let's go through history, right? Let's go back since 1972 and look at the key battleground states and say, how off were the polling averages? The polls aren't perfect. They are a tool. They give, get you in the neighborhood. But when the race is this close, when all the key battleground states are within three percentage points, that's within the average error band. The average error band for state polling average since, since 1972 is, get this, 3.4 points. 3.4 points. And then if you talk about a margin of error, right, like a 95% confidence interval, we're talking about more like plus or minus nine points. All of the key battleground states are within this error band, and they're actually within the average error band as well. So let's kind of talk about what happens if you have an average error and apply it to the electoral map, right? Well, if we have an average error and Donald Trump benefits from the average error, guess what? <clears throat> he gets way past 270 electoral votes. He gets to 312. Why? He carries all the Great Lake battleground states. He carries the southeast battleground states in North Carolina and Georgia. And he carries Nevada. This is dumb. Like, this is such a stupid way to do this, especially when there's so many fucking polls that are like, there are so many polls that are junk. Like, I think this time around, especially, there are... Like, back in the day, you had Trafalgar, you had Rasmussen, you had a couple, like, very obviously right-wing slanted polls. Now it's, like, it's insane. And, yeah, if you try to, if you try to fucking extrapolate any sort of, like, average data, uh, like, average, if you, if you try to look at, like, the margin of error and slam a fucking nine-point differential, then what the fuck are we doing? You might as well make up numbers at that point. I don't think it's a, I don't think this is like solid analysis. Uh, I think they're just bored and filling airwaves at that point. You know what I mean? So you are cherry picking. What? I think poll grading kind of matters. Don't you think? Like, and yes, applying a three point error, um, applying a three point error in this direction is also silly because the base that they're pulling from has massive swings. Like applying a three point error in this situation when you, uh, when you look at the aggregate of all of the polls, which included a lot of fucking junk polls without weighing uh, the junk polls across their biases, whether it's a liberal-leaning one or a Republican-leaning one, is going to lead you to false conclusions, I think. ...in Arizona out west. But of course, Jessica, there's no guarantee that the polls being offered necessarily benefit Donald Trump, even though they did both in 2016 and 2020, because... They could, in fact, the polling miss could benefit Kamala Harris like it did the Democrats back in 2022. If there was, in fact, a polling miss that benefited Kamala Harris, an average polling miss, she'd get north of 300 electoral votes. Look at that. She'd get to 319. Why? She'd carry the Great Lake battleground states, right? She'd carry Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. She'd carry the southeast battleground states, Georgia, North Carolina. And she'd carry the southwest battleground states of Nevada and Arizona. So the bottom Yeah, no shit. Yeah, it was a close race. If it swings three points in one direction, Kamala Harris wins big. If it swings three points in the other direction, Donald Trump wins big. I know. All right, North Carolina. So we have three All right, let's look at let's look at the other side of truth world, okay? Even Patriot polling is hurting. <sighs> New Patriot polling swing states poll. Arizona plus three for Trump. North Carolina plus two for Trump. Georgia plus one for Trump. Pennsylvania plus four for Trump. Michigan tied, Wisconsin tied, Nevada tied. <sighs> Patriots rise up. I thought this would have been, I thought this would have been uh, plus ten for Trump everywhere across the board. What the hell is going on? This is a verbatim transcription of Trump's meltdown at a rally today. Let's be honest. If your grandpa was speaking like this, you'd help. You know, would seek help not giving the nuclear codes. Yeah, the problem is a lot of people are just as stupid, so they think it's cool because he reflects their own personal positions on the matter when he speaks like that three days left consequential elections of our lifetime and we still have work to do this is a very important state and we have to get this solved we have to get you out and we can't take a chance of losing the great state of north carolina we're not going to lose the great state of north carolina. so here we go now uh two days and counting remember we were starting this thing like 60 days ago home stretch right there state of the race come on over here jimmy uh this is what our forecasts have been looking like and this really goes back more than a month 
All right. What, we think everything in gold and or yellow is, is a toss-up, right? But about a week ago, we had Arizona lean Republican, so we gave it that little rosé red color there. I, I don't know what's going on in Iowa, Dana, right? I mean, we've got a likely Republican, you know. Trump won at nine points in 2016, won at eight points in 2020, so we'll see how that goes. Here's another thing to look at, all right? You know, this is New York Times from overnight, okay? These are all the swing states. Everything's super close, as best as we can tell. Look, someone's going to be right, someone is going to be wrong. That's just what it comes down to. No, uh, no they've way. got Trump ahead in Arizona. They've got her up a point in Georgia. They've got a dead tie in Michigan. They've got Carolina Harris leading there by two. Uh, they got Harris up three in Nevada, but if you look at some of the early voting in Nevada, Republicans have done a very good job of turning out their voters. In fact, they've got a lead right there by about almost five points right now in the early voting in, uh, in Nevada. Pennsylvania, flat out tie right there. I'll come back to that in a moment. And they've got Wisconsin up too. So <clears throat> what do we know? James Blair might know a few things. Political director, RNC, Trump campaign. James, good morning to you. Just give us your state of the race right now. What does your campaign see? We're very optimistic right now. We feel good about where things are. Right now, obviously, what we're watching is people are voting. And what we've seen is historic early voting by Republicans outperforming 2020 or even 2022. So from our perch, things look pretty good right now. Uh, I'm sure we'll go through state by state, but some highlights. North Carolina, we won the early vote. That's never happened. Every time they talk about this, I believe Austin further on the, on the early vote cannibalization theory. Like, we'll see, but... You want to believe them? Um, no. I mean, it is it is certainly optimistic, but there is truth to the matter. I was listening to the run-up earlier today, the last one that came out like a couple of weeks ago, I think. And, um, well, Austin's idea, and, and a, a lot of libs have been saying this, it's not just Austin, is that, and this is true, Republicans, uh, especially in 2020, openly poo-pooed against early voting. And part of that was because they wanted to have a red mirage. Part of that was deliberate because they were like, oh, go vote same day. So your votes are counted. And then we can make it seem like we won. Right. And that technique was very stupid because it stopped people from going out and early voting, um, which is a reliable way to vote. And the Democrats, uh, the Democrats took advantage of that because they were like, no, of course early vote are you fucking kidding me and it made it because it's easier to vote if you vote early it's much easier to vote especially at a time when there's universal mail-in ballot uh registration and and um universal access in general that where you could have just mailed your vote due to covid so republicans were basically uh advocating against that donald trump was advocating against that this time around this time around they didn't do that they actually were urging people to go out and vote early and I think that is the reason why you see a lot of early voters. Um, you are making an argument for a Trump campaign advantage today. I think that um, the idea is that you're seeing a lot more people vote early. But the problem is there is a finite amount of pool of voters, reliable voters for the Republican Party. And the idea is that in comparison to 2020, a lot more Republicans are early voting now. And therefore, there will be less Republican momentum Re less Republican motion on same day turnout. So we shall see if it's true or not on election day, but I feel like it uh, might be correct happened before. In Nevada, the mail dumps are coming in and they're not as blue uh, as the Democrats would like them to be. And there's not as many of them. So lots of good signs in our direction right okay, now. Okay, I want to read this from Nate Cohen. There's so many New York Times polling that I sh showed our viewers here. Across these final polls, white Democrats were 16 percent likelier to respond than white Republicans. That's a larger disparity than our earlier polls this year, and it's not much better than our final polls in 2020, even with the pandemic over. It raises the possibility that the polls could underestimate Mr. Trump yet again. We do a lot to account for. That's so funny because the entire underlying premise of Nate Cohn's article is that they're they're just adding like two points to Donald Trump across the board due to fears that they're getting it wrong. Like, that's the entire point. They're saying that like, oh, Dems are more responsive to our polls, so we have to like manage it by, by uh, you know, tilting the scales in the opposite direction. For this, but in the end, there are no guarantees. How do you read that? 
I think it's covering. I think that they know where things stand. Look, in all of those polls, in all the battleground states, I heard Carl before this talking about the recalled vote, they've set the electorate to the left of 2020, which doesn't comport with what we know, which is that all of these electorates... This is such, this is such a funny way to lie to your own audience, by the way. And it's the entire issue with like the way that Fox News does news coverage. Because like if you... If you just rob the entire article of his like underlying premise and only show that aspect of the article completely out of context, you're fucking stupid. You're you're telling your audience a lie and they are going to be shocked and maybe even angry when the election results don't match the reality that you've presented it as. They're going to be like, how could this have happened? Fox News told me we were winning bigly. And I think that that might be part of the reason why they're doing it. But it's still pretty dangerous and very annoying. And that's why I get super fucking mad at um, at even some of my haters who just like lie about my or, or uh, who have wrong analysis. Right. And I'm like, if you're watching these other fucking content creators who were like riding with Biden until the last moment. Right. Like, don't you even feel a little bit resentful for being duped into believing something so fucking stupid like, do Fox News watchers at this point ever feel resentful to be like, I feel duped, I feel misguided, I feel like watching Fox News led me into thinking something entirely different. Now, I don't think they do that because there's no self-reflection involved, obviously. And the other reason why they don't do that is because Fox just doubles down have moved to the right just on a registration eligible electorate basis itself and obviously we see that starting to manifest in the early voting pattern so uh, I think that they're sort of putting some cover out there because they're going to underrepresent President Trump's support what they essentially are saying there is we got too many Democrats in the survey we don't have enough Republicans we know that but we're going to publish these numbers on the eve of the election anyway so the pollsters have told us that they've accounted for this because of the miss in 16 the miss in 2020 and we'll see whether or not that happens uh, Wall Street Journal has been a big target for your campaign. Young men could boost Trump to victory if they show up. That's the headline. What are you seeing out there in the battlegrounds? Well, let's just talk about the partisan registration states where they register by party, because then you don't have to take my word for it. You, you can go look for yourself. Nevada, Arizona, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. Republicans have turned out more 0 of 4 voters and 1 of 4 voters, so those less frequent or newly registered voters than the Democrats have in every single one of those states. So I'd say that there's evidence that it's working on our part. We are tur turning out those lower propensity. I mean, they could be young men. Or they could just be conspiracy guys, or they could be young men who are conspiracy guys. City voters, be they young men or otherwise. So everything you can measure right now suggests that it's going well for us. Mm. My sense is on Tuesday, we're going to be spending a lot of time in Pennsylvania. Maybe that's right. Maybe it's wrong. But this eight years ago, this is Trump winning that state by 44,000 votes over Hillary Clinton. Four Listen, low and mid propensity voters are unreliable. So let me explain something to you, okay? Low and mid propensity voters are unreliable unless you are presenting them with a reason to go out and fucking vote. Trump has been ironically doing the Democratic style harm reduction campaign, but from the right. This is why I suspect that the conspiracy voters, people who are definitely very openly pro-Trump, might not show up come election day because. You're not offering them anything. In 2016, Donald Trump offered them something. He offered them owning of the libs. He offered them owning Hillary Clinton, locking Hillary Clinton up, un unsealing the 9-11 files, like all this shit. He hasn't really done that this time around. I think the one thing that he said he would do is uh, he's going to ban fluoride in the water or something like that just came out today. But he used to do more shit like that. And he's not really doing it no more. He's just constantly talking about how shitty Kamala Harris is and how she's a dumb broad. And while that might be enough, while that might be enough for people to be like, yeah, I'm pro-Trump. I don't fucking care about her. She's a whore or whatever. I don't, I don't think that like, um, that's a, enough of a motivator to get people to go out and vote. Four years ago, this is Biden winning the state by 81,000 votes in 2020. We'll see. But it's just my sense that the Keystone State will be very critical and key come Tuesday. How much can your campaign do in the closing 48 hours? 
a lot we can keep getting out the vote and let's talk about Pennsylvania right now there's nearly 700,000 registered Democrats in the state of Pennsylvania who had cast a vote by this point in 2020 or 2022 and they haven't cast a vote yet and they don't have mail ballots that's a huge hurdle for them to climb secondarily again we've talked about the voter registration before bill but just to put a fine point on it there was 685,000 more registered Democrats in the state of Pennsylvania four years ago than Republicans today that number has been cut to about 280,000 so a huge swing in our direction James Blair thank you for your time I know you're working day and night thanks for coming on today and we'll see who's right thanks I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe uh -huh. to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. I have a piece of glass over here, and I don't have a piece of glass there. <laughs> and I have this piece of glass here, but all we have really over here is the fake news, right? <laughs> and to get me, somebody would have to shoot through the fake news, and I don't mind that so much, because I don't mind. I don't mind that. We had the best economy ever. We had the wall. We had Good closing message. <laughs> That's solid, man. You've done such a fantastic job showing everybody how normal of a guy you definitely are, like, and how, like, all of the people's worst fears about you, uh, if you win the election, uh, you certainly have convinced them that they are untrue. Good job, sir. And everything. I built over 500 miles away. They don't even talk about the wall. But we had the best border, the safest border. I won't pull down my world's favorite chart because I don't want to waste out. a lot of your time. But my world's Wait, favorite chart done by shirt? the Border Patrol. It said we had the safest border in the history of our country the day that I left. I shouldn't have left. I mean, honestly... Because we did so, we did so well. We had such a great. So now, I mean, every every polling booth has hundreds of lawyers standing there. It's all about the lawyers. Everybody's standing, lawyers. Nobody should have that. You should have a damn ballot, and you hand it in. Do you know that in Arizona, where I'm winning by a lot, but it takes four hours to fill out the ballot. They've got page after page, and people are complaining they don't have time. It takes four hours to fill it out. Why is that? Why is that? I can tell you why. But so many places, Pennsylvania, I love Pennsylvania. I went to school here. I think the people are incredible. But they found, as I understand it, I mean, I don't know what's happened in the last day or so, but they, in Lancaster, they found 2,600 ballots all done and by the same hand. In other words, the same exact penmanship, the same no 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 this is not good man oh my god oh fuck this motherfucker knows he's gonna lose and the more he knows he's gonna lose the more he's beefing up the fucking election is stolen shit already all right buckle in buckle in for some motherfucking unrest dude a brooks brothers riot in every corner you know oh yeah it's a chicken katsu from uh my favorite curry place damn dude you're eating it cold you fucking animal. There's also curry if you want to dip it in the curry. Oh, Miss Gibbs here. You're streaming from the podcast room. Mariah, you look skinny as hell, dude. What, what size is that shirt? Goddamn. Same hand, the same everything. It was all done by the same pen, the exact same pen. And then they go uh, and they say, well. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Like, call me libbed up, whatever. This is very dangerous rhetoric. Uh, he is very clearly, very deliberately trying to. Uh, he, he's kickstarting the process. Like, when he thought he was winning, you didn't hear the shit that much. But now that he fears that he is going to lose, he's already started sowing the seeds of doubt, which is kind of stupid to do, especially, like, right before the election. You're depressing voter turnout again, I guess. Like, even from your own personal... Like, even from a self-interest point, like, this is literally what he did in 2020, this dumbass. Like, he depressed his own voter turnout to a certain degree because there were people who were like, well, my vote's not counting. Or people who went out and voted on election day. Um, but this also simultaneously is just like hogging up the hogs. This is a conspiracy theorist. Come here, Hannah. Come here, Hannah. Shake my Elections are about having better lawyers. How he views it. Trump and PA told supporters he shouldn't have left the White House in 2021 in a speech where he also repeated unfounded claims of widespread election fraud and said election is all about the lawyers. Oh, 
these people are such fucking freaks i hate this shit so much dude they're so they're dude they're so unbearable they're so fucking unbearable with this shit oh my god my dad is kind of an ex-libertarian msnbc liberal who's trying to convince me that the state and local officials all over the country have changed the law so they don't they won't recognize the results if trump loses and that he can be easily able to overturn it wait what no i don't think that that's not I work for a cybersecurity company. We're tracking a big Russian misinfo campaign on social media in Pennsylvania. The goal seems to be to prime the Republican base for a stolen election. Looks like Russia doesn't need to bother. Trump is doing it for them. Dude, the amount of people that I've heard like openly say the election was stolen in 2020 still to this fucking day is so dire, dude. This is why we need re-education camps, okay? I'm sorry. You might say, oh, tanky, tanky is on re-education camps, gulag. You want uh, another Alexander Solzhenitsyn, however the fuck you say his name, uh, Gulag Archipelago shit. That's what you want. And it's like, dude, we just need education in general. Like, these people are living on a separate fucking planet. They are living in a different universe. This is not good. They had plenty of protests after that. Yes, Although they protests did. Protests are different from Protests are different than an insurrection. Yeah. No one broke into government buildings. <laughs> we disagree on that. With more young adults living at home with their parents, the political divide between generations is more obvious than ever. And according to an NBC News Gen Z poll, more than half of Gen Zers have different political views than at least one of their parents, with about a third saying they... Um, you're getting libbed up? Wait. You're getting libbed up. January 6th was funny. Yeah, the problem isn't January 6th. January 6th was like directed towards one thing. The problem is the successful version of January 6th, which is the Brooks Brothers riot, which will happen in every fucking state where they like physically try and stop the votes from being counted. Do you understand the issue here? Remembering during 2020, there were different parts of America screaming count the votes and stop the votes at the same time. I do remember that. Yes. Those votes with my AR-15. I present to you Trump's legal argument. That's pretty good. That's pretty funny. Retweet by Dave Weigel. Not a single one of those motherfuckers that went to those rallies think that they were wrong to do so. And they personally believe that, like, the election was stolen. That's the issue. Shit like this wants uh, to make me more and more apathetic voters come out for Harris. Fuck her being complicit in the genocide, but this shit is genuinely scary as fuck. I was not considering not, but then Trump started saying this insane shit. I voted for her again. Fuck Kamala Harris, but my vote in Georgia matters a fuck ton. I'm genuinely afraid for the future of our country, but more so under a Trump presidency. Yeah, I I, uh, I think the, the calculation is that for a lot of people, especially as more and more people pay attention. Um, I've said this before. I'm not going to ever fucking shit on you for voting for Kamala Harris. Like, that would be ridiculous. The only thing I would ever shit on people for is if they vote for Donald Trump. And um, overall, like, I think the crisis is larger than just, like, what we are seeing immediately. Does that make sense? Farming the libs today, are we? No, there is no farming of the libs, dumbass. The fuck are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? You have, an, you have a crisis of misinformation. Do you understand? Liberals engage in this to a certain degree as well. But this is like, there is nothing you can compare this to. You got an entire fucking, like, you got tens of millions of people just straight up hallucinating a different reality. Okay? Like, what are you talking about? I don't think it's okay to say you will never talk shit to those who vote for Harris. I mean, I, I, your vote is your vote. I understand why people do the harm reduction uh, voting. What do you mean? I have maintained this position over and over again. I'm never going to stop. I'm never going to tell you not to vote for Kamala Harris. And I said that from the jump. Like, there has never been a moment where I've even remotely uh, considered the the positive side of a um, the positive side of a of a Trump presidency. The thing I will shit on you for is if you personally come in here and you're like. I voted for Kamala Harris because I'm saving this country. I voted for Kamala Harris because she's going to stop the genocide in Gaza. Like, all that stuff is ridiculous. You're, you're nonsense. You're pushing nonsense. I won't let you, like, outflank the campaign's own communications because I'm always going to be truthful. Like, I'm always going to be honest with you. That's it. Percentage of Gen Z with differing politics of their parents. 
31% differ from both parents. 44% share both parents' political party. 24% differ from one parent. They differ from both parents. We went to the battleground state of Georgia to see what this looks like for actual families. I'm curious, have those conversations ever gotten tense? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> These conversations get tense all the time. We'll get into it. And then, of course, here in the middle of the night, mom just yelled downstairs, why don't you be quiet? 22-year-old David Dilley lives with his parents, Lyle and Brandy, and his two brothers. This will be his second time voting for former President Donald Trump, while his parents... I plan to vote for Harris. Me as well. We've debated on how we feel about vaccines. We've debated, you know, border crossings. And there's areas we kind of... God damn. Dog, that's just crazy. Like, like young Republicans just... They just, I don't understand it. I don't know what it is. It's like, why do you look like that, bro? How did this happen? Like, what is it? Is there a point where you just go, I'm a Republican, and then automatically you just age two decades? Like, how the fuck does this happen? I don't get it, brother. I And this isn't, don't say it's COVID. Don't say Gen Z just looks old. I'm not kidding. This has been the same principle since when I was a fucking wee little baby, okay? It literally does not matter. Guys, come on. Look at conservative commentators and shit like, uh, what was his name? Harlan Harlan Hill. He looks like a baby who is also the oldest man in America at the same time. And he was like 25. Young conservatives always have that stink on them. I don't know what it is. It's weird. Agreed on the middle, okay. But we usually end up disagreeing at the end of the day. When you learned that your son wanted to vote for Trump, he voted for Trump in 2020. How did that land for you? I was a little surprised. I would never place a vote for Trump. The way he represented a member of the news media, our oldest son has cerebral palsy. And so to see him be like, you know, ah, oh, that's okay, I'm still gonna vote, that hit me a little hard. Has that changed the relationship at all? No. I mean, he's not Donald Trump, he's my son. Yeah, that's a crazy question. It's like, yeah, dude, the parents are going to hate their child now because he's fucking voting for Donald Trump. Like, yeah, here's a hog talk slash stitch that proves your point. I'm a white dude for Harris. Of course my wife lets me watch her and her boyfriend make love. How old do you think this dude is? 30, 35. He's 22. That's insane. In milk years? White dude for Harris. That's, that's insane. Okay, I mean, dude... Dude, there's something going on. There is something going on, brother. We need to we need to figure out the fucking crisis that is happening to our young men. They are all looking like old men. Okay? We need to figure this out. We need to put a shutdown on conserva talk until we figure out what the hell is going on. <laughs> Bro been through two divorces, leave him alone. It does. It looks like he has. How is that even possible? I just, oh God, this shit freaks me out, dude. It actually freaks me out. Um, anyway, this divide, by the way, this, this like generational divide is, is pretty funny, but it's also legitimately terrifying because I feel like in the future, like we currently have a rural suburban versus urban divide in terms of how people vote. But I think beyond that, but I think beyond that, uh, there is going to be a gender divide, especially in the next generation. It's kind of fucked up. Trump is not funding a genocide, but you have not stopped shaming him and his supporters for like two fucking weeks. Are you okay? Blink twice if you're being silenced by Zionists, or is this who you really are? Just two dudes on my screen wearing polos. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Two preppy Americans, if you ask me. Trump is not funding a genocide, but you've never stopped shaming him. Do you actually think Donald Trump is, is the anti-genocide vote? Are you out of your fucking mind? You're really that horny for genocide that you're do going to chastise people for voting for a Republican and generalized conservatives? Are you fucking brain dead? Did you hit your head on the way over here this morning to start typing in this chat like this? Are you actually out of your fucking mind? Dog, which party is responsible for the war on terror originally? It's the Republicans. Donald Trump himself is absolutely pro-genocide. Donald Trump is the most popular politician in Israel. Donald Trump is constantly having phone conversations with Benjamin Netanyahu. The Democratic Party's complete capitulation to uh, the, the, 
most bloodthirsty uh, aspects of ultra Zionists in Israel in the govern in the government and the actions of the military does not change that reality. Donald Trump got a hundred million dollars this time around from Shel- uh, Sheldon Adelson's wife, Miriam Adelson, last time around. Sheldon Adelson and Miriam Adelson were some of the biggest donors to Donald Trump, which is precisely the reason why he gave Israel Golan Heights, which Sheldon or Miriam did not even ask for. Donald Trump took the American embassy and moved it to Jerusalem, permanently solidifying the occupation of East Jerusalem, recognizing it as Israeli territory. Donald Trump also did the Abraham Accords. Donald Trump cast aside the Iran denuclearization policy, which would have normalized relations with Iran. Iran was following through on those conditions. Donald Trump added additional sanctions to Iran after cutting apart the Iran denuclearization agreement, which wasn't even an agreement conducted just by Barack Obama and Iran. It was literally a multiple decade process, which many other European partners were involved in as well. What the fuck are you talking about? Donald Trump openly personally also was invested in uh, uh, the continuation of the genocide, the Saudi genocide in Yemen. Trump vetoes measure to end the U.S. involvement in Yemen war. Now, let me explain something to you, by the way. All these fucking dumbass libtars that come in here on a daily fucking basis and talk to me about Houthis this, Houthis that. They also were anti this. Now they're pro it because the Democratic Party's position is Operation Prosperity Guardian. Fuck Yemen. We need to blow them up. Okay? Because, uh, God forbid, Ansar Allah and the Yemeni population are like, not exactly on board with Israel's genocide of the Palestinians. But don't ever come in here and fucking tell me that Donald Trump is going to be better on fucking Gaza. What the fuck is wrong with you? You are hallucinating an, an alternative reality, which makes sense because you're probably a fucking reactionary conservative. Donald Trump's literally just go and watch Donald Trump's uh, uh, anti-Semitism seminar that he gave where he was like, if I don't win, Jews are the reason. Jews are the reason why I don't win. That entire seminar is just him straight up being like, I've done so much for you fucking Jews. I did so much for Israel. Vote for me. Vote for me today and tomorrow. Chuck Schumer's a Palestinian. He's a Palestinian, folks. He's just saying the most unhinged, psychopathic nonsense. Like, I get... I get looking at the Democratic Party currently openly saying, fuck the Arab vote, fuck the Muslim vote, fuck Gaza, we don't give a shit, okay? I get looking at that and being frustrated. I get being duped by Donald Trump's aesthetic, uh, at least like his aesthetic allegiances, his fake allegiances to the Arab vote. He go, He went to a fucking Palestinian shop in Dearborn, you know? All this shit. Democrats, on the other hand, are actively pushing away people that care about Gaza. But if you genuinely think that Donald Trump is going to be pro-Muslims uh, in the MENA region or specifically going to put an end to Israel's genocidal actions, you're out of your fucking mind. He is, this time around, saying he is going to annex permanently the West Bank. Okay? That's what Miriam Adelson wants this time around. He's going to do the Esther Project, which is Project 2025's extension to specifically anti-Israel ad, uh, advocates and activists in the United States of America. He wants to do fucking... Uh, the Heritage Foundation wants to use RICO charges and mass deport people who are anti-Israel. Okay? This doesn't change the calculation or the reality that the Democratic Party is also actively pursuing pro-Palestinian protesters like Attorney General of Michigan Dana Nessel did. Okay? This doesn't change the reality that Chuck Schumer wants to adopt the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, which is a fucking insane thing to do. It is completely antithetical to free speech, but beyond that, it's completely unacceptable in terms of a definition that you could support ever, okay? It means criticizing Israel as anti-Semitic unconditionally, and Chuck Schumer has said he wants to sneak that in to a must-pass defense bill because he's a ginormous piece of shit. But once again... If you come in here and you act like this fucking dipshit is pro-Palestinian, you are a sucker, okay? You're a sucker if you think the Democrats are pro-Palestinian too, okay? Just saying. You are a sucker if you come in here and you tell me Kamala Harris loves the Palestinians. She wants a two-state solution. Kamala Harris is working tirelessly around the fucking clock to stop the genocide in Gaza. You're a fucking sucker. That's not correct. Okay, they have made zero inferences to that reality. They have openly communicated that the power that they have over Israel, the influence they have over Israel, they will never utilize. Okay, but you're out of your fucking mind if you think that Donald Trump is pro-Palestinian. Give me a fucking break.
I love the reality that the Democratic Party is so overtly pro-war, and they certainly are, and it's very frustrating. But the, the Democratic Party is so overtly pro-war that you now have dumbasses who can come in here and unironically argue that they think the conservative movement is anti-war. There has never been a moment where the conservatives have been anti-war. They don't want to fucking fund Ukraine for one reason or another because I think they're populist and they and most Americans don't give a shit. OK, so they're like, yeah, why the fuck do we use all that money in Ukraine? What do they want to use it on? Bombing Mexico. Does that sound like anti-war to you? Does that sound like anti-war to you? The rhetorical trick that Republicans used to always apply, and they still are doing this to this day, and I saw Glenn Greenwald use this trick the other day, and I thought it was like really fucking crazy. That was the reason why I also clocked Tulsi Gabbard as a phony early on. Is this, okay, when you hear someone say this, understand that they are not anti-war unconditionally, and they're simply a charlatan masquerading as someone who is anti-imperialist or anti-war, okay? When someone tells you this is a bad war and allows it and, and makes it seem like there is a good war, a useful war to be engaged in instead, know that they're not anti-war. They're anti that war, potentially. OK, but there's definitely wars out there that they are for. Tulsi Gabbard did this expertly as well. A lot of people fucking stupidly thought that she was anti-war because she kept saying, oh, uh, well, I'm for just wars. You know, there are just wars, but this war is bad. But there's a just one out there. She would always say like, oh, yeah, you know, any kind of combating of Muslims, that's a good thing. What? You have no proof or claim that Trump will be worse and you can at least fucking acknowledge that. Yeah, the fucking difference is you can make up every hypothetical situation where Trump will be worse than Harris on the genocide. But you have no evidence to say that. Of course, I have evidence to say that Donald Trump was the president for the past. Donald Trump was president for four years. Harris was not. You could make a literal fucking liberal ass argument as to like well Kamala Harris as president will be different actually girl you could you have more you have more evidence to suggest that Kamala Harris once president could be different than fucking Donald Trump because Donald Trump was president already I'm not even making that argument because I don't think Kamala Harris is anti-genocide okay but having said that there is a there is so much evidence to suggest that Donald Trump is already worse because the actions that he took the actions that he took that I directly communicated to you at the behest of Israel set in motion the actions where October 7 became an inevitability. It's something that I've talked about a million times over, as a matter of fact. A lot of Democrats can't talk about that, though, because they're so fucking dick riding Israel that they can't openly talk about this issue from even partisan lines. Think about that, because they're so goddamn pro-Israel that they can't even talk about this issue with abject with objective facts and from a partisan perspective and how much Donald Trump did that actually accelerated the tensions in the region that actually caused October 7 to begin with you have no proof to claim that Trump will be worse you can at least fucking acknowledge that but do you condemn conservatives do you condemn Hamas and Hamas civilians are terrorists what are you saying this person went from being like Trump is going to be better for the Palestinians to literally to to straight up turn it around and be like, do you condemn Hamas? What the fuck? What happened? So I guess you weren't fucking pro-Palestinian emancipation at all. You just are pro-Trump. And you thought that this would be a expert way to try in your mind to convince some fucking other dumbasses. Yeah, the neocons are all endorsing Harris because they think Trump will be exactly the same. There's no deeper ideological reason Dick Cheney is riding with Kamala is just for shits and giggles. No. I think that the Democratic Party has adopted the framework of the neocons 100%. But if you think that Donald Trump is going to be fucking any different when it comes to war with Iran, you are the most delusional person ever. What the fuck are you talking about? Dick Cheney wants managed fascism. Donald Trump represents chaotic fascism. That's why Dick Cheney and many of these other fucking neocons are on board with Kamala Harris rather than Donald Trump. They win, we lose. It doesn't matter. No matter who wins, they win. I never fucking said that Trump would be better. Nope, I'm very pro-Palestine and registered to vote. What? You're upset that I've been shitting on Donald Trump and you're saying that I'm fucking libbed up. This is awesome to hear said out loud. What do you mean? This is what I talk about every fucking day. Is there a right-wing version of getting libbed up like a disillusioned groiper hearing someone insult Bush and getting really angry or something? I don't know if that analogy works. <laughs> That's funny. You really that horny for a genocide that you're going to chastise people for voting for a Republican and generalized conservatives is what you said. As in, the implication is that the anti-genocide vote is a vote for conservatives, and you are delusional for saying that.
Don't try to backpedal away from that. Anyway, yeah, it's funny because, yeah, Iran, which contrary to popular opinion, is uh, incredibly restrained as always. A lot of people, including Elit News, has been saying that like Iran is going to attack before the election. Iran is going to attack before the election. And I haven't put a lot of uh, uh, a lot of emphasis on that coverage because I found out we found out together, one, that uh, it was actually Israeli sources that was saying Iran is going to attack before the election. And two, that is unceremonious for Iran to do so because they have demonstrated restraint time and time again. Here is the news coverage on it, though. The official spoke on the condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to speak publicly. They said that it was the military commanders were preparing a list of dozens of military targets inside of Israel, but that the attacks would very likely happen after the American election because Iran was concerned that another spike of tension and chaos in the region could benefit former Donald J. Trump in his re-election campaign. What? Just like Ukraine, right? What do you mean? Eland is a localized thermostat. They're not always on the money, but mostly so. Yeah, no, I trust Eland. Um, anyway. I don't mind saying, you know, yes, I will be voting for Trump, but it's not so much because I like him as a person. It's just some of the ideas and policies will help my life. You know, my life will be better due to them and my family's life will be better due to them. I just wish he was not so much in charge sometimes. That's all. A lot of the arguments are part of me trying to iterate that there's human sides to all this and try not to take that out of the conversation. And when he doesn't accept that, to me, that is a little disappointing. You know, it's like, where did I go wrong? What did I do? What did I miss a step in, you know, raising him? David and Darius Shockley are also from the Savannah area, but politics play out differently for them, with Darius on the far left and his dad David on the right. Can you describe your son's political ideology from what you understand? <laughs> How do I say this? Uh, Wait, what? It makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't agree with half the stuff he says, but at the same time, I'll listen to him say it. I tend to instigate a little bit some conversations about politics whenever I read something on the news. I like to bring up with my parents and ask them about them. Darius, how will you feel if Kamala wins? How will you feel if Trump wins? Uh, Kamala relieves, hopeful, um, Trump devastated. I can't even think of a word because uh, there's no way I can describe the pain that I will feel. Hearing how emotional your son gets when he talks about the possibility of Trump winning. Does that affect you at all? Yeah, it's a little disturbing. It's just a little disturbing that it would be. My dad once said at a di dinner, if he was white, he'd vote Trump, and it was so silent. <laughs> what the fuck? That upsetting to him. That's how it is now. My mother and father did not agree politically. 53 years they spent together, and it was no problem. They just canceled each other's vote out. But they did go vote. Both families say the country has gotten too divided when it comes to politics. What advice would you give to people who still live with their parents, yeah. but they have very drastic, different political preferences? <laughs> Just get over it. Your family's not going to agree 100%. You will never agree. If you hope in this life you will find somebody you agree with 100%, you'll be searching for your entire dang life. That's up for school. Amen. 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 Just a scoop of that. What are you all united on? Your family. I don't care who you're voting for. If you're a good person, you can sit at my table. We. It's extra crazy that his brother has cerebral palsy and he's voting for the cere like the guy who made fun of a dude with cerebral palsy. Like on the optics alone, like that shit makes no damn sense. Like you are directly. I usually say, I usually say that like Republicans only care about shit when it like directly impacts them, and then they change their minds because they're like deeply selfish people. But this guy has gone above and beyond where he's like not even demonstrating empathy for his own brother. It's kind of crazy. Invite people over and we don't discuss ideologies. We want to love them for them and not worry about politics. We'll deal with that later. <laughs> I guess I was raised up to believe that as long as you think that what you are doing is right and you stand behind what you're doing, we're behind you. I don't know. I just like... Dog, my dad, to my face, said he doesn't give a shit about the world he leaves behind for me because he won't be in it. That's insane. All right, let's look at these rallies. So-called president of the United States called Trump supporters garbage. We We're gonna showed up as garbage. Yeah. yeah, I mean, dude, 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 dude. Not exactly demonstrating fucking mental sanity here, okay? That's weird, dude. You're fucking weird. You're so goddamn weird. Oh, my God. If only the Democratic Party was communicating how weird this shit is. How, like mind melted some in the conservative movement are in the post-Trump world, you know?
We're going to wear that We're proudly, wear proudly because we are Trump supporters. <laughs> and, and so c- can you tell me how wearing the garbage bags proves that you're not garbage? Oh. Just as the back says. Right. Uh, yes, but Biden but can call us garbage. Gonna, Trump, calls call, us Trump calls us Americans. Right, but you're dressed as uh, Biden to find you, not as Trump to find you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think more of um, we're taking it as a joke at this point. Well, like, like it would make sense if you were wearing an American flag and you said Biden calls us um, garbage and Trump calls us Americans. You're wearing an American flag. That's why I was laughing when Donald Trump did the truck thing, the garbage truck thing. Because, like, you're kind of calling your own supporters garbage now. Like, it, it, it is, you're too angry to make, like, a funny joke out of this. This is why conservatism kills comedy in general, too. It's just, like, you're so mad all the fucking time that you can't, like, ever pause and do a ha-ha, okay? Like, you heard the garbage, and you're like, oh, they call it garbage, I'll show you! I'll show you garbage. I am garbage. I'm garbage as fuck. I'm living in filth. I'll prove to you that you're right. It's like, okay, you're just like, they used to do this owning, like wearing a diaper to own the libs was the thing. Remember when Charlie Kirk wore a diaper to own the libs? God, I, I, that's why we call uh turning point USA, like the toilet paper USA. Where the fuck are the photos, man? Come on, give me the fucking photos. I'm sure someone can find the photos. I remember very clearly. Aren't leftists also mad all the time as well? I can't watch the news without losing my mind at the shit politicians do and billionaires get away with it. Yeah, but I think that you can still make jokes. I mean, I at least still make jokes, um, which, you know, people punish me for anyway. Yeah, here it is. I thought Charlie Kirk was also there wearing a diaper, but maybe not. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, and then the group got disbanded. Turning Point USA chapter at Kent State disbands over diaper debacle. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Wow, you really own the libs that way, dude. You, Again, you own the libs by fucking saying you're trash, you're garbage. <laughs> um, I'm confused. Did you read your shirt to me? Oh, it's going to take a felon and a hillbilly to fix this. And uh, how important to you is law and order? It is. It is. We, we've lost it in this country. And, but the shirt says that uh, it's going to take a felon to fix this. Oh, Does yeah, that feel gonna... ironic to you? No. Who's going to win the election? Donald Trump! <laughs> uh, will you trust the election results if Donald Trump wins? Yeah. Will you trust the election results if Kamala Harris wins? Hell no. There you have it. They take everything he says out of context. But when it comes to these people, I believe nothing of what I hear and only half of what I see. It, uh, speaking of out of context, last night at the rally, did you, did you see what he did? What did he do? He did a, like, um, I don't even want to do it. It's a little lewd. Like, a, I don't, it looked like an oral sex thing. For what? But it, it was just because the microphone wasn't working. So? Yeah, they were taking that out of context. Oh, I'm yeah. agreeing oh, with you. Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we are here in Greensboro at a Trump rally. Uh, what brought you out here? Uh, my love for Trump and my love for the United States, and I'm just voting for Trump. I'm ready for some things to be changed. Uh, what things need to be changed? Uh, I don't want boys in my girl, my little girl's restroom. I, I'm not for taking a baby. Are you talking about tra- trans people? Uh, I'm not judging anybody. Huh. But- Dude, I love that. That right there is the reason why the anti-trans ads are so fucking dumb. Because, like, even the most transphobic person that first and foremost says that they are voting because of transphobic policies is like, well, you know, I don't care. Like, I don't, you know, do your own dang thing. It's like, I don't hate trans people, but we should kill them. It's like, everyone's a fucking liberal. 64% of the country literally openly admits that trans people are disproportionately targeted. Like, even the people that are ostensibly going out and voting for anti-trans legislation which are very few like there is not a lot of people okay still have to immediately be like but i'm not a hateful bigot i don't want real men that claim to be women in the bathroom with my granddaughters has that happened not yet they're depraved they're satanic they're evil they're marxist satanic that's our boy at every trump rally oh yes 
So should they start wearing like little devil horns or something, or would you think that was kind of lame? You know, the, the devil doesn't do that. It's only in movies. Uh, how much do you pay for gas? Uh, to fill it up, it's about 160, and yeah. I get about 400 miles on the tank. So a lot. Yeah. You spend a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> um, and you, so you got this huge truck here, and it's just it's running right now, right? Yeah, I'm trying to charge my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I see you got a, a garbage bag uh, for, from your belt here. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, um, Joe Biden called us. Uh... That's crazy, man. You're so fucking owned. You're so goddamn owned, okay? Like, for the past year, so many fucking assholes have been calling me Hamasabi, okay? So many Islamophobic pieces of shit have been calling me Hamasabi. It'd be like if I was like, oh, yeah, I'm Hamas. I'm Hamasabi. And, like, adopted the moniker. Like, why do you let your enemy define you? It's dumb. It's dumb as fuck. I thought you said conservatives weren't funny. No, conservatives are fucking hilarious. Conservatives cannot be uh, deliberately funny. They're unintentionally funny. I like to laugh at conservatives, not laugh with conservatives. Didn't you wear a Hamas headband, though? No, you fucking idiot. I did not wear a Hamas headband. They photoshopped the Hamas headband on me the people that were saying I'm Hamasabi. Are you fucking serious? You literally saw someone Photoshop a Hamas headband onto my head and you went, yeah, this guy's definitely doing that. Yeah, dude, I wore Hamas merch. What are you, fucking insane? Shut the fuck up, dude. Trash. So, hey, if he's going, if he's going to say it. The closest to a fucking uh, any kind of, like, fundy group uh, resistance or not, uh, uh, merchandise that I've ever worn is, is uh, obviously the Trump merch that I wear. Why not? Right, so you're kind of owning that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If now, you, um, call us you know, Trump has called uh, liberals scum and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. did, did that bother you? Uh, no, it doesn't because he's exactly right. Can you tell me why you're wearing the garbage bag? Because I'm, I'm proud to be trash if it's under Trump, Mr. Trump. Absolutely. Okay. We are here in Greensboro, North Carolina, outside of Trump rally, and you, sir, you're wearing a garbage bag. Why? Well, because Joe Biden called us garbage, and we're, we're deplorable. We're garbage. We're anything they want. But what we are as Americans, we're Trump people. And do, do you feel like you as Trump people are garbage? Hell no. But liberals are satanic, and they, uh, they, 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 they bathe in the blood of the infants that they slaughter to, to pay homage to, uh, to Moloch, their demon god. Are you... Being serious right now. Yes, I am. So Donald Trump says Elizabeth Lynn Cheney is guilty of treason. Retruth if you want televised military tribunals. Does that seem vague or or like a not a real threat? Especially he's running for president. But I don't see that he said it. He's this is him retruthing it and no. asking other people to retruth it. Uh, uh, people so are saying that Joe Biden called Trump supporters garbage. Uh, people seem to have an issue with the rhetoric. Uh, let's check out what kind of merch we got here. Uh, says fuck Biden. It's just a, it's a statement. It's a statement. It doesn't prove that I'm not trash. It doesn't prove that I am. But it makes the statement that if you're going to call me trash because of what I believe in, then I'm going to stand by what I believe in, no matter what you say to me. Right. Because words are words and, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones. But by God, I'm going to let you know, one, I heard it. And two, if that's what you... Don't say rewind. I know he asked, do you believe that, uh, do you agree with uh, Donald Trump when he says Democrats are scum? And he said, yes, I know. I know. I know all of it. Okay. I haven't pre-watched it. I just know because I've lived it. I've pre-lived it all, over and over you again. You think, I don't care. And I'll well, What if um, Joe Biden would have been like, uh, you know, Trump's and no, I'm not going to talk about the Moloch baby blood mention. Okay, just let's continue. Porters, they uh, they hit their fingers with with hammers. Then I would probably get a plastic hammer. <laughs> what if Joe Biden said, you know, Trump supporters, they'll leave a glass of milk on the counter for like six hours until it like curdles and then they'll chug it uh, and they'll have tummy troubles all day. Would you be doing that? 
That's ridiculous. Why are you saying something like that? That's silly. No, I'm just wondering which. No, that's silly. That's okay. silly. It is a silly question. It is a silly question. The garbage bag, not silly. We're, I, I estimate, we're 11 to 12 times worse than the Nazis. We ought to take, in, uh, the liberals want to take. Do you consider it. yourself patriotic? Yes, I do. When he first took office, he had the Republicans against him, too. Because now he's almost made the party his own party. Yes. Yes, if, if different this time. He has loyalists around him. He has him. loyalists around him now. So do you think if he barely loses enough. the election, like in 2020, that he would actually be able to overturn it this time? I think if he loses the election, this country's gone to hell the rest of the way. It's no different than the yeah. oil people, those oil people that threw the, that threw the oil on top of the Mona Lisa. I don't you kind of that. relate to these uh, climate protesters. I'm not necessarily a climate protester. Would you be in favor of a national ban on abortion? Yes. All across the board. No abortions. No abortions. Are those biblical beliefs? Yes. It looks like you're a local, North Carolina. Um, do you plan to vote in the governor's race? I already did. Did you vote for Mark Robinson? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't vote straight. <laughs> oh, no. I vote for who's right. And what was your issue with Mark Robinson? Uh, well... <laughs> I think he does pew hatred. I've watched his speeches. I don't watch mainstream media, but I watch. Wait, what the fuck? So does Donald Trump. Why are you voting for Donald Trump then? She's like, yo, I don't want a black man stealing the white man's vibes. Okay. Is that what it is? Like everything Mark Robinson has said, Donald Trump has also said. I guess the only difference is that he plays with dolls and Trump doesn't as far as we know. I don't like I don't like how he speaks about our my gay population or um wait what a, plot twist hello a North Carolinan Trump supporter who is a butch lesbian that's amazing anti Mark Robinson pro Trump ah, fuck man I love this shit I fuck god American politics is so awesome a, a educator for 20 years. And and Mark Robinson was just too extreme. Wait, you're a gay teacher and you voted for the gay teachers or pedophiles party? This is like a rare Pokemon, dude. I feel like we just we just found like a like a shiny Charizard, you know what I mean? That is whoo, That's so sick. Yeah, Charizard. Fuck you. Shut up. Oh my god, this chat is so stupid. Y'all are so fucking stupid. What am I doing here? Why am I even doing this? I'm quitting this job. I'm quitting politics. I'm quitting I'm quitting being a political commentator. I say Charizard. Everybody chat lights up. Okay? Oh my god. 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 Like, yeah, I said it wrong. Haha, -ha. streamer said it wrong. Fuck you. Fuck you. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Move on. Yeah. Even you though. consider yourself MAGA? Oh, yeah, 100%. And he's too extreme for MAGA? Yes. He so going into 2024, will you trust the election results if Donald Trump wins? If he wins, will I trust? Of course. I'll, 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 I'll. Oh, this is a very common thing, for the record. Like, what he's, what he's asking them in a joking fashion, like, people have been asking, like, journalists have been asking the Trump supporters in a very serious manner, like Estead did this in Georgia in the last run-up that I was listening to, and it's legitimately fucked up how many people unironically repeat what this man is about to say. And I know exactly what he's going to say, even though uh, I haven't heard him say it yet, which is when, uh, when asked, oh, will you trust the results if Trump wins? They say yes. Will you trust the results if Trump loses? They say no. No, it's stolen. Oh. Trust the election results if he wins. If, the, if he if loses, Kamala, he trust the election results. So if Kamala, but he 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 was like, oh, let me let me clarify. Like I I don't want you to be even a little bit confused about this. Heads win. I <laughs> heads I win. Tails you lose. Okay, that's it. No other way out of this. Kamala wins. You would not trust the election results. I, absolutely not. But, but it, does that feel like democracy is in trouble a little bit if, if you're not going to accept the results if the other candidate wins? Well, it's not my prerogative to accept it or not. Certainly your prerogative, but I mean, overall in this country, are we uh, on unstable ground with democracy yes. if a lot of people won't accept yes. the election results? Yes. Do you ru you're running the truck to charge the phone? Yeah. But you're concerned about 
gas prices? Well, I'm not really concerned. It's one of those things you just you got to have it. So, but it'd be nice. Even if you got to run the truck to charge the phone. Yeah. Like I don't feel. Uh, I'll be honest. Like I, I think I'm pretty critical of the Democrats. Not a secret. So when I see like liberals being dumb on Maine, like supporters of Kamala being dumb on Maine, I feel like I call it out. But there is no comparison to the number of liberals who are like, oh, Kamala is like going to change the trajectory of, of Gaza, which is like one of the dumbest things that liberals could possibly say or delude themselves in the thinking, right? Versus the metric ton of nonsense that you hear from Republicans on every issue. I do not think that there is a liberal equivalent. The closest was the Biden is actually perfectly fine. His brain is perfectly good. Blue MAGA guys. And like some of the Russiagate conspiracies, right? Like the, the ones that went above and beyond. Like outside of that, and there are certainly people like that. There are certainly people like that. There is no one-to-one -one comparison with the way that Republicans operate. Yeah, for each Harry Sisson, Harry Sisson is a great example of this, okay? Harry Sisson is a party loyalist. He just pushes whatever the fuck the party, uh, whatever the fuck the party line is, right? And it's delusional to act like Biden's brain is fine. It was delusional back then, and it's certainly uh, obvious to every single person now. The issue is... Even in that circumstance, like, like it's, it's Republicans still fucking outflank the Democrats on that issue, too, where they'll be like, Kamala Harris does word salad. True. Okay. Fact checkers rated it true. All right. No Pinocchio's there. She does do word salad. But it's like, but if you're a Trump supporter and you say Kamala Harris does word salad, what the fuck is Trump doing? Trump is the word cheesecake factory if Kamala Harris is doing word salad. Like, that's insane. There is never a moment where Trump doesn't fucking come across as insane. Like, just truly mentally unhinged. And that's even when he was good. That's even when he, his brain wasn't as bad. To be fair, Trump is a very good speaker. No, he's entertaining and he's telegenic. And he's even lost the sauce on that front as of late. Okay? But that doesn't mean he's a good speaker. He's never been a good speaker. He's entertaining, or was entertaining, definitely a lot more entertaining back then. Completely disagree with you on this. Dems are rabid dogs. If they're single anti-genocide protesters at their events, or you question their candidate's support of Dick Cheney because fascism, that is the definition of insanity. No, I agree with you on this. I do. But I'm willing to bet that there are a significantly higher number of Democratic Party voters that are at odds and constantly delude themselves into thinking that there's probably some other reason why they're pro, uh, you know, the campaign is pro Dick Cheney. They're not running around being like, I love Dick Cheney. The Republican equivalent would be to go and say, I love Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney's the best. What the fuck are you talking about? He was a fantastic elderly statesman. And he, it's, it's incredibly valuable that he is supporting the Democratic Party. We love him. We love his policies. That's the difference. Like liberals hallucinate an alternative uh, liberals hallucinate alternative motives and they ascribe like some 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 genuine uh motivation to why the democratic party is doing shit that is directly at odds with the way they see the world they don't run around and go li uh lib lib cheney liz cheney and dick cheney are woke now they're fucking progressive advocates for justice and that's why they fucking uh, are voting for kamala do you understand Liberals love coping, and sometimes that coping is delusional and, and uh, ridiculous and angers the fuck out of me. But again, not an equivalent to the way that Republicans operate. Republicans offensively coordinate uh, to whatever the position is that Donald Trump has brought forward. Yeah, libs cope on reason, hogs cope on reality. Like, it's the same principle, yeah, about fracking. You might hate fracking. Your parents probably hate fracking. Kamala Harris says, we got to do fracking. Liberals have to be like, oh, there's got to be a reason for it. It's not for me, but it's probably for some other person. That's the difference. Republicans, on the other hand, if Trump was like anti-fracking tomorrow, would be like, I hate fracking. Fracking destroys the planet. I'm actually woke now. <laughs> but it's for PA, you said, man. Yeah, we also found that like Pennsylvania itself is not of one mind when it comes to fracking. No, I think I more so think that Kamala Harris saying that she's pro-fracking or that Pennsylvanians 
that also act like they care about fracking is just oil and gas industry propaganda. That's it. You're making it seem like Pennsylvanians love when their fucking water is filled to the brim with sediments. PA voters split on fracking, but show widespread support for stronger regulations. October 10th, 2024. Pennsylvania voters continue to be split over fracking. Poll out this week. Survey 700 likely voters in September shows a 58% support. Wait, by the way, what do you mean split on fracking? That means that Pennsylvanians overwhelmingly, or at least by majority, support banning fracking. Even this fucking article headline is bunk. You say Pennsylvania voters are split on fracking if it's like, I don't know, 40-40, and then 20% says, I don't know. The fuck? I'm, bro, I'm from PA. My high school teacher lit up, uh, lit our tab water on fire for class demonstration. Like, what the fuck are they talking about being split? Everyone knows this sucks. For perspective, PA has a population of almost 13 million, only about 123,000 jobs related to fracking. No, that's not even correct. That's also oil and gas propaganda. From what I understand, direct jobs versus jobs impacted by fracking means that there are like hotel workers and shit that uh, offer rooms and service to people that, that come into town to do fracking and shit. You know what I mean? It's like, the, the, the actual number of like people who directly are engaging in the fracking industry is much, much lower than that. You people in Pierre are only worthy of fracking, apparently. Yeah, Shapiro is far to the right of the previous governor. <sighs> anyway, it includes any industry a dollar is spent by a worker who handles fracking. Yes. Banned this dude mods? He's been banned already. Anyway, my point is, like, the closest liberals get to, like, Trump-level uh, nuisance... The closest liberals get to, like, the Trump uh, aesthetics is when they wear, like, I'm speaking t-shirts. And even then, there's plausible deniability that, like, they're wearing it because she said that to Mike Pence and not because she said that to someone who was brave enough to fucking uh, stand against her positions on uh, the Palestinian genocide. You know what I mean? But that's it. That's, like, on the aesthetics front, when you talk about, like, liberals who are insanely fucking annoying, it's like... Like they don't wear, they don't wear border wall t-shirts and shit. Maybe some do now. I don't know. But the number, like the, the mania is not the same. Do you actually want him to be the monarch? Absolutely. I don't know. He's very eloquent when he speaks. We need somebody that's going to be dominant to run our country. I'm tired of all these f***ing illegal immigrants taking our f***ing jobs. Elections going fantastic. We're actually up uh, in all seven swing states. I believe we're at the early stages of World War III. Or what is socialism? Socialism. It's basically where the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. You can what shake I, your head. Well, I just don't, you Dude, ask a capitalist to define socialism. They always talk about capitalism. That always, that always holds true. Okay. Ask, ask a socialist to tell you what's wrong with capitalism, they will define it to a T. Ask a capitalist what's wrong with socialism, and they'll just keep repeating the problems of capitalism. Like, what a funny thing to say. Ah, oh, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It's like, okay, do you feel like under this current administration, the rich have gotten richer and the poor have gotten poorer? And then they'll say, yeah. And then you go, do you think it's because we're doing socialism? And they'll say, yeah, this is what I mean. You are not living in reality. Like, what the fuck do you mean? I, you because I've been campaigning all day, dude. Okay, sorry. Going back and forth. I don't know. But, like, you are being a little silly. This is a biggie, guys. U.S. president. They think this admin is socialist because they're incredibly dumb. Brother, they think Jeff Bezos is socialist. Remember Candace Owens? Candace Owens? A lot of people now think she's, like, brilliant because she uh, is... is <laughs> anti-Israel for the wrong reasons, okay? Like, Clandis Owens was always anti-Semitic, but now she also happens to be anti-Israel. But a lot of people forget that she's also dumb as fuck, okay? Like, actually dumb as bricks. Like, she used to say, Jeff Bezos is socialist. She said it, I think, to, uh, uh, what's his face? To Mr. Ape Man himself, Joe Rogan. Jeff Bezos is socialist, dude. What do you do with that? election 2024. Now I'm traveling all over the US, but we're starting here I'm in there? Madison, the capital of Wisconsin. This state could decide it. This has been a swing state. It goes Republican or Democrat, but very small margins. Both candidates are throwing absolutely everything at it. Now we're going to go to a Trump rally. 
I'm excited and slightly scared, not going to lie. No, but we're going to talk to people to get hi. a real flavour of what this state is, what matters in this election, and that means people's wages, their conditions, and issues like Israel's war onslaught, sorry, against the people of Gaza. So much to talk about. I'm excited. We're going to talk to people in Wisconsin. Don Nichols, preeminent progressive journalist. What yeah. an honour. Co-wrote a book with Bernie Sanders. Truth. Where the hell are we? Right oh, now? where the hell we are. It's beautiful. Yes, we are in a very beautiful place. This is the state capital of Wisconsin, the ultimate battleground state, the most closely contested state in the U.S., uh, usually. It's got 10 electoral votes. 10 electoral votes. And of the last six presidential elections, this state, which turns out about 3 million people for an election, or to vote in an election, of the last six, four have been decided by under 25,000 votes. Whoa. So this is the place where... You know, it literally comes down to, is there a small town someplace, you know, that we should go to? And the candidates actually go. It's, it's different than every place else. It's a state that uh, has its, its own character in, in an awfully lot of ways. Uh, the thing about Wisconsin is, it is a state that uh, until about 125 years ago was, you know, just pillaged by, by corporate capital, the bankers, everybody, the railroads. And to a greater extent than any other American state, uh, with possible exception of North Dakota, there was, it revolted, you know? And in 1900, they elected a guy named Robert M. La Follette as governor. And he said, I'm gonna break the machine. And what that meant was, I'm gonna break the corporations. We're not, they're not going to tell us what to do anymore. And he created a movement here, a progressive populist movement that was um, for economic and social and racial justice uh, before other places and before other people um, that was anti-war, including anti-World War I, uh, that was conservationist and environmentalist long before. Um, this was the left. And La Follette ran for president in 1924, didn't win, but basically... Come on, we're standing next to him. Yeah, it's him. We're introducing to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're just talking about it. Behind yeah, I know. Well, we're gonna, I was going to introduce you to him at some point. Just basic social etiquette. So this is a special birthday party for a local progressive Democratic politician, Francesca Hong. I'm going to be interested because these are all progressives. Are they going to be that happy about the choice ahead of them? Because a lot of progressives are disillusioned at the moment. Being a state representative in the state of Wisconsin is fucking absurd, but absolutely gratifying. Tell me why it's fucking absurd. Because we have had a gerrymandered state where Republicans in power have essentially tried to strip the rights and erode democracies across our state for the last 13 to 14 years. And since COVID, we've had a resurgence of folks who have been organizing, even actually well before COVID, but folks who have been organizing to try to defeat these Republicans and the rising fascism in our state, win back fair maps and try to get a redistrict so we can have a legislature that's actually representative of the people. And this is what they're doing all over the country, isn't it? The Republicans are, are, are stitching up the electoral boundaries. Correct. Because they want to maintain power and then they want to maintain, make sure that they are complacent and never actually have to answer to the needs of the communities they're supposedly supposed to represent. Voting for Harris is one step. It's going to be one tool in a broader progressive movement to make sure that we can we don't have to choose between the lesser of two evils anymore. Because it does sound to a lot of people like lesser two evils. It well, sounds that, like you know. Well, it it, it, it is. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. But we, the, the fight against fascism is to love, care, and organize with your community, it, which is what's happening right now. And a lot of people look at Kamala Harris's position on Gaza and they think it's the same policy, throw weapons at Israel and occasionally do sad face about all the Palestinians being slaughtered by American weapons. I mean, what would you say to that? Democrats make a lot of mistakes. It's not a mistake. Right? Democrats have unforced errors and Democrats will try to undermine one. Yeah, I mean, it's cold. It's not, it's not a fucking mistake. It's deliberate. It's by design. I think the, the actual counter to this is both parties are pro-genocide permanently. It, there is nothing you can do in terms of voting to change that behavior. It's not like an unforced error. I think it's crazy to say that, especially when Joe Biden has said time and time again that he is uh, pro-genocide. Like, he just straight up is like, I'm a Zionist through and through. Um, she's a DSA member. She knows better than this. Yeah, On but another, but genocide, they are genocide. Yeah. That's not she has been, she is, oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying yeah. that. Isn't, I'm saying their stance is absolutely wrong right now. They should come out stronger. They have to. If Kamala Harris had come out staunchly opposed to genocide and saying, when I am, after I win, my transition team is going to work to end the genocide and put, uh, put ahead an arms embargo and make sure that we hold Netanyahu accountable, 
those are things that she could have said on the campaign trail and she chose not to and I think we would have seen much different margins right now. However... But is it, she doesn't do that because she doesn't believe that, does she? I mean, APAC, the main pro-Israel lobby, she's been associated with them. Is she just, she's doing that out of conviction, surely. She, she, she basically well, supports what Israel's doing. Of, we, you and I both know that there are a lot of advisors and people who are telling her what to do. And I think she believes, and I know Tim Walls also believes, that what is happening... That nah, I don't. I don't think Kamala Harris has done anything to, to make me believe that. I don't think it's like advisors that are like deluding a 60-year-old woman. Nah, I don't agree. I think that people want to vote for Kamala Harris against Joe, uh, against Donald Trump, and I think this is their way of like trying to reason with it. And it's fine. It's just not correct. Like her advisors are also pro-Israel. As a matter of fact, there's probably some anti-Israel advisors as well. But but I think that she is full tilt. Lyrics that he would vote for a rock over Trump. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people have that uh, opinion. Austin is another person that has that opinion. And I don't think that, I think that like, uh, I can't speak for Lyric, but for Austin, like it's not even just Trump. It, like no matter who the Republican is, I'm pretty sure that Austin would probably vote for a ham sandwich over whoever the fuck the Republican is. You know what I mean? He's like a loyal partisan. The genocide in Gaza is completely unacceptable and must be stopped and that we must preserve Palestinian life. We must value Palestinian life and we have to work towards coexistence and peace and liberation as well as self-determination for Palestinians. I mean, realistically, that's not going to happen under Kamala Harris. I mean, the problem is, I suppose, a lot of people think the Democrats' position is arm Israel, but just look a bit sad about it occasionally. But that, the, the net consequences. I would rather hold a Kamala Harris administration accountable. I would rather work to get her unseated. I would rather work to have a president that is going to value Palestinian life. I'm not going to have an opportunity to yeah. even do that with a Trump. I'm not going to be able to fight a Trump administration. What's the evidence that she values Palestinian life? We can get her there. We can get her. To, we can get. We can't get her there. And also. Um, she's made no assurances that we can get her there. And also, um, you know, the Democrats themselves are also actively doing the anti-speech restrictions uh, themselves. Get her and hold her accountable there. I saw the last I checked 750,000 uncommitted voters move. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, much like Austin, I would also never vote for a Republican either, for the record. I will never, I will never vote for a Republican. <laughs> My opinion on voting for a Democrat will shift depending on how close they are to a Republican. And officials to seriously recognize that democracy is still alive and well in our state when we can have movements like Uncommitted bring together over 750,000 voters. In Wisconsin, we had rural voters, urban voters, suburban voters all vote uninstructed. Almost 50,000 voters voted uninstructed. Biden won by 20,000. But she's not listening to that. Once, no she is in, once she's in office, it will be easier to take down a Kamala Harris administration than a Trump administration when it comes to holding them accountable for war crimes. But the mechanism of after people have voted, because this is a moment when people have leverage, so why after she's been safely voted into the White House would she go, now I'll listen to you? Why would she do that? She has to get reelected herself. Well, she's not no one, bothering No it. one's out here going for, I'm going to be the one-term president. But Biden didn't even want that. Why would she bother in the next election if she's not bothering in this one? She's going to, she's already, she knows she's losing voters. She knows she's, it's close because yeah, of this. So that she doesn't, she doesn't she's not going to want a bloodbath every single year when it comes to her own people trying to vote for her. The ultimately at the core, as an elected official, our, our, the, the, the core of our responsibility is to lessen suffering. I truly do believe that Kamala Harris knows that her responsibility as president of the United States will be to lessen suffering. The, the way that she will do that will be up to how much she listens to her voters. Um, but all, and she will have to earn our votes, and she is working to do that right now. Is it a but, she, but you're admitting that she's not earning your vote on that issue, at least. This is why I'm saying, like, I, I think this is a, I think this argument is just not correct. Like, I think you're saying this stuff because you want to feel better about your decision, and that's fine. I understand that. But I think that, I think that there is no assurances that she will be moved on this issue. Enough? Absolutely not. Would I rather be fighting her for Palestinian liberation, which means liberation for all of us, than Trump? Absolutely. Some would say the Democratic campaign is a bit about fear. I love this.
National Association for Gun Rights Political Action Committee, James Woods, vote for Lily Tang William, Williams. She has lived under communism and she understands what it does to nations it worms its way into. Dude, these people are so fucking insane. Oh, what is happening in this country, dude? It's a fucking clown show. It's a fucking clown show, dude. This is a this is like a like a bit that like a British comedy would have about America. Okay? They'd be like, I'm the gun candidate. I'm gonna have a gun in every single campaign ad. I love guns. I sometimes fuck them. And it's like, nope, it's real life, dude. It's fucking real life. She's listed on victims of communism. Lily Tang Williams is a survivor of Mao's communist regime in China. Her parents were from an illiterate working class family from China's western Sichuan province. Damn, why are you owning your parents? Also, wait, what do you mean? They were illiterate and they were like, we refuse to learn how to read and write? Like, what do you mean? Lily grew up during Mao's 10-year cultural revolution as a child, experiencing extremely poor living conditions, food rationing and social chaos, and oppressive communist restrictions and indoctrination. A few years later, while studying in university, she received a copy of the U.S. Constitution and Declaration of Independence from an American student. From these two documents, she first learned about the individual rights and liberty as opposed to collective rights. After Lily became an assistant law professor at Fudan University in Shanghai, she, in good conscience, could no longer support the Chinese Communist Party, CCP. In 1988, she managed to leave the oppressive regime by seeking, without her university support, graduate study in the U.S., Bro's going to get clipped so hard right now. What do you mean? <laughs> like, come on, dude, my haters, my haters that like are also anti-China cannot be so fucking psychopathic that they are defending this person's like psychopathic notions. Soon after arriving in America, Lily met her future husband. They've been happily married for 33 years and have three adult children. While raising her family, Lily became an entrepreneur and began her journey of discovery of democracy and liberty. <laughs> They're also talking, it's so funny, because, like, this is so obviously right-wing. Like, victims of communism is, of course, incredibly right-wing. They straight-up feature Nazis as victims of communism. But, like, um, which they were, technically, but, uh, you know, I don't know if that is, uh, I don't know if that's something you want to point to as, like, you know, poor, poor Nazis is not exactly a position that you want to have. Um, but, but, like... <laughs> Overall, overall, oh, she manages rental properties with her husband while also works as a part time as an expert witness on China related cases, traveling to the country as a professional, traveling the country as a professional speaker, sharing her story about the horrors of socialism. Yeah, the, the funniest part about this is so whenever, whenever these like right wing groups write about someone who is not white, they, they write about her like she is an animal. You know what I mean? Like they, they write about non white people as though they are like primitive cultures you know what i mean and what i mean by this is this okay she discovered democracy and liberty like like she's a savage who discovered fire you know what i mean like what are you like why do you let anybody talk about you like this like do you have no fucking decency no self-respect like this is supposed to be pro you and they're talking about you like you're a fucking wounded animal dude her passionate presentations and interviews have been featured on Fox News, Tucker Carlson Tonight, Fox Business, Newsmax, Timcast, Huckabee TV. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. What the fuck? Watch her campaign. I arrived in Austin. Living in a free country, born as Americans, and do not recognize their privileges. You are born American, a free country. You never suffered a starvation. And you need to go to other countries to find out why all the immigrants, millions, millions of them want to come here. America is last stand on earth for freedom. If we lose this country, the world will be a very dark place. Yeah, don't know how many kids of illiterate parents who became law professors in the United States. Yeah, hmm. That was funny. They were like, born to illiterate parents who were peasants who fucking suck. <laughs> she went to law school in China. They oppressed her into going to law school in China. I have three children in this country. I want to protect their American dream. So here I am, you know. I've noticed that every time you speak about America, your eyes fill with tears. 
glaze. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. God, I, I love America so much. For many liberals as well, by the way, this doesn't track as like insane propaganda because they also are loaded, filled to the fucking brim, overflowing with American exceptionalist sentiment and that all of our enemies are barbaric, bloodthirsty monsters type shit. So they, they don't look at this and go, this is cultish, man. What the fuck are we watching? Every time I see someone like this, I'm happy they went to the U.S. instead of staying in China. Yeah, America's brain drain aside, America's hog drain might be making other countries better. Like, I think we're such a vector for the most conspiracy brain dipshits, the most insane fascists, that, like, it just kind of takes care of itself, the problem, in all these other countries. Like, look at Canada. I'm not even joking. I think half the reason why Canada still has, like, some semblance of social safety nets is because all the dumbest fucking hogs come here and LARP as Americans. Like, Tom McDonald. Okay, Tom McDonald is Canadian. He could have stayed in Canada, but no, he had to come here and fucking talk about how he loves wearing, uh, I don't know, American flag gear all the time. It's fucked up. Steven Crowder, again, Canadian. Elon Musk could have stayed in fucking South Africa, but no, had to come here and be a dingus out here. Ted Cruz, another fucking Canadian. Jordan Peterson. Oh, oh, we just like we import a metric ton of fucking hogs from every other country that just have the worst. like the guy who lost his uh, doctor, like his medical license. What was his name? Paul something like the OG vaccines cause autism guy from England. Andrew Wakefield, not Paul. Sorry. Former Dr. Andrew Wakefield. He gets fucking humiliated in England. And then we're like, come to us, please. You can live in a fucking multi-million dollar mansion and like have sex with your model wife and just do conferences on how vaccines do indeed cause autism, even though your data on that was so bad that you, you know, were disdoctored. <laughs> they took away your, your, your medical license. Ugh. I do, I do love this country. No place to go. And I just hope people can hear my stories. For past five years, I've been telling the same saying. I have no political agenda here. I <laughs> no, none whatsoever. I have no political agenda. Oh, God. One day I'm going to escape to China and do this, do this exact same grift, but in China and be like, <laughs> we did not have... I'll do a like a thick American accent, you know what I mean? I'll be like, we did not have high speed rail. I wanted high speed rail and they do, wouldn't give it to me. I wanted even urbanization. I looked at the rural farmlands of <laughs> what it once was American, a beacon of American prosperity, and all I saw was ghost cities. I yearned for freedom and China offered it to me. I just want to leave American dream. My, my children live American dream. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's time to ask questions. It's time to wake up. We've been brought together in this moment to face the urgent choice between dehumanization and rehumanization. What? <laughs> I can't get over this fucking ad. He said, I have no political motive. Also, I'm running. <laughs> I'm running at, at New Hampshire, U.S. House District 2. <laughs> it's about, this guy sucks. He's dangerous. Don't, like, we need to stop him. So that's quite a negative rather than a positive kind of vision for the country. What do you think about that? It's more like lesser evil. There's this new energy. Rehumanization? Yeah, they're going to make Chinese human again. <laughs> like, that's what they're saying. Because communism has made them less than human. <laughs> It's cool. It's a cool thing to say. See within the party that it's not just fear motivated. People are excited. I mean, are we you have. A, I'm super excited. Really? The fact that we are gonna elect the first woman president, like that means a lot to me as a woman um, in the U.S. Like, I was absolutely devastated when Hillary Clinton lost. You know, it was. I, I was 
still in high school and I remember thinking like you know as a, as a young woman like there was no longer a limit on leadership for women even though this is you know viewed as kind of good versus evil democracy versus fascism like there's also we're gonna have a historic election if Kamala Harris wins and I think yeah final final question I suppose is on that a lot of People go, she'll be the first woman president, but if I'm going to talk about disillusionment in the country, people say she's going to be the first woman president to keep arming a genocide in. Yeah, also, this is the glass cliff shit, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> it makes sense. America, America, if you look at it as a company, is in the, at the verge of insolvency. <laughs> so we're like, let's hire a woman and then be like, see, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> She ruined the country. We put a woman CEO. We put a woman CEO in power. <laughs> I think the difference between the two sides right now is that um, if one side is elected, we will not be able to protest the actions that they take in office. Are you able to protest right now? I mean, she's not protesting in general, but like, come on. This stuff is on the Gaza front. This stuff is stupid. Okay. You can say that about other shit, maybe, but you know. On the issue of, uh, on the issue of like protesting for Palestinian emancipation, it's not like the, sorry, Democrats don't have a great track record there, you know? But the other side will be upholding democracy and, you know, people who are very upset about the events happening in the Middle East right now and about the genocide that's occurring, they'll be able to protest Kamala Harris's uh, decisions regarding that. But a lot of people think you'll be able to protest and she'll ignore it. I mean, you know, it'll be like, I don't think she'll, she won't ignore it. They won't. Uh, I Joe mean, Biden has. He, I mean, because what he does is he arms it and then does, you know, goes, it's very, you know, very sad. I mean, won't she just carry that on? She'll arm it and go, very sad about all those dead people. I think. Killed people, murdered people. Um, I guess I don't, I don't know what Kamala Harris will do, but mm. I just know that you know, on November 6th, if she is elected president, we will be able to protest, you know, people will be, but like, if Donald Trump's president, it doesn't even matter. If we're able to close the book on Trump, it will usher in a whole new generation of leadership. The soul and of the Democrats then is won by people like people in this room. I, yeah, I think so. Amazing. I felt hopeful at the end. <laughs> Was that hope? <laughs> Well, it's good to be on a bar again. Yeah! yeah. Hey, thank you all for coming out for Fran today. Um, I just got back from doing doors in Baraboo uh, with Karen DeSanto, uh, one of the pickup seats that we need to get the majority. And I can tell you there's a good feel that's out there. Joe Biden has been stuck in kind of a four or five decade old view of what Israel was with very different leaders. And that's where he, I think, took most of the positions that were happening. Kamala Harris isn't from that same era. She's from the era I'm from and other people. And I she think was with APOC. she was there. Star She's literally 60 years old. Like, yes, she reads as much younger. Yes, her brain is not doo-doo in the way that Biden's is. But she definitely is from that era. Okay? That's kind of wild. I don't get that either. Well, I guess in 2017. But, but that, then, you, then you'd have to say 85% of Congress uh, you know, gets money probably from APAC, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think you can say that. And I, I think that that definitely does play a role in our calculations. So she just said she's going to arm the no matter what. No, I think you're incorrect. Um, I think what is correct is she's from a different era, and she has said things that Joe Biden certainly didn't say, and she has called for uh, you know, making sure that there is um, the ability to have an independent state for Palestinians. He said that. She, she has. No, she he, said, I know, I said yeah, Biden said that too. No, he did not in the same way. No. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He did. I think the difference is that he just believes. What? Rudy Giuliani exploring run for New York City mayor, sources say. That's all amazing. I mean, I hear him probably a little more than you do, and he has not said that in a no, significant I, I, way. I, in fact, the yeah, biggest... I, yeah, I read all his statements. He's I, probably said uh, the two-state solution sort of stuff, um, yeah, I, but I he know. hasn't gone... She's gone farther in the words. I can tell you this as someone who's one of the most active people. I can tell you he, she's gone farther in the words. 
people in Congress okay. who cares about this issue. No, no, it's just I, I, she I, has said things that go significantly farther than where he's at. Is anyone where I, I no, she hasn't. no. Uh, but uh, I honestly, don't know what tangibly she'll keep selling arms. She'll just do the same well, no, thing. You have no proof you. of that. She said nothing like that whatsoever. Yes, she, so, yes, she, has. No, she has. It. Yes, she has. What is happening here? What is this conversation? Yes, she has. Why are you just denying reality? Just say that this is an uh, like unchangeable position that is uniparty and fucking move on. I don't, I don't get why. Oh, see, liberals cope. Liberals cope with reason. Republicans deny reality. Like, oh, well, she has said it. Okay. She has said it. Oh, well, everyone is fucking, everyone's APAC. It's true. I mean, he is denying reality too, actually. She, he's like hog levels. Hog levels. She said, no, I, she hasn't. No, that, that's, that's a statement out of ignorance. That's not a that's statement, statement out of fact. She said, no, it is. It is. What, she it, what, what said, statement has she said? Which because she, she hasn't even arms. talked about that almost at all. Yes, she so, has. She said, no. I will. Okay, well, I, will, I, just, I think you're wrong. Okay. no matter what. Well, well that's you're what she wrong. said. That's you're wrong. wrong. No, I'm telling you, you're wrong. Well, but but you're but give me a statement. Give me a statement. What has she said? She hasn't said much on it, period, because she's been running for a short amount of time, but you've decided what she said. That's not correct. She's running for president. She's under scrutiny. So here's so here's the answer. You're going to keep talking. I'll give you one last answer, and then we're done. Okay. All right. Um, I think the promising part is that she is not from where Joe Biden is on this issue. And we have the ability to have her look at this. And I think she can see that Netanyahu is not operating in anyone's best interest. Okay. And I would argue selling any more offensive uh, weapons is a bad idea. And I think that's the argument many of us are going to try to make should she win. Okay. But to put words in her mouth that she did not say not, that I'm you're not. only assuming are going to be her. He's not. He's not doing that. You're wrong. He's right. You're wrong. You are delusional. It's crazy. It's interesting that he's delusional in the same vein as like Trump supporters when they are deluded, when they are deluded into thinking that like there is a different position here, actually, secretly. I think that comes from a place of, I think that that certainly comes from a place of being like, I know that this shit sucks, so I'm just going to cope with it. I'm going to cope with it and assume that she means something different. This sucks because Mark Pican is like top 10 Congress people to oppose his rule. He's legitimately one of the better progressives. Yeah. He knows deep down inside that the American Democratic Party's position on Israel is completely unaligned with uh, like they're both the interests of uh, American foreign policy, but also unaligned with like their worldview. That's it. It is completely unaligned with his worldview with his own personal individual worldview so he has to just like delude himself into thinking like no 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 you don't get it like it's gonna be better if it was if if that was even remotely a possibility then kamala harris would have communicated that okay this is hog levels of copium straight up hog levels of delusion positions she hasn't She's taken never said she'll stop arming okay you're gonna talk over me again that's fine no, no, I'm just... they did it to you what is this No way! I love Aleska from Boy Boy. He's much better than Hassan. I give him five big booms. Bo, no. Bo. No. Bo. No. Bo. It's like every boom was a shot directly much across. Than the Dude, what? No way! I love Aleska from Boy Boy. He's much better than Hassan. No. I give him five big. No, booms. don't do it. Bo. 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 No way! I love Aleska from Boy Boy. He's much better than Hassan. I give him five big booms. Bo, 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 bo. Hey, AJ, did you know it was Aleska's from Boy Boy's birthday? No way! I love Aleska <laughs> from Boy Boy. <laughs> no! I love Aleska's. <laughs> Stop with the booms. He's already dead. He's already dead. As a Tushimer, how tough is it to have friends, Miz, that are surrounded by Shimmers like Kanud, who call you an American trader as of this morning? How do you deal with all that? Uh, I don't give a shit. Also, Kanud is not even American. <laughs> I'll do you one better. I'll go and hang out with Kanud himself. I don't give a fuck. Oh, man. I can't believe it. Another person has called me an un American terrorist. Oh no, what will I do? <laughs> oh well. Yeah, what does this say about Canute that he wants to hang out with a terrorist?
Do you feel like he genuinely believes it when he says that? Or do you feel like he's just repeating whatever he fucking saw on subreddits? Much to consider. Why don't you go ask him that? Same principle behind people being like, Hassan is a terrorist promoting terrorist propaganda, which is why he must be banned from Twitch. It's like, excuse me, if that's a real principle that you hold, you should probably be trying to get me arrested. Okay? <laughs> like, what do you mean? I'm just no, fine. no, no, it's, it's fine. It's but what I'm saying is she has not said things around this because I would know. I follow this issue very closely. So, so do I my job. I know. I know. It, so is my job. You know what? Yeah, except I actually get shit done and you kind of report about what happened. So I'm, I'm telling job, you, I do, I'm a journalism major. I know what you're trying to do, enough, just, but I do it, think it, it, you're incorrect. You ask but, but you are incorrect. No, I think you're And that she has not hope. said. Yeah. But she has not said what you're saying she said. And she, I think we have to find out yet where she's going to be exactly she, on some of this. But she's not said she anything comes from a different area. Well, she has totally. Okay, well, yeah. Okay, okay I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry you upset about well, no, that. Well, no, you're wrong. And as a journal the major, I'm offended that you are. Yeah, Mark Pican has been decent on military weapons. Progressive dems between a rock and a hard place. Mark Pican balances opposition to the war and support for Biden. Like, it's just interesting because, like, he is better than the majority of Congress on this issue. But of course, he's just like, he's doing this shit, you know? This is also part of the reason why people just can't stand politicians. Myself included, really. It's just like, it's obvious. Even you don't believe what you're saying, dog. You just don't. You, you have your own personal opinions. And then you have the opinion that you must abide by within the party. Like, that's it. And it's weird that you're, you know, having this cognitive dissonance in display. Is the same thing with Bernie? No, not. I don't even think so. I think Bernie is like more honest about this shit. Bernie, I think, personally has a difference uh, in opinion to someone like myself on the issue of Israel. But having said that, Bernie is like openly like, yeah, no. <laughs> Bernie is like, yeah, they're doing genocide. Well, he won't say genocide, but they'll be like, they're they're uh, in the tank for Netanyahu, Bibi Netanyahu. But there's a bunch of other stuff that Trump will be worse on not listening to someone who could tell you other things you instead journalism have decided just, yeah. what your story is going to be about no, I but it's, it's just, not correct journalism is not about deferring to politicians on what they say with all no, due but, respect but with all due respect look at what she said at the dnc speech alone is more than joe biden has said ever about did you see a shift in the strategy kamala mentions gaza without a protester yelling right, about it it took trump going to dearborn for her to start off her michigan rally with gaza i'm literally going to suck down a fucking glock I just, oh my God, dude. I'm Brian, kill me. I'm Brian, kill me. Holy fuck. I don't want to, oh my God, this shit is so fucking annoying. Oh my God. I'm Brian, kill me. 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 I'm Peter Douchey. I'm Peter Douchey. I'm Brian, kill me. They can't be for real. They can't be for real on this. They just, they can't. They can't. They can't be this fucking bad. Suck cocks, not glocks. Oh my God. I jokingly said that the fucking pro Palestinian demonstrators should say that they're voting for Trump and that they're Trump supporters in an effort to get the fucking Democrats to respond a couple weeks ago. As a joke, I said, lol, wouldn't it be funny if the Democrats responded to the pro Palestinian demonstrators that say that they're going to vote for Donald Trump? Because the only person that they ever care about is a Trump supporter, and they just only have one position, and that is how do we court Trump supporters? And it turns out, and it turns out that is the case. It turns out that that is the case. I was just jokingly saying that, and it turns out the Democrats were like, oh my God, they're pro Trump. What the fuck? We love them now. If they had done this like, I don't know, six months ago, Kamala Harris probably would be talking about dismantling the Zionist entity by now, fucking two days out from an election. This to me shows that they are that stupid. I thought that there was like a deliberate reason. Remember when you said, how can you go to Michigan and not talk about Gaza when we first started campaigning two days before the election, they noticed? Yeah, only after Trump went to Dearborn. She look, just tell me, look at what that's more than well, Biden. I, I'm not, I, that's been a few months ago and I've been campaigning all day. You can actually look it up. It's pretty simple. You said look at what job. she said. I just told you, look at what she said at the DNC convention. It goes farther than what Joe Biden said at any other time. I, I, I don't think that's true with all due respect. I don't want to upset you, and with, any, you know, anymore, but I don't think anything I can she tell you for those of Biden. us who care about this issue in Congress, we have watched the language be different. And I feel like this would have been better if they started doing this earlier. Like I'm literally seeing the method a little bit. Because, like, Democrats love Republicans, dude. They love Republicans. They, 
Bro, maybe if, if someone was like, oh, I'm a registered Republican. I love Republican Party. Like, maybe the Democrats would be like, oh, my God, we have to win these Republicans over. <laughs> Are you planning to vote for Kamala? Suck my fucking dick, dog. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> okay, bud. You should start jokingly saying more shit. Um, I, I, I'm not kidding. I'm wondering I if, should. Like, this would have been better if they started. I should. I don't get why you're arguing with this. We've watched her leave space. You are right that she has not indicated she will be better, but also she's avoided indicating either way as much as possible. What? No. She has directly... Com Dude, she went more. She went above and beyond in comparison to Biden when it comes to, like, vaguely talking about her position on America's allegiances and defense. I can't recall a time when Biden said, we are going to have the most lethal military. On Gaza, she just straight up carbon copies Biden's position. That's it. Yeah, also, Mark Pecan is wrong. This is... I need to hear this. This is going to hurt my fucking soul, but I need to do it. And we are joined today by leaders of the Arab American community, which has deep and proud roots here in Michigan. And I want to say, this year has been difficult, given the scale of death and destruction in Gaza, and given the civilian casualties and displacement in Lebanon. It is devastating. And as president, I will do everything in my power to end the war in Gaza, to bring home the hostages. By the and way, the suffering by the way, that crowd reaction is is organic. It's real. That's what's really frustrating about this is that like this is an uh, this is what she should have been saying since the moment that she became the candidate, like literally. This is what she should have said at the DNC. This is what she should have said the moment she became candidate. And maybe even gone further than this. No, like, I'm speaking now. No fucking, uh, no, this is different than everything else that she said thus far. You are wrong. The reason why this message is so much better than every other time she's talked about it is because she's not contextualizing the death and destruction by saying Israel has a right to defend itself. Of course it's different. No, it's objectively different. She's not she's not saying Israel has a right to defend itself. She's not saying that like she's not saying October 7 was the singular worst tragedy of all time and what came after it is eh, it's kind of bad too. She did not open with Hamas October 7 mass rapes occurred on October 7 directed by Hamas. Babies were burned alive or any of that other shit. Israel is a cure ensure the Palestinian people can realize their right to dignity, freedom, security, and self-determination. I perceive focusing on Israel's defense as a way to foreshadow distinction between defense and offense and using that as a red line. You are right. The line about tragedy was fucking abysmal. She still said ensure Israel's defense, but I mean, that's fine. That's not as, that's nowhere near as bad as, as fucking framing the conversation about October 7 being the pivotal moment which then justifies at least some of the atrocities that Israel has committed. But again, two days away, too a little too late. Or this is not me saying we can push her left, by the way. Make no mistake. This is me getting even more mad because now I am of the belief, because now I am genuinely of the mindset that these guys are just actually fucking stupid. There was a moment where I was like, they're laying it on so thick with like Richie Torres being sent to being deployed to Michigan and then fucking Bill Clinton being deployed to Michigan to be like, oh, the Arabs are barbaric and they deserve to be killed and slaughtered in Judea and Samaria belong to Israel and Israel. Ha. Like all that shit. Like I, I was like, oh, they're just like actually fucking cutting. Uh, they're they're reframing this issue as like sectarian conflict. Uh, the the classic like canard. Oh, this is a thousand year war. We can't deal with it. It's just Jews versus Muslims. Like it's all fucking bullshit, right? Like the way that they communicated this for so long made me feel like I don't I don't even think that they're stupid. I think that they're like cynically and deliberately trying to give people the permission to say, ah, fuck the Muslims. This is just a Muslim issue. Fuck them. Cut them out. Cut them out of the coalition. The fact that she is now communicating this position two days out from the election after Donald Trump went and did that shameless fucking pandering bullshit in Dearborn makes me feel like, no, they are that stupid. 
that they legitimately, that they straightforwardly and legitimately thought like, nobody gives a fuck about Gaza. Come on. These guys are just Muslims. No one cares. They're not human. That is insane. A diplomatic resolution crossed the Israel-Lebanon border to protect civilians and provide lasting stability. I mean, this stuff is all bullshit, too. Like, come on. No, you don't. You're not doing that. Like, it's still empty words, and it's like a marginal change in the appropriate direction, and it came fucking, it's like too little too late. It came, it came two days before. I make no mistake, I need you to understand something here. The fact that she could dignify voters with a lie, a lie that isn't even like framed well enough, but the the mere fact, the, the actual fact that they were to even dignify the Michigan population with a fucking lie two days prior, only after Donald Trump was like, I love the Palestinians. Like, I'm eating Palestinian kebab. That blows my mind, dude. That means, that means that they were actually stupid. That means that they literally did not think that this was a, a, a problem at all. Like, they didn't perceive this as a problem at all. Oh my God. This is insane. It's Palestinian, Lebanese. This is unimaginable. She could promise an arms embargo and most pro-Palestinian voters would be switched off to it and rightly not believe her because of what she said for the past six months. Yeah, she saw the fucking slammed 49-49 um, split and then saw Donald Trump visiting Dearborn and being like, I love my Arabs and Muslims and was like, actually, fuck. Um, now that they're actually Republican voters, we can court them. Why is Sarah speaking like this? Jeet here says the New York Times reports the Trump campaign's research found that up for grabs voters were about six times as likely as other battleground state voters to be motivated by their views on Israel's war in Gaza. The, ver the worry is Harris started too late. Who could have foreseen this? Who could have told you this? Who has been telling you this? Hmm. Hmm. Morally correct. This unbelievable this Palestinian Lebanese victim center rhetoric only came after Trump courted air voters in Dearborn for months. We've been screaming about a change in Israel policy slash rhetoric for months. We, uh, we have been screaming about a change in Israel policy and rhetoric being the morally correct and politically sound decision. Now it's likely too late. Oh my God. I'm screaming that a change in Israel is the morally correct and politically sound decision. Now it's likely too late toward a future with security and God damn it, dude. How is what she said different than what she's been saying all along the last sentence I heard her say bar from bar before? Guys, optics matter in every single word, and every single word is weighted differently. What word she uses before the other matters in this situation, okay? This isn't fucking Donald Trump. Democrats are very careful with the language that they use. Centering, I'm, I'm pointing to it right here. This... This language is centering the victims of Israel's genocidal campaign, okay? As opposed to centering Israel as a victim of Hamas, which is what she has done over and over again. She didn't start out with October 7. She didn't start out with, like, Israel has a right to defend itself. Like, all this stuff is very important. The problem is, uh, the problem is, this is too little too late. And she didn't fucking say... Uh, she didn't say this as a response to a protest. She came out of the gates swinging with it. Millions of people have voted already. You want her to come out and say Israel's an evil genocidal nation? We will never support them again? <laughs> You're so fucking stupid. Uh, yeah, that would be a really good argument if that's the one I made, except I've never made that argument, okay? Like, yeah, that would be the correct position that Israel is is doing genocide. It is objectively the correct thing. And that is uh, how I foresee future history books writing the matter. And that is how I foresee you lying to your fucking children if you ever have children in the future, being like, oh, yeah, I was always against that shit. Okay. Having said that, for the time being, I understand that it's not something that she can say as an American president. That's not what I'm expecting of her. There are a million different ways in which she could massage an appropriate position. That is not only morally correct, but also politically sound. But the goddamn Democrats never respond to anything until Republicans do something because they are also reactionary. She doesn't even need to say anything. She needs to say America is a nation of laws. One of those laws is that we cannot give weapons uh, and working towards the ceasefire is the correct position. 
Working towards a ceasefire is the correct position. The problem is America has a lot more fucking tools in the tool belt to push Israel into a ceasefire. America has made Israel do things that Israeli officials don't want to do time and time again historically. The difference in this circumstance is no one is even communicating that deliberately because they're scared shitless of, of coming across as, uh, as hardliners on Israel's actions. There is no real work required in this process. All it is is a phone call. The Biden Amendment was proposing to send only defensive weapons and not Oh, proposing. Yeah. Dog, the Biden Amendment doesn't need to do any of that. They need to say they need to have a phone call that's private with Benjamin Netanyahu where Biden says no more weapons if you keep this shit up. It's over. As a matter of fact, they did just that in 2021. Biden called Benjamin Netanyahu and said it's done. It's over. And it was the next day. It's that simple. Israel doesn't get to do anything without our go ahead. Okay. So shut the fuck up about this. Oh, the Biden administration is working tirelessly around the clock for a ceasefire or proposing to send only defensive weapons and non-offensive weapons. Like, who are you fucking fooling? What are you talking about? The dumbest fucking American. Okay. Who is illiterate still understands that what Biden is saying and what Biden is doing is at odds. Okay. MAGA of the left, Lamau. This is fucking dumber than that. Reagan did that. Biden himself did that. Also, not only did Biden himself do that, he literally did that this time around. Why the fuck did Israel not light up Iranian oil refineries? Why the fuck did Israel not light up Iranian nuclear facilities? Hello? How did that happen? You think Israel didn't want to do that? After Iran straight up penetrated its anti-defense systems, Israel's anti-defense systems, and actually struck multiple fucking targets, two air bases, and the fucking Mossad headquarters? They were able to hit inside of Tel Aviv. What are you talking about? You think Israel did not want to fucking fight back against that and greatly escalate? Well, that's exactly what they did say, but I know they aren't going to do that in an election year. They need to get elected and the pressure in out because Trump will be so much worse. Man, shut the fuck up. Wake up. Wake up. You're fucking delusional. No, they're doing it because they want it, okay? They're doing it because they like it. They're doing it because they agree with it. Oh, they can't do that because it's an election year. What are you talking about? There is only electoral consequences in the positive direction if they were to fucking stop this shit. You have looked at zero fucking polls on the matter. You are delusional. You do not know what the fuck you're talking about. And you are now directly at odds with the way that Kamala Harris is even communicating on this matter. For months and months, I have shown you polls over and over again, showcasing that people would be significantly more enthusiastic if the Biden camp or Kamala Harris after the swap out happened were to restrain Israel. And the only way to restrain Israel is through denying weapons transfers. You're wrong. You're just objectively wrong. There is no data point to prove that you are right. You are no different in that regard from a MAGA Trump supporter. Okay. You know how Trump supporters will turn around and fucking act like, oh man, well, you don't understand. Like uh, the elections are stolen. And it's like, well, where's the evidence for that? You know? And then they're like, oh, I don't know. They just are, you know, illegals are doing that. You're behaving like that. You're straight up behaving like that. Blue MAGA ass motherfucker in here. Jesus Christ. Kamala Harris also demonstrated that she has the capacity to separate herself from Biden's rhetoric. The problem is the only time she did that was when Biden called Trump supporters garbage. Too late as far as mattering to Gaza centered voters. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Or, or too late to see like a noticeable bump. Too late to, to see a noticeable bump in terms of her uh, election day voters. I'm not MAGA. I'm a realist. It's a complex issue. They need to write voters in the right states to win. I know it sucks, but nobody likes to see how the sausage is made. No, dude, this is copium. Okay. The I'm a realist position is copium. Do you understand? You're just coping because if you were a realist, you would have looked at a single fucking poll. There is not one poll that says you are right. Every single poll conducted on this matter says I am right. Every single one. And you can even arrive at this conclusion by just looking at the reality on the ground, okay? There are zero Democratic Party voters or likely Democratic Party voters or independents or undecideds that are going, I want more dead children in Gaza. I want more dead children in Lebanon with my tax dollars. 
There are, however, plenty of people who go, I don't like that. I would be significantly more enthusiastic to vote for any administration that puts an end to this. That's part of the reason why a lot of people even fantasize and hallucinate that Trump would be better on Gaza. And that's why Trump is defeating Kamala Harris by like 30 fucking points on this issue. Because everyone correctly understands that the responsible party in the genocide that is occurring is the Democratic Party. Okay? They are correctly interpreting that the Democrats are responsible for it, but they're incorrectly assuming that Trump will be different. Because the Democrats have not said anything but lies on this issue okay i really 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 hope you understand that you like saying that you are a realist on the matter is actually so removed from reality specifically because all polling on the matter for months have consistently shown that overwhelming majority of majorities of americans both the democratic party is like 80 percent 80 percent of democrats want a ceasefire and weapons transfers to halt to israel Okay, like 70 or 60 percent of independents want it and even 54 percent of Republicans want this to happen. Okay, to play devil's advocate, Palestine is a colonizer state as well as Israel. Wait, what? <laughs> what are you? Okay, sure. To play devil's advocate, uh, you know, Palestine is also doing a genocide in Israel. <laughs> okay, cool, man. You can't play devil's advocate, but just like making some shit up. You are 100% right. If she wanted the major media networks to cover this, she's way too late. No major network is going to use their evening news, morning news about this item. The news is now locked in as election day is here. That's the only story. But for people who really care about this, a single issue and vote on E-Day, it could move some people. So I'll take any bit I can from her on this. I think it's, it's so fucking, it's so dumb to do it now. She should have done this months ago and then moved and expanded beyond it because the positive, the media coverage, the contentious media coverage that she would have gotten from this would have been genuinely positive in the way that people view her the media would be like whoa this is a change of pace Ooh, drama because they are bloodthirsty vultures themselves so they would have been like drama palace intrigue drama between uh you know a vice president and a president but who's more favorably viewed by the media kamala harris or joe biden it's kamala harris they would have assumed her side on this they would have taken her side on this it would have highlighted her position difference. It would have allowed her to sever ties with Joe Biden, who is objectively unpopular. So unpopular that he had to drop out. Remember that. Oh, nah, they would have called her a terrorist supporter. No, you're wrong. CNN is covering it only with an update. Harris kicks off final Michigan rally. A pleasure to do everything in my power to end the war in Gaza. That's a position that, by the way, Donald Trump has falsely adopted for the longest fucking time. He's like, I'm going to end the war. I'm going to end the war. I'm going to end the war. I'm going to finish the job. I'm going to finish the job. I'm going to let Israel finish the job. I'm going to end the war. Some guy just said hindsight is 2020. Like you haven't been saying this for months. Yes, there are probably 100 different instances where I have screamed about this issue over and over and over again. I've debated people on this issue. I've screamed about this issue for months. It's not fucking hindsight, dude. It, when it's very obviously foresight. You can well, shake I, your head. Well, I, it's I, not I, even foresight. It's just sight. All right, let's get back to Mark Pecan. Because I've been campaigning all day, dude. Okay, fair enough. Going back and forth. But, like, you are being a little silly. I'm not being silly. I just ask for evidence. For someone who cares about this issue. Okay. It's, it's my job to ask questions. I think I was being respectful. But, but you have to actually ask correct questions. No. And you're not actually using the correct things she said. So I don't know what value you, that is. I've asked you to tell me what she said concretely differently than And I than told Joe you, Biden. I've been, I've been for 12 hours doing things today. And I can't tell you the exact words but i said go this is real simple okay do don't talk over me for one today. second okay one second go to the dnc speech she gave look at the remarks she said and you've never seen joe biden say what she said there alone this is literally not true <laughs> that's crazy joe biden has said we have a firm commitment to a two-state solution over and over again and then benjamin Netanyahu, i remember very clearly the next day would be like no state two state how about no state bitch Literally, every time. That's just one example yeah, I can give you. The true. exact words, okay. just so you know, I'm not an actor, so I don't remember all the scripts and everything. So, But look at that, well, and you will see the words that she said. I, I did a video about her speech uh, at the Democratic National Congress. I okay. know exactly what she said in the convention. Yeah. And the words so then, she used you know were the, identical. I would to love for you to share Biden. with me the parallel language that Joe Biden said to what she said, because it's not true. So it's not just about language. It's about commitment. Well, so oh, she no, has it's not language. Whip out your phone at that point. You just got to whip out your phone. If you don't have it ready to go, just whip it out and be like, here it is. Oh, that's no, 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 a 
no, that's not true. That's a convenient no, term. The language <laughs> used was the same. No, the no, language it wasn't. Used was oh, the same. You just said that it's not but, about language, but, people, but now you're saying it's the same. What matter, what, if, if you yeah. had said anything with consistency, okay. I could answer the question better. What you're matter, not, though, What matters the problem. at the end of the day isn't yeah. just empathising, it's about commitments. And she hasn't right. offered any concrete well, differences in policy. Well, that's didn't I just tell you on a lot of policy, this in particular, we haven't seen a lot of additional statements because the campaign's been truncated. But what she said at the DNC... There's been months of a campaign. Yeah, I mean, that's also bullshit. That's also bullshit. Campaign's been truncated. Yeah, she had no space. Every single time she talked about... Every single time she centered Israel around uh, this this conversation opportunity. Or the DNC would have been a fantastic opportunity to showcase that there is at least some level of commitment. Even if it's a fucking lie that you care about Palestinians and their humanity. Like, even if it's a lie. I can't believe at this point... I've moved beyond telling Democrats like or criticizing Democrats for lying on the campaign to asking them to fucking lie. Finish any questions. So okay. The over. I, I, mean, I, I haven't. It's just I've asked you the same no, question. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. You don't really want to do an interview. That's fine. I don't. I don't agree with that. But that's that's fine. Well, I actually really much do. Think okay. That's up to you. Really care about. A politician in Britain would never do that. All right. All right. Okay. Hold on now. This is not a defense of... Yes, they would. What the fuck? They'd be even worse. Get out of here. That's crazy. I don't agree with Owen on that one. Mm, not sure about that. Let's yes. do a debrief. Yeah. Have you talked to a fucking... I know he talks to Labor Party representatives regularly. They do do that. Okay. I would say... I think the problem for a lot of people who are obviously very uh -huh. angry about Gaza yeah. is... Basically, the position of a lot of people saying just vote for Kamala Harris is trust me, bro. That's the problem. I think there's a little bit of that. At this point, I think Harris has said very little about it. You know what I mean? It doesn't come up in her speech. It's not like a central theme of hers as a candidate, uh, which I happen to think is a mistake. And you, you can disagree and will dis may disagree. Harris's statements have, I think, been appreciably more... Um, sympathetic to the cause of the Palestinian people. That does not mean that she has said concrete things that um, that people should take away as assurances. What is the basis in actual reality, not hope, yeah. that Kamala Harris would be significantly different on this issue? I think that's, I, I would tell you that I don't know. So, I'm in my natural habitat, a Trump rally in Milwaukee. I am losing my Trump rally virginity. I'm a little bit nervous, not gonna lie. I want to know what makes people here tick. I want to know, do they buy into the things that Trump's saying or do they not really take it very seriously? I want to know how diverse they are in terms of the way they think. We're going to learn a lot, I think. Why are you pro-Trump? Donald Trump's the king, man. The king. The king. He's the king. See, this is, okay, I like this. I like this video because it does show the fucking, like, how the delusions work, okay? You talk to a libbed up, Democratic Party supporter, you talk to a libbed up uh, DSA person, and they're both like engaging in different levels of copium on a direct issue, right? They are denying reality, okay? They're denying reality themselves, as we saw. But then you go up to a guy who's like a Trump supporter, and he's like, I fucking, he's my goat. He's fucking the best. He loves me. He cares about me. He loves me, he cares about me, elections stolen by Mexicans, he's going to kill them all, and I love that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, look, there's, there is a difference. Yeah, it, it's like copium versus schizophrenia, for sure. Next he, monarch, next monarch. Do you actually want him to be the monarch? Absolutely. Well, and then just have no democracy? Trump's he's God. God. No, he's you don't America, think that. America, bro. America. Right. You think so? Would you like him to just get rid of voting? Or this is great. This is yeah, crazy. that's what he wants. Yeah, that's what the people want. Look around, man. What? No more voting. No more so, voting. Are yeah. oh, you leaving? America, America. democracy. Right, you know, they, a fan. Say your piece. Th if they don't act in the people's interest, it doesn't uh, matter who you elect. So would you want it to be? Yeah, yeah. Go vote. Um, you know, talk to your parents and um. You know, be happy. Okay. And spam your kick W's. That's good. That was pretty good, man. Okay. My Uber's here in one minute. We're watching real Americans right now. What is this? Talk about why we're watching a British man. Lame.
talking to real patriotic Americans at a Trump rally, mm. and we're we're listening to um, what they have to say about why they love Donald Trump. We were Democrats, and the country's going to such shit, man. So you're going from dem a Democrat to Trump being a dictator? Look at Putler in Russia. Do you, is that what you want, Putin? That was Putin. <laughs> Putler. They're saying he's Hitler, like Putin Hitler. Oh, that's Putler? Cool. Yeah. Putler. Putin. Putler. <laughs> <laughs> you can call him Putler. Putler. It sounds more cute. Do you, would you like him to be like Vladimir Putin? Oh, absolutely. He but, acts in the people's interest. Um... I think Trump's a good guy. Um, obviously, he had his past and you know, you know, bad stuff, but uh, there's like a lot of sexual misdemeanors. This is the first time I've seen like a normal-looking Republican in one of these videos. There's that kind of thing. I agree, but I think um, personally, I think he's better for the whole country than Kamala. I, I truly believe that. Like he's a human. He's quite like a, human, not a politician that lies. Constantly. I don't think he lies quite a lot. Come on. Absolutely not. Oh, come on now. These were my viewers on Rumble. Oh my god, I know. It was these guys. Probably not these guys. Probably the first guy who was like, Trump is God. This person seems a little bit more normal. I uh, really wish you saw the ads that were on Rumble. Oh, I see them all the time because I, I watch almost exclusively right-wing content. Mm. So it's like, uh, they have like Iraqi dinar, silver, ivermectin, uh, Trump coin, shit like that. Trump crypto. Trump crypto. But, but now, they've, now they have dog food. That's awesome. That's their big thing now. They're, they're trying to sell dog food. Yeah. Michael Pillow. Don't Mr. know what that Pillow. is. My Pillow. What's that? You've never seen that? I thought you were going to say something else. No, My Pillow. I don't know what that is. <sighs> There's another thing. Is the, is a, they sell gold. No. And I don't vote gold for a person. A I vote for their policy. Because I think he's the best president that has ever existed. He does the things that he's... That, he says he's going to. I think a lot of people turn his words around. He's not a racist. He's not a sexist. No, no, the Muslim ban, which he, I mean, he first who came up with it. He's the best president ever. In America, mm -hmm. one of the best ones, probably FDR, and he did a fuck ton that was not great either. Why was he the best? Um, New Deal. Like, everything that you take for granted in terms of, like, you've traveled outside of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. When you... And I, I grew up in Turkey, so I, I know this from personal experience. Like, there is an imbalance of, of, like, infrastructure. Whereas most places you go to in the United States of America, you got, like, decent access to roads, like, decent infrastructure, like, electricity. A lot of that is now going to shit in America, but, like, the, the like, base level of, of infrastructure is, is solid in the United States of America. And I think that was... Part of the reason why uh, America was so prosperous mm. for a very long time. And all of that could be attributed to FDR uh, and the New Deal. It was a complete revitalization of the United States of America. A massive jobs project, uh, massive, massive infrastructure spending. He was, uh, you know, he was profoundly successful. Do you think you can name every president? No, absolutely not. Also, Social Security. We're, but we, we're not getting that, right? No. I, I, no, no. We're, I mean, who knows? But yeah, I, I, I mean, it's not like going away, if that's what you think. I thought people say that my, our parents are like the last people that get Social Security. No, that's... Eh, it depends, but probably not. Mm. It, like, I can't, I can't say that, you know, Republicans don't do some fuck shit. It's, I, I would rate that as kind of true. Not like definitely true because people talk about like uh social security becoming potentially insolvent but like they also do not factor in that the american government could just like dump money into it print money for it specifically and they also don't factor in the reality that uh we could increase uh the the social security spending cap because right now a person that makes 10 million dollars a year and a person who makes one hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year pay the same amount of money. It's just like tapped out at 170 grand. Once you get up to $170,000, the social security spending that you're, it, it, that you're giving mm -hmm. is the exact same as someone who's making uh, tens of millions of dollars a year. So we could actually immediately uh, put in a lot more money into social security if we were to increase the, uh, if we were to just abolish the cap. I think that's a bad idea. You, okay, you're just trying to be a troll. But- 
Do you understand what I mean? No, I get it. You can just but, print more but money. Overall, but overall, you can also just like print more money as well. So like the idea that Social Security is going to go insolvent is, uh, is I think, uh, a silly thing that Republicans say specifically because they... Uh, specifically because they do want to destroy Social Security. I never knew. Yeah. Any other questions? No. I, I mean, I don't know anything, so I'm just confused on everything. Yeah, I understand that. Many Americans are. That's why I'm here. That's why I do what I do. That and because I love terrorism. <laughs> and my Uber's here. <laughs> All right. Bye, Miss Give. You will only get about 85% of it, but Bernie has the bill to fix it, but it did not pass. Okay. Running the first time for president. Oh, I guess I guess I'm not that educated on it then. Yes, sir. But, okay, thank you. We're gonna it was amazing. Amazing. Yes. That was very cute. What was so amazing? Donald Trump himself. Yeah. I love that man. So when so, so <laughs> I don't think Social Security is a good thing. We have 401ks now, which have a much better rate of return. Social Security is really bad and not pro-choice. Shut the fuck up. We're no longer running top of the hour ad breaks. If you want to fucking debate me at the top of the hour. You should come up with a convincing thing for me to read that also ends with you urging people to subscribe to continue supporting this channel for $6 or for free with a Twitch Prime or maybe even by getting gifted a sub. There are many emotes that you can use all around the platform and also beyond that, uh, you will, if I do decide to run ads in the future, you'll be able to avoid those ads in the future. <sighs> Someone I spoke to was a bit bored. They thought he was rambling a bit. No. Never. No, New tripods just came in to swap the main camera for a better mount. Oh, hell yeah, D-Machine. Uh, let's go. Okay, no, I just feel like he's going to make, um, for one, our economy very good again. Also, we need somebody that's going to be dominant to run our country. Oh, so you think he's quite macho? Yes. Um, President Trump is well-spoken. It's a diverse group uh, within the uh, arena. He talks about things I think that all humans want. You know, they want love, they want peace, they want... <laughs> what? Dude, sometimes I listen to fucking Trump supporters and I'm like, what are you... Like, are you going to a different rally? I've seen most of Trump's rallies, okay? I feel like I've watched more Trump rallies than the average Trump supporter. And I have never heard him say any of those fucking things, dog. Like... Where are you getting this? Are we watching the same rally? Evil Gavin Newsom? Okay, Gavin Newsom is evil Gavin Newsom. You know, security I gotta for pee. the family. Um, he wants but to be included. But not Burger, thank you for the 20 And I think subs. he wants to end corruption. Um, I think he definitely can um, elaborate on his policies and everything like that. And, I don't know, he's very eloquent when he speaks. Eloquent? And, yes, very eloquent. Oh. And knowledgeable, and he covered all the bases really for everything that I believe is a conservative. So, okay. So, uh, what makes you a conservative? Define it. Basically, keeping America, America. Okay. So, end the wars, um, end inflation, all that kind of stuff. It says um, of end the wars. So, Gaza at the moment being wiped off the face of the earth with American bombs. Is he going to end that? Um, I think we're more focused on ending the war in Ukraine, um, becoming more allies with Russia, uh -huh. North Korea, and just oh. unifying NATO. So. The U.S. would become allies with Russia and North Korea. I would say we maybe not necessarily allies because I know they're not part of NATO, but they would team up with them and we could have collaboration. I never thought I'd hear an American conservative say they want to be an ally of North Korea run by the Stalinists. Well, we don't want them as an enemy, I'll tell you that much. Because <laughs> he sort of supports the American people. He supports getting rid of illegals that don't belong here. What? I mean... They're ruining our country getting our money they're taking our social security our social security is running out because we're giving it to legals we're giving legals thirty five hundred dollar debit cards it's got to come from somewhere do you think they're taking our social security and giving it to legals as well that's money that i'm depending on in four years why you know you're younger obviously younger americans a lot thank of god misgiv didn't hear that guy he would have believed him <laughs> may lynn thank you for the tank community gift to subs by the way go back there was a nato voter younger men for give american and the wars define it basis really for everything that i believe uh she said he's really eloquent which i thought was crazy he's a conservative so okay so uh, what makes you a conservative define it basically keeping america america so end the wars um and inflation all that kind of stuff in terms of end the wars so gaza at the moment being wiped off the face of the earth with american bombs is he gonna end that um i think we're more focused on ending the war in ukraine um, becoming more allies with Russia, uh -huh. North Korea, and just oh. unifying NATO. So, the U.S. would become allies with Russia and North Korea? I would say
Ryan Ruth did not die for this horse shit. Dog, Ryan Ruth is not dead. He's just in prison. Unjustifiably, am I, if I might add. They didn't kill him, man. He's alive. Dude, Donald Trump is going to unify NATO. I'm pro-NATO, and that's why I'm voting for Donald Trump. That's amazing. God, I love Americans so much. Fuck. What an incredible country this is, dude. You cannot, man, just endless fucking content. Just endless content, dude. What other country? Come on now. Just what an incredible tapestry. Bro, that Ryan Ruth line is going to get clipped. Wait, what do you mean? Clipped for what? Being correct? He is a law-abiding citizen that was exercising his Second Amendment rights. Maybe his first, too. Who knows? What do you mean? I'm on his defense team, brother. What are you talking about? I didn't realize it was illegal to be a fucking gun carrier in the state of Florida. What the fuck? Oh, I'm sorry. He was bird watching and he had his gun with him. Didn't realize that was illegal. Say, we maybe not necessarily allies because I know they're not part of NATO, but they would team up with them and we could have collaboration. I never thought I'd hear an American conservative say they want to be an ally of North Korea run by the Stalinists. Well, we don't want them as an enemy, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Because he starts, dude, the amount of play that North Korea gets for how limited their economy, their overall military power, like it will never cease to amaze me. This fucking tiny hermit nation has done so much with so little in terms of like getting like Americans should not know what North Korea is. OK, it should be like Moldova. Okay, which, by the way, shouts out to Moldova, Mama Liga. You probably need to go back to Moldova and fix it right now. It seems like there's an election coming up where you got a pro uh, pooty poo uh, guy uh, running against the pro EU guy. But like it should be like Moldova, like no one should know what North Korea is. Right. I'm sorry. They just have no fucking smoke. They have no they have no bitches. They got no smoke. They got no motion. Okay. And yet, every American's like, they're the greatest enemy of all time. Okay? They're the greatest enemy of all time. It's like, that's crazy. Like, the entire country has, the entire country has the economic power of, like, the poorest district in Alabama. And Americans are constantly thinking about North Korea. So much more than, you know, what their actual... Like, what, what amount of, like, actual military prowess they've demonstrated? It's crazy. They got aura, though. They got no bitches. That's out of pocket. Okay, fair. It's incredible, dude. Ask an average American what Moldova is. They'll be like, I don't fucking know. What is that, like, the capital of Russia? Like, ask them about North Korea. They're like, it's the greatest enemy of all time. We got to deal with them. <laughs> it's crazy. They get so much play. They get so much fucking play for how little motion they actually have. We need your Tim Pool clip. Who do you think the real greatest enemy of America is? Ukraine is the greatest enemy of mankind. <laughs> supports the American people. He supports getting rid of illegals that don't belong here. Well, I mean, they're ruining our country, getting our money. They're taking our social security. Our social security is running out because we're giving it to illegals. We're giving illegals thirty-five hundred dollar debit cards. It's got to come from somewhere. They're taking problem? our social security and giving it to illegals as well. That's money that I'm depending on in four years. Why? You know, you're younger, obviously younger Americans. A lot of younger Americans aren't, they're going to vote Democrat. Why do you think you're kind of different from the younger Americans? Um, I think it's part to do that I didn't go to college. I don't, I'm not getting brainwashed by the institution. People oh my God, bro, what are we doing? Bro, open up the schools, open up the trade schools, make college free, please. Like, send his ass to a, a, a place where he can make a meaningful living. Oh my God. Oh my God, bro. We are done. We are literally, we are straight up destroying the next generation. We are destroying the next generation. America's for-profit attitude. America's constant profit-seeking uh, means and mechanisms have absolutely destroyed our fucking future. Holy shit. Former sub here, find it interesting you support Kamala Harris over Trump when Trump has done infinitely more unionizing efforts. Ed, what? Well, look, I mean, stuff like, for example, when he says about um, immigrants eating pets. Yeah. Do you think immigrants, I mean, they're not eating pets, though, are they? 
Uh, no, actually, some of them were actually. If you go to Haiti, Haiti uh, practices voodoo, right. and they actually do use pets in certain sacrifices and certain ceremonies. It's just there's no evidence in the United States immigrants are eating pets. Uh, that's actually not true. There is. What? Yeah. Okay. I, okay, I don't think there is. I mean, there's police report. I mean, you can hear the the actual call saying, "Hey, there's people who grabbed the geese right from the, <laughs> the geese on pets." Come on. Oh, well, pets. That's true. It was uh, using animals, not pets. I just the last thing I want to ask you because I know it's cold. You want to go home? It also, that was fake too. This is a Marianne voter. That's why he was talking about love. He's like, I'm voting for Trump because he loves crystals. He's going to legalize crystals. Crystal meth, that is. It's about Israel and Gaza at the moment. Because a lot of people think, come on, this, supporting this, you know, the hideous onslaught against the people of Gaza, that has to end. What do you think about that? I think it's very simple. If you don't understand the full problem, they go. Yeah. Can you believe these people are eating animals? <laughs> Man, it's really fucked up. It goes back hundreds of years, thousands really. But if you don't understand, you can understand this one piece. If all the Jews put their weapons down right now and said, all right, that's it, I'm getting rid of my guns, you'd have millions of dead Jews. If all the people in Palestine and all of them put their weapons down, you'd have peace. Well, in the West, ba in the West Bank, Fatah, the ruling faction, did do that. They said, that's it, we accept peace. And then Israel just carried on colonizing the West Bank and killing large numbers of Palestinians. Um, if you go back to the fact that there was peace up until they decided to come in, kidnap children. But that's not true. 240 Palestinians were killed in the West Bank uh, before 7th of October. We gotta go. Oh, uh, Uber's here. Our Uber's here. Right, there is. Take care. Okay. See you in a bit. Israel is a strong nation in, in and of itself. And I, I personally believe, you know, they've been a persecuted people for thousands of years. They have a right to defend themselves. Well, Bro, I swear to God, these people don't give a fuck about anti-semitism these are the people that literally fucking are the groipers okay but holy shit the moment that israel comes into question they become like splc adl fucking understanders they're like well there's a lot of dog whistles out there okay i should know i've been using them in my online forums like they literally only care about anti-semitism if they can cynically use it to defend israel it's so insane. It is so insane. <clears throat> you are all utterly detached from reality. You make people in Britain seem engaged with the world. Oh my God. Oh my God. You're right. This guy just fucking destroyed us in America. Oh no. Oh no. It's, it's not wrong. Oh my God. The country that did Brexit. Okay, but it's content. Also, you guys literally follow our lines. So yeah, have fun with the reform party, bitch. <laughs> you know? Not here in Liverpool. It's like, it's like England is literally following America's notes. Oh, it's so bad. Everything is so bad. Holy shit. The, the fucking, the new Labour Party is so ass. Also, England created Israel, so you're responsible for that. Erm, um, that was a Glaswegian accent. Liverpool? Liverpool. I'm not a Tory. I'm, fr I'm a Scouser lad. I'm not a Tory. I'm from Liverpool. Come on. You got to give that to me. That was pretty good. That was not Glaswegian. <sighs> was that bad? Is it bad? I feel like it's not that bad. Well, I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. Jew Jewish people have been persecuted for, for so long and deserve security. The Palestinian people also deserve security, surely. Right. Um, I mean, I do believe that they uh, have a right to also be a nation. Um, but they've been back and forth with the... You know, that's pretty cool that his position is identical to Kamala Harris. <laughs> He's like, uh, I'm in favor of a two state solution and I'm working tirelessly around the clock to achieve it. OK, just like Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are. You didn't even do a real accent. That was like some Game of Thrones voice. That's quite literally what the Scouser accent sounds like. Oh, like. Uh, Israel for a while now. I mean, they've they haven't been able to coexist with them. Well, it's just because a lot they were kicked out of their land, so right. they did. I mean, if you were kicked out of your land, you probably wouldn't be very happy about it. Like age range, there's a lot of Republicans like this out there, and as far as I have seen so far, by the way, even including but not limited to Jewish campaign staffers like the the one guy from the Ron DeSantis campaign, they are all Nazis. Okay, remember the guy that got fired from the Ron DeSantis campaign for doing a like you know, Nazi meme edits to Ron DeSantis' like campaign material. That guy was Jewish. Every single Republican staffer under the age, 
every single Republican staffer under the age of like 25 is just straight up a groiper. Straight up. Isn't that crazy? Like, how do you, how do you become a Jewish groiper, dude? I mean, I guess someone should ask Benjamin Netanyahu's son, Yair Netanyahu, because he also is a Jewish groiper. But it's like weird. It's so, it's so weird. Names one guy must mean they all are. No, I'm saying that, yes, every single person who is a Republican staffer under the age of 25 is like unimaginably groiped up. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. fucking lutely I mean, if you want I'm to I'm just talk giving about, you one very prominent example of it. Like back in... They're all in fucking group chats with J.D. Vance. What does that word mean? Groipers are... Oh, God. If you don't know what it is, it's probably better that you don't know, but it's like an extremely online way of referring to dudes who spend all their fucking time in 4chan poll which is a nazi infested uh online forum where you can have some semblance of anonymity and uh well i guess now you don't really need to be on 4chan poll i think you could just be on twitter pretty openly or inside of destiny's community pretty openly <laughs> but yeah that's what we call groipers named after like a specific type of like Pepe the Frog. Yeah, this is it. Groiper, sometimes called the Groiper Army, a group of alt-right and white supremacist activists, provocateurs, and internet trolls. They have attempted to introduce... Groiper, sometimes called the Groiper Army, a group of alt-right and white supremacist activists, provocateurs, and internet trolls. They have attempted to introduce alt-right politics in the mainstream conservatism in the United States, participate in the January 6th United States Capitol attack, and protest leading up to it, and hold extremist views. Yes, they do call themselves Groipers. Divorce Sally will take chicken and waffle take you out to get chicken and waffles if you're one of them. Yeah. If you're the top dog, if you're the number one groiper. Anyway. I wish I could unlearn this. Well, now you did. Now you learned it. In the nineteen eighties, nineteen nineties when they were doing the bus bombings, you know, going into Israel. Well, I mean yeah. Why come no SNL? Afraid your commie fans won't laugh at Kamala joke? Just curious. Also, Chappelle did great. Loved her country song. Didn't think there was gay phobic about it. But I guess just more proof lefties are too sensitive. I like that. Didn't Divorcelli take credit for revitalizing Fuentes? I mean, I don't know if he still takes credit for it, but he definitely did do that. Um, he brought him on the fucking podcast circuit and shit as his friend, as his little Nazi friend. Um, I like that there, there are chatters. There are chatters right now demanding SNL. What has happened to this fucking community? Yeah, he banned his community members for calling Fuentes a Nazi, uh, directly, directly argued, directly argued against them for being like, no, that's a Nazi, man. That's like an actual neo-Nazi. And he was like, uh, um, I wouldn't call him a Nazi. I mean, we could say, you know, 15,000 Palestinians were killed by, in 1948 and then were repeatedly killed in other huge military onslaughts and attacks by Israel. Right. Hmm. Um, I'm not really sure how to respond to that. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't justify ever terrorism or attacks on civilians, but the vast majority of civilians have been killed by the Israeli state. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. I mean, I'm not sure how to respond to that. I know, like, Netanyahu probably hasn't. Uh, I need to get back, man. That's what I do. That's what I do. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. This ran, is Trump. He ran out of dialogue options. Trump and Vance, I painted. Ah, on single grains of rice. So you have. Yes. Wow. How long did that take you? That's four hours last night for Vance and four or five hours for Trump. If he loses, do you think he'll accept it? Because last time he didn't. Truthfully, uh, I think any American election um, in terms of absentee ballots are probably not the greatest degree of truth. I think if he does lose he might not accept it which i think is not correct <laughs> someone said bro is micro dick riding <laughs> that's awesome if he loses do you think he's gonna accept the result it's a seriously loaded question not really he, he might lose lose according to who the, the votes cast the votes are not a person i'm tired of all these fucking illegal immigrants taking our fucking jobs see kamala harris and the democrats I bring it like that guy sounds so insane. I that's like me LARPing as a conservative. No, oh, they're tired of all these fucking illegal immigrants taking our jobs. That's crazy. They've just become the meme. And all these illegal aliens and to vote for them. 
Is that true? Because, I mean, if you're an undocumented migrant, you don't have the right to vote. Yeah, but how come they're suing the, the states to keep them on the voting rolls? So they come but from, do your... it legally. Do it legally. Okay. You become a criminal the second you cross the border illegally. You are now a criminal. You broke the law. You should not be allowed to do that. Why do we have laws if nobody's going to follow them? I mean... Well, a real law and order candidate. Wonder who she's voting for. If we're going to go down that path, I mean, Donald, you're voting for Donald Trump. He's a lawbreaker. Um, go he's, convicted, he's convicted for breaking the law. <laughs> yeah, but go look at back at the results of some of that stuff and refresh yourself on it before you just go, well, he's a convicted I'm, not, I'm just saying, he yeah, was found to have broken the law. It's such a bait and hook kind of situation, though. I don't okay. care that it's Donald Trump. I want his policies and the people he's bringing in I know, with... I know. It's just he specifically was saying undocumented migrants had broken... No, they were... I said illegal Okay, you s- undocumented I know, but you migrants. said they broke the law. Because you said they did. I, okay, and you're saying that, for you, is clearly the big, big problem. So I just said that Donald Trump's done the same thing. By that definition. Has Donald Trump come in and killed people or stolen things or been part of a Venezuelan gang but and the vast ma- all these apartments? It doesn't matter about the vast majority. Wait, what? Yeah, uh, no. First of all, first of all, Donald Trump has broken the law, yes, many times over. And secondly, including but not limited to rape, at least in a civil court, he was found guilty of, of uh, doing that. But also... I mean, Donald Trump is is actively in a court case for causing an insurrection, trying to steal the election, change the outcomes of the election. Donald Trump is a convicted felon. He has killed plenty of people as the American president. That much I don't think they give a shit about. Meanwhile, the people that she's talking about, the overwhelming majority of them have done none of the things that she is attributing to them in terms of the crimes that they've committed. Majority. One is, majority. Yeah, One is too many. Mo- One is, is too many. One is. Isn't that mostly many. Americans killing other Americans with guns? Because of your gun laws. But how many people die in car accidents every year? Should we ban cars? How, how's the election going? Elections going fantastic. We're actually up uh, in all seven swing states. It's going to be a fantastic landslide. Let me tell you. I believe we're at the early stages of World War Three. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's the most pressing issue. We need to stop that idea. Nuclear superpowers who aren't communicating with each other as they once did, you know, and diplomacy, you know. I mean, you got clowns like Anthony Blinken and Jake Sullivan, the deep state, you know, running the country. The whole CIA endorses Kamala Harris. Hope is, you know, to get away from the deep state, you know, and the court, the industrial military complex. I got three kids, you know, I'm a family man and I want my kids to be able to play in their own sports and not have men go against my daughter and I as a shake sharp. Who shit his pants who shit my pants? It's trans people. Yeah, well you, what, you don't like trans people. Well everyone can do what they want, but don't push it on my my kid. Dude, look, see? I'm telling you, even the most aggressive transphobe is like, ah, you know, I don't really hate trans people. I'm telling you, man. Telling you, these fucking Republicans are dumb as shit for constantly running trans panic shit. They're just like, eh, I don't want, eh, I don't care. If they want to do uh, trans stuff, it's fine. I just don't like it being pushed on my children. Kids, you know. Do you think they really are? I mean, a lot of younger people have trans friends. Not where I live. No? No. It's not where I live. We're all, I mean, we're all... trans pe- some people are just born, I, I mean, surely we just accept people based on who they are. And young trans people, they're bullied, they're victimized, their lives can be hard, but then there are other young people who stand by them. Uh, I don't think my kids would stand by that because they know who they are. They know how they were born. They know that there's two genders. So and what if if what if your children became friends with a young trans person, what would you say to them? Uh, it would be a hard pill to swallow, but I can't let my kids hate somebody for being who they want to be. Dude. Hasan Abi vindicated. 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 I'm telling you, these are the most transphobic people in the country. Okay, and even then, even then, even then, they are so at odds with Matt Walsh. Okay, backhanded trans ally. No, dude, that's just the. That is like the most average transphobic position. What you see online is at odds with what is happening in reality i will always repeat that okay what you see online is not the same at what's what is happening in 
reality. There is a way to figure some of this stuff out. And that way is by looking at polling on the matter. I would go so far as say England is probably more overtly transphobic than the United States of America is. Yeah. But at the same token, it's, I don't think it's morally right. Do you think Donald Trump lives a Christian lifestyle? I mean, look at his history of sexual misconduct. He's not like, he's not screaming Christianity to me. Well, it's, it's funny because I'll... Pol Russia apologies, womp womp. Me? This is not the most uh, transphobic type of guy. No, 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 no. Of course, Matt Walsh exists. I'm saying that in terms of like normal people and the way they fucking talk about trans people, it is not a mover and a shaker. Okay. They're like, oh, there's only two genders, don't you? Two genders, don't you know? But also, they're like, I don't really care about what trans people do. This is the average transphobic person. It is directly at odds with the way that the Republican Party communicates uh, on this issue. All right. Transphobes in real life do not base their life off of that. Exactly. Bro will catch the fucking bait every day and ignore actual questions. What is the actual question? Read my message, jerk. Hanson, I must be confused. Trump ain't no felon. Nah, he didn't do that shit. He's been exonerated. So I got this weird idea in my head. Is it Israel only wanting Jews in Israel the same way certain individuals only wanted people with blonde and blue-eyed people in his country? What? Are you asking if Zionism is, is fascistic in the same way that Nazism is? The answer is yes. But Trump is also a convicted felon. I don't know why you're saying he's not. Politicians want to scream that they're religious and so on and so forth. And every single one of them has done crazy things. I mean... Look at Kamala, her way up there, you know, when you look in California, how she got her foot in the door. But, but we're talking about really serious sexual misconduct and the way he talks about women. I mean, do you think Jesus Christ would approve of that? Well, you know, we, we all look for forgiveness. I mean, that's what the good Lord has preached. You know, you people have make mistakes. A lot of people do. Not everyone's perfect. Do you think he sought redemption, forgiveness? Yeah. Most definitely. I think so. I've never heard him apologize for that. Well, um, his actions speak louder than words, though. I mean, he's, he's what he's doing for huh? the, our, the next generations, for the future of America. How does know. that make up for sexual misconduct? <laughs> Why is the Brit dressed like he's going hiking? He's in Hogland, man. You never know. He, I, I don't see... This has all been lies made up by the media, though, this sex, sexual misconduct. They've all been divorced. They've all been married. Um, so you don't believe the women who come forward to talk about their experiences? No, I don't believe any of it. Right. <laughs> because people only do that when they feel it's time to attack someone when they want to run for political But what he said, office. for example, grab women by the pussy. Well, that's locker room talk. You've, never, that... you've never talked that kind of nonsense to your friends, you know, no. ever? Well, sorry. I mean, <laughs> it's, as a Christ... I'm, a, I'm a man, so, you know. He's like, sorry, you haven't lived. <laughs> It's so much more fun when you talk like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you said you're a Christian and you, you talked about how God disapproves of trans people. And then you're saying it's locker room talk, talk about grabbing women by their genitalia. But it, he didn't actually do it, though. It's just talk. Well, you know. he's accused of doing that. Well, there's people that have been accused of all kinds of things. I know, but, he, sa but he said it on camera. He said, sorry, he said it on a recording that that's what he did. Yeah, a, a locker room recording behind his back when he's talking to the guys. Yes. All right. You know, people taste stuff that they don't necessarily mean, they, and then gets taken out of context oh. many, many times. You know, and that's just it's a crazy, crazy world we live in. Everyone's looking to attack somebody for some reason. I don't know why. Why? Just lastly, is this very Christian either? I mean, just no, kind not of. No, no, no. Oh, it's just you talked about. Okay, so it seems a bit like Christianity for when it's not. Not accepting trans people, but that's it. I didn't. I didn't purchase the shirt. Right. I got it from my sister-in-law. <laughs> Great. Oh, so then it's fine. If your sister-in-law got you a pentagram on a fucking T-shirt, would you wear it? Is the question I would ask him to just see. Great purchase. Uh, he's been known to crap his pants. Um, blimey! I didn't even know where to go with that. I think Donald Trump, in terms of Christianity, given his history, I mean, does he scream Christian devout person? I mean, not to me, but that's not that's not personally the reason why I'm voting for him. I'm voting for him because of his foreign policy, and because of just the way the econ the economy um, has been with him. You know, I'm going into sales, car sales specifically, and he's gonna he's gonna fix the automotive industry, I believe. Uh, what, what is, is Kamala Harris a communist? Yes. What makes her a communist? Uh, she she <laughs> she seems to enjoy being a chameleon. The way to get to communism is. Damn, 
damn, brother, you fold is so quick. Brother is paper, dude. Folded like a napkin. God so damn. Sh- it's like, what What makes her a communist? Uh, um, she's a chameleon. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, at least learn a couple talking points, man. God damn. The third Kelsey brother. Don't you dare disrespect the Kelsey's like that. Socialism. Okay. And she's she's a huge advocate for socialism. She, and what she's is the point of communism? But she never comes out fully to say she's for communism. But I like that he's just came out with it, and then is just like he's like fantasizing about an, a, a totally separate reality. Like yeah, she's always talking about how she's pro socialism, but actually the reality is she's pro communism. She's just too afraid to admit it. Let's just make up more shit. Fuck it. YOLO. Yeah. But her, her what is socialism? Socialism. It's basically where the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. That is not what I was expecting. I mean, people say that's capitalism. Under capitalism, you've got the rich. They make money from working people and they struggle as a result. Isn't that that's capitalism? No. No. Nope. It's a free market. A okay. free market is capitalism. And socialism is the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. Yep, because of dictator. Rama. Open the schools! Except this is what they teach in the schools too. So honestly, close the schools. Close it. I'm back to child left behind. I'm back to believing that we need to close the schools actually. Never mind. We were wrong to open them because this is what they're teaching the children. At what point does this become ableism? I, well, we are way past that point, brother. Okay. Leaderships because of, because of the government control. It's a large government, basically. Woo. Well, that's quite the experience. What I would say is this is the American manifestation of a phenomenon sweeping the Western world and beyond. And it is a far right authoritarian movement which draws on different wells of support. Some from the disenchanted, some who are just the racists and paranoid and all the rest of it. But they could win. You laugh, but this man can tell you the best tasting three crayon combo. True. And they're a different movement than last time. They're more extreme, they're more angry and more vengeful. How that plays out if they win or if they lose, that's what we're going to find out. But I would say, and this is the danger, they're more enthusiastic about their candidate than on the Democratic side. And Kamal Harris could still win, but that still has implications for what happens next. Now, we've gone to this great state of Wisconsin. Next, Michigan, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, states which help determine the result of are you worried about election day results uh, and, and the potential violence? Yes. Oh. Uh, June DMR poll has Trump plus 18 versus Biden in Iowa. Steve Kornacki, July 29th, Iowa's six-week abortion ban goes into effect with intense controversy and news coverage. September 22nd, DMR shows 59 to 37% opposition to the new abortion law, 69% among women. Also shows, uh, shows Trump lead over Harris at just 47-43. All false saturation and spending and campaigning on abortion by damn candidates in the state's two toss-up house races. Now, final DMR poll is massive gender gap, pushing Harris into 47-44 lead. Raises question on how much of what the DMR poll finds is state-specific versus also playing out in Wisconsin and elsewhere. I think in states where um, abortion is a top priority, specifically against the wishes of the population, this will be an issue. Ballot measures will also be helpful in driving turnout. But I guess it depends on how hard they uh, how hard they push that. If if the cells are polls right this time, this polling equivalent is the Battlestar Galactica being the only ship in the fleet to not use super new fancy technology, and that's being exactly why the only ship to survive the initial attack of the Cyclones. Okay, dude, never send me stuff like that again. Okay, um, brighter future. Kamala Harris is closing ad. We're gonna watch this, and then we're gonna go to SNL Lib Watch. Okay. <laughs> How you doing? Good. It'll bring everybody back together. And that's exactly how I feel. That's what I'm doing, man. Okay, you so, have to stay in touch with me, okay? I would I'm love very to. serious about I'd that. Love to. Okay. Throughout this campaign, I've seen the best of America, and I've seen what is holding you back and way. And I've seen the worst of America, and the worst of America is the Republican Party. And then they start showing like the dumbest fucking hogs. You down. High cost. Fundamental rights <laughs> taken away and politics that have driven fear and division. You deserve better. As president, I'll bring a new generation of leadership. I'll take on price gouging and bring down the cost of groceries and housing and prescriptions. I'll fight for your freedom to make your own choices, and I will protect your health care and your benefits. In each other, we believe in our country. We're not falling for these folks who are trying to divide us. 
together we'll build a brighter future for our nation where we stand for freedom we stand for justice we stand for the dignity of work we haven't yet quite reached all of those ideals but we will die trying because we love our country now the baton is in our hands i pledge to seek common sense solutions to make your life better and i pledge to be a president for all americans now i'm asking for your vote because as president i will get up every i hate this like in terms of a closing message like oh i'm gonna be the president for all americans is like just say what you're gonna do man just say what you're gonna fucking do like unification only matters if you explain how you're gonna unify the country or rather what you're gonna do once the country is unified oh this is like this this feels like it's written to be pol devoid of policy because you're so desperate to communicate that you want unification one of the most prescient narratives throughout kamala harris's otherwise truncated campaign has been that people don't know who she is and people don't know what she stands for. What that means is people don't know what her policies are, what she's going to do. And she has just looked at all of that and been like, honestly, you're right. Yes. <laughs> That's all she said. Dog, you are being harsh. It's been 90 days. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's weird because every single day I've gone live and communicated what she should have said in every single instance instead of what she has said. So, you know, you could do that. Every day and fight for the American people. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, well, we're back. All right, we're going to skip this. Wait, on Gaza. Back in Michigan and um, started the day in a really wonderful, um, joyful way. And yesterday, of course, we were in five states. And today uh, I will be spending the rest of the day here on the ground in Michigan talking with voters and reminding them of the stakes and reminding them of the power they possess to actually determine the outcome of this election and the direction of our country. What is happening? So I'm very much looking forward to today and the next Frames are dropping. 48 hours. Mini F, Mini F, hold, hold, hold the line. Hold the fucking line. Murat! Dude, we gotta, we're, we need a redundancy, dude. I'm effing, uh, I'm, I'm dropping frame rates. How quickly can we get a redundancy up and ready to go? No, no, not not with a cell phone. I'm saying like, okay, we're back, we're back, we're back. Holy fuck! If this shit happens during election, I'm gonna fucking Brian kill me, dude. What is Miz doing to your Wi-Fi? Downloading pornographic material? Duh. No, dude. He's uh, he's not even here. He left. Todd, any questions? Vice President, do you have any closing argument for Arab American voters and voters in the Muslim community as to why they should vote for you in this election? Sure, absolutely. Well, first of all, I'm honored to have the support of many Arab American leaders who represent the interest and the, the, the concerns. What the fuck? This feels like a photo catfish would use and I would believe them. Am I ovulating? Sorry. Damn, dude, y'all need to chill out. It's also of the Arab American community. Um, but I also know well enough to know it is not a monolith. There are many issues um, that are the issues that all Americans face. And then, of course, some that are specific to what is happening in Gaza. And on the subject of Gaza, um, I have been very clear. The level of death of innocent Palestinians is unconscionable. We need to end the war, and we need to get the hostages out. And as President of the United States, I will do everything in my power to achieve that end and a two-state solution where Palestinians will have the right to self-determination and security and, um, and stability in the region. But again, the issues are as varied as they are for any voter. It includes that, um, but it is also about bringing down the cost of living. It is about um, supporting small businesses in the community. It is about bringing down the cost of housing, groceries, extending the child tax credit, these are issues that resonate in that community as well as every other community. And I will continue to speak to members of that community. And you know what's really funny? She should have been saying this uh, whenever people cynically say, what do you have to say to the Jewish community that feel like uh, you're not, like after communicating a, a, a separate message on the issue of Israel, Palestine, uh, separating herself from the Biden campaign, this is what she should have been saying about 
the the supposed Jewish voters who might not vote for her. Because, like, it makes more sense in that situation, given the power dynamic and also given uh, the the fact that, like, obviously Jewish Americans do not exclusively care about fucking Israel. So she cooked on the Jewish vote. Now, isn't that GG's? No, fuck no. What are you talking about? Cooked on the Jewish vote. No. That's the bullshit that Democrats fucking lied to you about. Oh, if Kamala Harris, like, convincingly speaks on the humanity of the victims of Israel, then they'll... Um, then all the Jewish Americans will go, oh my God, she's an anti-Semite and not vote for her. Of course that's not the case. Whether two days out or 200 days out, it doesn't matter. Of course that's not, that was never going to happen. That was just a lie that stupid Democratic media people told Democrats to try and justify why Kamala Harris had the exact same un, uh, unpopular position as Joe Biden on the issue. And um, to ask for their vote, which I hope I earn. Alex. Thank you. Alex. Mm -hmm. Alex. Oh, oh, I'm Lauren. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Last name or someone else. Oh, keep going. You know, it's 48 hours out. Everyone's a little tired. Who was with us last night? <laughs> You're right. A few sleep deprived. Um, Please. Simply, how are you feeling, and have you submitted your ballot? I am feeling great. I am looking forward to these next 48 hours to continue to talk with the voters and and talk about the stakes and. Um, and talk about the future of our country, which I think is bright when we are working with the same spirit of building community, building coalitions, and building the strength of our economy and our country. Um, I have. I actually just filled out my mail-in ballot, so I have voted. Darlene. Who'd you vote for? She's riding with Biden. Madam Pre Vice President, um, have you returned the ballot to California, and how did you vote on Prop 36? So I have, my ballot is on its way to California, and I'm going to trust the system that it will arrive there. Um, and I am not going to talk about the vote on that because, I, honestly, it's the Sunday before the election, and I don't intend to create a, an endorsement one way or another around it. So, but I did vote. Nandita. Uh, thank you. Madam uh, Vice President, Donald Trump uh, prematurely claimed victory in 2020. Just his comments in the past few days seem to suggest, you know, that he's thinking about it. How will you and your campaign respond if he does the same thing again? So here we are on the Sunday before the election, and I would ask, in particular, people who have not yet voted to not fall for his tactic, which I think includes um, suggesting to people that if they vote, their vote won't matter suggesting to people that somehow the integrity of our voting system is not intact so that they don't vote. And again, I think that it is a, a tactic. It is meant to distract from the fact that we have and support free and fair elections in our country. We did in 2020. Someone who's brave enough needs to go up to her and be like, Kamala Harris, Madam Vice President, what is your answer to this? My vote for Trump. Oh my God, Chad's going crazy. <laughs> we had to do a vote for Trump break, you know. Trump calls himself father of fertilization in North Carolina rally. Whoa, he Fucking, I think the cops took the squirrel away from him, and then they euthanized the squirrel. Did Asman do a video on the squirrel? Shut the fuck up. No, stop. Asman Gold did a video on the peanut. I'm Googling it. I don't believe you. That sounds like a bit. That sounds like a bit. He's that tapped in. Oh my God. Peanut the squirrel situation is sad. Asmin Gold, Peanut this the squirrel is killed by Democrats. Uh, yeah, for sure. Peanut the squirrel, beloved pet and internet sensation, euthanized after being <sighs> seized by the New York State. Oh my God. Asmongold reacts to Peanut the Squirrel killed slash J.D. Vance response to the Peanut the Squirrel controversy. New York will allow people to commit violent crimes, but an innocent man like this is crucified. What a disgrace. 
New York would rather go after an innocent animal than actual criminals. This is literally the first time I'm hearing about this. Okay. Yeah, full story. He had an illegal pet squirrel he just took from the wild as well as a raccoon and posted it online with dipshits. Someone tipped off the officials. They went to confiscate. And when they did, the squirrel bit. They had to kill the squirrel and the raccoon because he bit and he needed to be tested for rabies because New York currently has a problem with rabid raccoons. Now conservatives are acting like it's a government overreach on your pets. This is the co-worker story of the day, perhaps of the week. Moist peanut the squirrel situation is sad. First thing I saw this morning when... I think it's funny that, like, everything has to be political. Okay, like everything has to be political. You can't just look at a situation and be like, yeah, it's kind of fucked up that the state just like took this dude's squirrel. He wouldn't hurt nobody. Like, it's like the Democrats killed the squirrel. And then J.D. Vance is doing a Sorry, fucking about, statement on it. About peanut the squirrel. We were on the way down here from Cincinnati. I, I'm, uh, dude, put me down like peanut the squirrel, dude. Holy shit. What is the state of affairs in this fucking goddamn nation? What the fuck is going on, dude? Like, I can't believe I'm saying the like, oh, you got to make everything political. But like, this is one of those situations where it's like, how is this on partisan lines? And of course, predictably, Ro Khanna has also commented on it because why the fuck not vote for peanut for liberty, for freedom? Oh, my God. Judiciary, House Judiciary, GOP justice for peanut. Yeah, wild card Rokana had to make a statement clarifying his position. China doesn't have to do anything to overtake us. We are collapsing ourselves in real time. I, I don't know what to say anymore. I, Moist didn't say it was political. I'm not. I, I just think it's like funny to offer this level of coverage to it and have J.D. Vance respond to the peanut story. He was like, you know, is it really the case that the Democrats murdered the Elon Musk of squirrels? And I said, yeah, it so sounds like, have of you course. seen the videos of this squirrel? Yeah. He's like, he's a genius. So I know Don's fired up about, about peanut. I want to remind everyone that there is an ongoing act of genocide in Gaza that uh, the entirety of the American Congress is fully on board with. And not only that, but... The American Police Department executes 10,000 animals, pets, cats, dogs, uh, mostly dogs, a year. Annually, the American Police Departments all across the nation are responsible for the execution of 10,000 fucking dogs a year. Um, what is happening right now? What? Squirrel dad dick pic? Open off screen? Oh my god, he had a fucking OnlyFans? This story's only getting fucking crazier and, and crazier. What the fuck? I don't... Like, I'm, I'm against the state seizing your pet. I think it's crazy. But having this level... Having this level of, like, coverage over this... I mean, it's hard not to notice the Republican smoke for the squirrel. The squirrel story. No, the squirrel did not have an OnlyFans. The father of the squirrel had an OnlyFans. Like, the owner of the squirrel had an OnlyFans. Because Peanut is so incontrovertibly good, his killing is a Christ-like sacrifice. Humans are flawed, but this squirrel represented nothing but happiness. If you are in favor of killing Peanut, you can't be good. And if you are good, you can't stand with those who think Peanut, killing Peanut is good. I'm... What is going on? How did this turn into a conservative issue? I don't really know. Honest question, is there some point in the paint-led brain drain where these sorts of issues actually begin to hold more relevant, standing in the eyes of those people? Maybe. But that doesn't make sense for someone like Asmin to fucking uh, post about it. <laughs> and then say the Democrats killed him. Chad Benson, the army is raised, and now it's time to get revenge for Peanut the Squirrel. Hashtag Peanut the Squirrel. Hashtag Peanut. Dog, you're posting, <laughs> you're posting hashtags on, t on Twitter. In 2024, you're so cooked. Yeah, an entire house worth of electricity just for that one video. I don't know what to say anymore. I think they done did it. They done did it for me. You can't keep getting away with it. Oh, I saw this already. I saw, I see all the fucking Hasanabi thirst traps. And when I see a Hasanabi thirst talk, I like it. Okay. Ben Garrison Peanut. In the closing days of the election, more than ever, I have no absolutely idea what they're talking about. Ben Garrison, avenge me. Vote Trump. 
The squirrel isn't just a squirrel. Peanut is for everyone who has ever feared that someone more powerful than you could walk into your home and take something that you absolutely cherish away from you for absolutely no good reason with no good recourse. If this had an impact on Brian Kilmeade, no, dude, what are you fucking nuts? This is another case of like online brain shit. Yeah, dude, go, go talk to like an Iowa voter about fucking peanut, dude. Well, I was plus three for Kamala now, so they probably don't know. They were too busy watching SNL last night, living up. There is something pretty fucking insane about people who are advocating to do to real human beings what was done to Peanut. Like, literally. Like, that's one of the major policies of the Trump campaign is, is, is forcible deportations of 20 million people that they claim 20 million of them live on U.S. soil. And they're just over here fucking losing their minds over a peanut. I'm, I, I actually don't, I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm a single issue voter in PA and my focus is squirrel rights. I will not be voting for Kamala anymore. I, are we cooked? Peanut is all over the mainstream media. It's bigger than you think. I think that this is like TMZ shit. Shade Room, TMZ, Adam22, Asmongold, maybe Moist Critical. These are the outlets that are covering the peanut story. I'm pretty sure everyone else is like, deadlocked into fucking you know the election slow cook brother falling off the bone yeah speaking of fucking slow cooked the democrats instead of sending tim waltz over here to joe rogan sent literally a guy who cannot speak the democrats were like let's have a guy who famously is incapable of speech go on a three-hour podcast and of course the limited amount of speech capabilities he had, he afforded to speaking about immigration. It's a significant issue. And if I thought there was any kinds of issues, and I've been very vigilant throughout, I've been actively involved in those kinds of things, and I've never witnessed those kinds of a thing. But what do you and mean by issues? Like what kind of issues are you talking about? You're talking about people letting people in in order to get votes? Uh, well, I, I, it's not. There's not that level of kinds. I don't think there's that level of kinds of organization. Uh, but there I, is an organization that's moving these people to swing states. There's a significant number of these people that are illegal immigrants. Yeah, it's called Governor Greg Abbott. Your governor. Oh my God, Joe Rogan finally met his intellectual match. A stroke victim. He's gonna fucking destroy him in the marketplace of ideas. You know. See, yeah, they're going ban for ban, but instead of ban for ban, they're going CTE for CTE. That have made their way to swing states. And then there's been calls for amnesty. There's been calls for allowing these people to have a pathway to citizenship. This conversation is so fucking stupid because, like, number one, yeah, if you don't want immigrants that are coming into the United States of America to not have, like, democratic leanings, okay, documented or undocumented, don't be fucking racist towards them. That's number one. Number two, undocumented migrants are not able to vote regardless of the amnesty measures that are being pushed for. And last but not least, there is obviously no indication that they are going to vote for the Democratic Party, considering the fact that the demographics or destiny guys have recognized very quickly that like there's a major swing in Hispanic voters towards Donald Trump. So how the fuck does that work? This shit is all idiotic. It's pure fantasy, okay? Citizenship and allow them to vote. The fear that a lot of people have is that this is a coordinated effort to take these people that you're allowing to come into the country, then you're providing them with all sorts of services like food stamps and housing and setting them up well, you, and then you... providing a pathway to amnesty and then you would have voters that would be significantly voting towards the democrats because they're the people that enabled them to come into the country in the first place first place and provided them with those services this is a big fear that people have and that you're rigging this system and that this will turn all these states into essentially locked blue like california is well i i you know it's well uh, uh, immigration is always going to be a, a, a tough issue in our nation you know i i had uh, as a professor uh, in grad school uh alan simpson alan simpson and he uh was uh he was a united states senator he was wyoming uh and he was he was uh, he was actually a pro cho uh, choice republican dude there is no way that joe rogan's like ape like fan base watched this and were like wow this guy seems with it
Also, John Fetterman's wife is an immigrant, for the record. Just so you guys know where he's at on this fucking issue and how far he has fallen. God, his brain is so fucking fried, dude. No, uh, the senator, he was Wyoming. He was the state of Wyoming. Like, this is ridiculous, dude. You're, you're, you're straight up ex-wife, no? Oh, did they break up? I mean, how rare that would be. Well, it doesn't exist now. And he said, you are never going to have any meaningful immigration kinds of legislation. He's like, because both side, uh, that's useful for them. And it's going to be back and forth, back and forth. And he said, that I don't think they broke up. I don't know why you guys are saying years that. Ago. Useful meaning the debate, having it always uh, some yeah, yeah, a political it's, it's talking point. It's useful for one side or the other. It's, right. it's useful. And he, he, he said, I, they were never going to be. And he said that in 1999. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, I voted for, for the border deal. And that, and that went down. And and that's I mean he said that 25 years ago and that was absolutely true now that 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 they had an opportunity to do a comprehensive border uh, bipartisan and that went down because dude who the dude if I'm the Democratic Party and I hear that we are sending this fucking baboon over to Joe Rogan I'm literally jailing every person in the decision making process down to the fucking intern okay. I'm chaining them into the fucking basement until the election is over, okay? I might not even release them after the election is over. This is insane. What an insane, dumb fucking decision. Just send Bernie or Tim Waltz. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? Why are you so stupid? Who is making these decisions? This is like basically sending Joe Biden to talk to Joe Rogan, okay? What the fuck is happening? What the fuck is going on, dude? Oh my god. Why is he talking like that? He had a fucking massive stroke. It's it's a stroke that made him more right wing, too. When you said they sent someone incapable of speaking, I thought you actually meant Biden first. No, it's him. Uh, Trump um he he declared that, that that's that's a bad deal after it was negotiated with with the other side but what didn't that deal also involve amnesty and didn't that deal also involve a significant did, number yeah. of illegal yeah. aliens being allowed into the country every year i think it was two million people it, uh, so yeah. it was still the same sort of situation and their fear if trump can talk this incoherently why not featherman are we doing this are we really doing this right now this is the exact same principle that liberals had Really? You think Trump and Fetterman track in the same way? Trump rambles. This is true. Okay? He calls it weaving. And it's ridiculous. And he rambles on. He rambles and says, like, insane shit. John Fetterman, optically speaking, is infinitely worse than Donald Trump. You are doing this thing where you are denying reality in front of you. Okay? You are denying the reality that you can see and other people hear you say that and they go, oh, that's an insane person. No different than when like Trump supporters say Trump is hot. Okay. Like when, when so some psychopathic Trump supporters are running around being like, that's right. I wish he grabbed my pussy. I fucking think he's so hot. He's so powerful. He's so strong. Everybody looks at them and goes, that's insane. You're an insane person. Why are you saying that? Okay. That is what you sound like when you say, if Trump can talk this incoherently, why not Fetterman? is exactly what I talked about that these people will be moved to swing states and that that will be used to essentially rig those states and turn them blue forever these are two of the dumbest guys and the baldest guys of all time having the dumbest conversation of all time god I hate this shit so much okay we're gonna talk about and let's bring in this week we know the and winner on election night probably not but here it is News chief washington correspondent jonathan carl and our deputy political director avery harper good morning to both of you it's great to have you uh, john let's start with you first here and how the candidates are making their closing arguments and what's the pitch that trump is making here pee. in the final days it's a pretty basic one it's that things were better when he was president and they are now he, he says at the beginning of every rally now are you better off today than you were four years ago the crowd screams no now to be clear, exactly four years ago, we were in the middle of a pandemic that had shut down our economy and thousands of people were dying. That's not literally what he means, but he means pre-pandemic, we had a low inflation, economic growth. The world was not, in Trump's words, on fire. That said, Trump's own message, once he gets past that opening line, is all over the place. It's seeing Liz Cheney with guns in her face. It's 
uh, you know, the, the, the rally we saw in Madison Square Garden, talk of the enemy within. Uh, he's nowhere near as disciplined as his campaign would like to see him be. And the dark rhetoric certainly has come out more. As it could possibly be. Yes. Yeah. And, and Avery, what are we hearing from the Harris team? Well, the Harris campaign is trying to put forth a unifying message. Uh, you see her on the campaign trail reaching out to folks who disagree with her, offering a seat at the table uh, to those who disagree with her. They believe that their coalition is broad, that it's more than just Democrats, that it's independents and Republicans, too. They are also making the argument that former President Trump is a danger to democracy. That's a message they believe that crosses across party. Lines. And John, we are seeing this question all the time, every single day. Will we know who wins on election night? Well, as I look into the crystal ball here, <laughs> Gio, uh, look, I, I, there's a very good chance we will, actually, because there have been steps that have been taken since 2020 to speed up the process, especially in Pennsylvania. You remember how we were waiting oh, almost gosh. a week yeah. for the results yeah. in Pennsylvania as they counted those uh, absentee ballots? The counting is going to begin a little bit earlier than it did uh, four years ago. There aren't going to be quite as many mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania as there were last time, we don't think, um, and the process will go quicker. Uh, it all depends on whether or not any one of those key states is really so close. I mean, I was there, Florida, 2000, yep. when we had to go through recount and recount and challenges. If it's that close, then we could be in for a long haul. But, you know, if, if, if it breaks one way or the other, we could certainly know, actually, late Tuesday night. All right. And Avery, too, we've been talking about early voting. So mm -hmm. what are we learning in these early exit polls? More than 75 million people have already cast their ballots. Right. We do know that Democrats out, are outnumbering the Republicans who are coming out to cast ballots. Uh, but the electorate has been more rural, more male, more Republican. And so uh, the Trump campaign is looking at that as a good sign for them. At the same time, uh, the Democrats are saying, look, there's no sign that uh, Republicans have picked up new voters. And so they're looking at that as a good sign for uh, the Democrats side of things. Of course, it's really important to know there are limitations to what we can glean from some of these early vote numbers. A lot of those answers are going to come on election night. All right. Avery Harper, John Carl, as always, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And on Monday, GMA, Monday morning, House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries will join us live as we... Um, you're going to go over the Epstein tapes? So I watched the Epstein tapes and it was confusing because I couldn't tell if it was like actually Jeffrey Epstein... Okay talking and i couldn't tell if it was actually like why he kept referring to michael wolf here i think we have a snippet from one of the conversations that i recorded with epstein and i think this was in a restaurant in 2017. his people fight each other right uh, and then have outsiders he sort of poisons the well outside he will tell 10 people bands a scumbag and Priest is not doing a good job, and Kelly has a big mouth. And what do you think? Jamie Dimon says that you're a problem, and I shouldn't keep you. And I spoke to Carl Icahn, and Carl thinks I need a new spokesperson. So Kelly, even though I hired Kelly Ann's husband, uh, Kelly Ann is just too much of a wild boy. And then he tells Bannon, you know, I really want to keep you, but Kelly Ann hates you. I have more than dozens. I, I probably have a hundred hours of Epstein talking about the inner workings of the Trump White House and mm. about his long-standing, deep relationship with Donald Trump. Those tapes are the first time anyone I know has ever heard his voice. No, he's he's done depositions. Still feel like a twenty-seven. Yeah, I mean, it is. It does sound like him, but um, I was uh. I was a little confused about what was going on with this article. Listen to Jeffrey Epstein on I think Trump's. We have a snippet from. Uh, you keep telling he he will tell ten people Ben is a scumbag. Previous is not doing a good job. Kellyanne is a big mouth. What do you think? Here's another clip from the Daily Beast. Hey, that was close to straight. So I need the I need the um, dump. Just give me dump. There's a uh, You probably already had a scout reduction. You see that the same. Mel had more than Donald's offices, you know, he made that cook. He used to be on the phone with that fake Bianco. Mm -hmm. I also found it funny. I was sitting there listening to the guys from the Post Club, and would say, you know, yeah, he's a great guy. You know, I loved working with him. <laughs> and I sit there listening to the guys from the Post Club, and Donald would say, you know, yeah, he's a great guy. You know, I loved working with him. <laughs> and I 
sit there and this is just amazing. And he'd say, Michael, come on, let's go to the office. And he'd say, tell me, what it's like, what's it like to be there? He'd say, well, you know, do you like having sex with your wife? How often do you live? He'd say, it's great. How, seriously, Michael, how often do you have sex with you? I mean, don't you want to go? We can, you and I can go upstairs or tomorrow, come over. There's this girl's coming in from Los Angeles, part of the Hawaiian uh, all we can hope for this is that it has the same effect on the election the Comey letter did for Hillary. No, no one is fucking covering this at all. And I don't know why people aren't really covering it. But I think, like, potentially people are not really covering it because there's, like, some scrutiny surrounding it. It does sound like him, but um, I, I was a little confused. This is the tape I saw. And I don't know who the fuck, like, it's being suppressed. I don't think it's, I don't think it's being suppressed. Um... They're not covering it because fucking Bill Clinton is in Kamala's campaign. I mean, I think that's a problem. But also, he could just be lying. You know what I mean? Jeffrey Epstein could just be lying to make it seem like he has access to Donald Trump. Does that make sense? Like, to, bo uh, to boost his own self-importance. This is a recording of the podcast dude talking with Epstein while Epstein remembers Trump telling him stories about fucking his friend's wives. Yeah. And when he says Michael, I think, I think, I assume he's talking about Michael Cohen and not Trump. Tropic cuts, uh, kind of orange, so come over to your car. You're going to have a great time. I promise you, Michael, you know, it's just me and you. You're going to have a great time. What? Are you delusional, Hassan? What? Why? What did I just say? Be up here at 3 o'clock. We can go upstairs. You're so sus. Are you guys okay? Or are you just like schizo brainwormed, uh, to a, an unimaginable degree. Yeah, part of my job is to question the, the fucking... That's obviously him. Covering up for Trump is sussy. Bro. Oh, oh my fucking God, dude. Ay, ay, ay. People are so fucking stupid. You're straight up... You're talking to someone who once got blacklisted from YouTube because I uploaded a, like... Eight hour deep dive into Jeffrey Epstein's life and all of his background. Like all eight hours of it. I uploaded to my YouTube channel and YouTube blacklisted me. Like completely. Okay? My job is to question the veracity of shit exactly like this. They don't understand that it's a good rhetorical strategy to anticipate how your opponents will react to a claim they think that means you're a conservative or a pedo. Yeah. Like... There's never a moment where I do not fucking question the motivations of, of every single journalist when they release a story like this. Because this is like a bombshell, okay? If Jeffrey Epstein is like directly tapped into Trump all the way up until 2016, that is a massively consequential story, okay? The fact that this is released now... And only through the Daily Beast, which is like a Clinton operation, ironically enough, even though you sound like a lib. Yes, dude, media literacy makes me a lib. I question the motives of Michael Wolf for keeping this information up until this very moment. I question why Jeffrey Epstein would potentially say how close he is to Donald Trump, okay? Because... It could just be that he is fucking lying about, like, or greatly increasing his uh, connection to Donald Trump. I know for a fact that Donald Trump, Jeffrey Epstein, and Ghislaine Maxwell, okay, were obviously connected to one another. Jeffrey Epstein used Mar-a-Lago to find new victims, okay? Virginia Joffrey used to work for Mar-a-Lago. Now, having said that, as far as I understand, Donald Trump, unlike many other liberals, as a matter of fact, basically seemingly has no public communications or correspondences with Jeffrey Epstein for years. Uh, I think I believe immediately after his uh, uh, his his first case. Now, what's really interesting about it, though, is that he has he has two different connections to Jeffrey Epstein. One, he was executed in a prison that Bill Barr was responsible for. That's Trump's own, um, that was, what was Bill Barr's job? Holy shit, my brain is fucking fried. I'm eight, eight hours in. Under his presidency, 
but more importantly than Bill Barr, Attorney General, but more importantly than Attorney General Bill Barr, Donald Trump made someone the Secretary of Labor, okay? That man's name was Alex Acosta. Alex Acosta was a up-and-coming prosecutor in the state of Florida that originally gave Jeffrey Epstein a sweetheart deal the first time he was arrested for sex trafficking minors. So there are, there are connections between Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein. Alan Dershowitz is a Trump loyalist, for example. Do you think Epstein was Mossad, as Hassan Abi claimed, or he was just talking shite? No, I do think that Jeffrey Epstein was directly related to uh, both Mossad and the CIA. I do believe that. Why else would Ehud Barak be visiting Jeffrey Epstein in his New York penthouse in the year 2016? Also, Ghislaine Maxwell's father, Robert Maxwell, was Mossad, originally OSS. So, you know, what is a sweetheart deal? A sweetheart deal is when someone commits a heinous crime, but they get like an unimaginable lack of restriction in terms of their detainment. Jeffrey Epstein, as a uh, sex trafficker of minors, was able to literally be released from prison. Like he would only spend the night in prison. Like that's unheard of. That's never, that's not a thing that happens. Alex Acosta also once famously said that there was a subsequent federal investigation being conducted into Jeffrey Epstein the first time around, and that um, that uh, part of the reason why he got a sweetheart deal that would cause him not to reveal who any of the other co-conspirators were, and that that deal had come from above him, above his pay grade. It's called intermittent confinement. Yeah, it doesn't happen to pedophile sex traffickers, though. That's what I'm saying. Intermittent confinement will happen to, like, nonviolent felons, like, nonviolent offenders that, you know, paper pushers and the like. Not a fucking uh, sex trafficker of minors. Anyway. The whole time, the attorney's been on the phone. He said it out because he wants to story. So he has, you want, because the an avoid conversation. And there's like weird interference in this part of the tape. Yeah, I mean, Michael Wolf is like very good at just like waiting until the last moment before his book gets released uh, to to and he withholds like pretty significant pieces of information like bombshell shit uh, until his book comes out. So, you know, he is vulturous in that way. So, you know, that could be one reason, one motive for him to hold out. Because these interviews, I believe, are from like 2016 or 2017. Uh, Michael Wolf also has uh, is a known fabulist as well. The tapes are from 2017. Wolf said he had around 100 hours of Epstein talking about the inner workings of the Trump White House and about his longstanding deep relationship with Donald Trump. Epstein wanted Wolf to write his biography. Caroline Liebip, National Press Sec for Trump. Responded to Wolf's claims. Michael Wolf is a disgraced writer who routinely fabricates lies in order to sell fiction books because he clearly has no morals or ethics. He waited until days before the election to make outlandish false mirrors in an effort to engage in blatant election interference on behalf of Kamala Harris. Now, yeah, the last time they were ever together was in Trump's Palm Beach estate in 1997 and 2000. A Trump campaign source claimed to the beast that it, to the beast, that it is widely known that Trump severed ties with Epstein after allegations of sex trafficking were leveled against his once close friend. The tapes are real. According to the majority report, Michael Wolf has a history of withholding crazy information until the book is written or some other way to maximize profits. Pretty insane to keep this info this long hidden. The first news from 2017 after inauguration. You also hear every pundit on Fox's for hire personally, the billionaires Kellyanne and Bannon was still on air. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And we unfortunately don't know enough other than whatever the fuck Michael Wolf is like withholding. Because he has hundreds of hours of tapes, dude. It's so fucking gross. 
Like, what good is it if he just withholds these tapes and then makes a convincing case that Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein were besties long after people previously thought they were? Like, after Trump becomes president, let's say. Tapes since the start? Yes, dude, he's had these tapes apparently since 2017. He interviewed him in 2017. I don't trust Michael Wolf. I don't like Michael Wolf. There's something a little sussy about this. Why, why can't they just subpoena him? Why would they subpoena Michael Wolf, dude? Je if Jeffrey Epstein's a state asset, why the fuck would the state want to subpoena Michael Wolf to, like, reveal uh, these potential connections? Oh, this was a crazy fucking... This was a crazy tweet or uh, TikTok I watched. Do you think that Palestinians should just be kicked out? To say the nice words, kicked out, yeah. Hey, guys, what are you doing Hi. here? Hi. We're from Israel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And we wanted to go like Trump. And do you think that Trump could get a like a Today's the last day of Streamer Award nominations if you wanted to do that on stream real quick. Okay. Let's log in. Oh dude, I can't do this. I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I'm too tired. Nominate me for best streamer, please. Oh, oh my god, I'm so tired. What the fuck is wrong with me, dude? What is happening? Why am I so goddamn tired? I think it's the the hour change. The, I'm done. I'm going to bed. I love you guys. The time change has fucked me up. It's literally 7.20 right now, which would be 8.20. And I'm dying. I overworked yesterday and I overworked out today. We got a long day ahead tomorrow. Anyway. Love you all. I will see you tomorrow. And bye bye. Peace.